Okay, immediately. Yeah. See, we do a three-hour radio show for free radio. Then we do another two hours on XM Satellite Radio. And then with Pal Talk, the show continues after that. Yeah. Anthony ends up doing a couple hours every night on Pal Talk for the Pal Talkers. Yeah, why not? You got the message boards. You got people there doing uh, assaults on the media. This is like an experience, the ONA experience. It really is. We we discussed this uh, a while ago. This show never really ends. No. I'm the... <clears throat> the uh message boards and pal talk there are there are wars going on uh message board wars going on that we don't you know we don't even know about no things that are happening behind the scenes with our fans and things a uh, lot of sex apparently a lot of sexual hookups pal talk oh yeah we didn't even amazing. mention that yeah our listeners are now having sex with each other they're they, hooking up and because just... of this show they didn't know each other before this no, show no if it wasn't for us i don't know we learned maybe about... there'd be one less case of aids we, we I... learned about a couple threesomes that happened because of yep. the show yeah it, it, i sneak on to there from time to time right <laughs> from time to time from time to time the, the ONA fan room you know yeah yeah there's only ever one girl and 85,000 dudes. What <laughs> sex is going on? Unless it's sissy sex. Apparently, you're tuning in at the wrong hey, time. I'm, I'm on there. It's happy uh, somebody in uh, <laughs> yeah. boogly shoes. And then the rest is just <laughs> guys talking about how that one computer key doesn't work. <laughs> Dude. And then a bunch of, oh, remote. <laughs> but the point I'm making is... The show and the experience of the show never ends. It right. just never ends. So uh, after we went off the air yesterday on regular radio, free radio, terrestrial radio, <laughs> radio. Whatever you want to call whatever it. Whatever you want to call it. Uh, we did our show at XM, and uh, yesterday we just decided to screw off, and we came up with a fine new bit. Yes. That's going to sweep the nation, I guarantee uh -huh. it. We, uh, we really can't even say the name of it here. We that's how that's how um, the FCC is and, and federal <laughs> regulations. We can't say the name, but let me see if I could sneak this past. All right. <clears throat> Let's say you took three roosters and put them in a box. Oh boy, are you kidding me? What? What? No. Uh, now, now, no, no, no. This this will go through. <laughs> right. The name of the bit was called the same thing you would call three roosters in a box, but it rhymed. See? It rhymed with... With Well Well Box. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's what it was called. How about... Blank <laughs> in a Box. Yeah. Blank in a Box. How about Randy Johnson's nickname? Uh, well, no. Uh, the no. nickname for his nickname. No. Oh, a nickname for his nickname. <laughs> in a Box. In a Box. Blanks in a Box. So the That's bit was, was called Blanks in a Box, basically. Roosters. How about David Arquette's wife's last name? Ah! Ugh. Did we just say ah at the same time? <laughs> you, you, if, uh, you two asses are trying to figure out. If David, Ar <laughs> if David Arquette's wife, <laughs> Courtney, was in a box, <laughs> but it was actually, actually just her. used her last name. Actually, it would have to be the whole family, though, because there were many in the box. Well, well, well. With her, it was a yeah. Well, I guess. no, you don't have to say many because you just say her yeah, last name. Yeah, it's just her last name, in a box. Right, <laughs> and that's what it was. So anyway, yes, the the, the video is up on opianthony.com. <laughs> we spent two hours on this bit yesterday. The beauty of satellite radio, you go long form. Yeah. I mean, we would never be able to do it over here because you you got to fit in the uh, the commercials every <laughs> yeah. minutes. Yeah, over How there, it it's we spent well over an hour just planning the dumb bit. Yeah, and then you, we did the dumb bit. You got to listen in. And now the the video is uh, down to, like, I think, three minutes on opianthony.com. Yeah. But basically, the box was laid out on a sidewalk, and on the top of the box it said, free puppies. Free puppies. The box was closed, but it had a hinged lid. A hinged where you lid. you could open it up. With a and note that said, free puppies. Free puppies, which would pique people's curiosity. And, th and this is Manhattan. It's tough to get people to notice anything, but the box was big enough. It was in the middle of the sidewalk. It said, free puppies on the free top. Puppies. Had the nice lid. And it was a little chilly yesterday, so uh, you've, a lot of do-gooders uh, walking down the street would be maybe concerned that somebody's leaving puppies <laughs> in a box right. on the sidewalk in Manhattan. Yes. Uh, and well, we, there weren't puppies in that box. And we got to watch from above, five stories above, down at this box, as people were walking toward the box that said, yeah. puppies on it. So we're hanging out the fourth story or fifth story window, 
and um, we're we're looking out and we have our microphones and we're just watching people walk by and see the free puppies uh, sign on top of the box and then lift the lid and look inside and just they were shocked at what they saw <laughs> because uh, we went to the newsstand yeah. located right across the street and picked up a fine publication called uh, it's called Honcho. <laughs> Well, and and inches. <laughs> yes, and another. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, it's, it's Home Depot's uh, magazine. <laughs> these are uh, magazines geared toward uh, gay men, uh, like maybe a, a heterosexual gentleman would enjoy uh, swank uh, or yeah. penthouse. Ah, uh, yeah. Or uh, maybe some harder material, mm -hmm. uh, stuff like that. That's what this is. Uh, 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 to the uh, gay men is that type of magazine so there's nothing left to the imagination and uh, everyone is extremely glad to be where they are in this <laughs> magazine <laughs> so um don't we, forget the other thing that right we, okay yeah yeah we, we we cut out a bunch of these pictures from uh, uh the magazines and glued them or taped them to the inside of the box yeah hence the uh every name of the bit every single inch of the inside of the box was covered with covered this type of material right <laughs> and then smack dab in the middle of the box get a good one was what they call uh or called in the old days a marital aid. Very good. They called it a marital aid. And that was standing uh, up because it had to be uh, affixed to the bottom of the box, standing up yeah. in, the, in the bottom of the box. Yeah. Kind of just jiggling back and forth when people would open the box. And we put it there with the free puppy sign and just laughed our asses off. Well, then at we just people. watched for like a half hour straight. Yeah. From above. It was like fishing. And <laughs> broadcasted the whole thing. They, they'd walk past, kind of look. Some people would look and go, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to open the box. No. And they would walk past. Other people would look, go to open it, and walk away. And you'd like, oh, it's when you felt the nibble, you know, the nibble on the uh, fishing line. And then uh, other people just, we, we struck gold. They'd, they'd look, think there was a puppy, a poor puppy in this box, open it up, and just the shock of seeing that that awful material <laughs> inside that box. <laughs> I'm watching the video again. Once again, uh, we bring this bit over here because you can see it for yourself if you go to opianthony.com. Yeah. <laughs> the video is pretty good. Uh, but we learned. We're going to do this bit again later on this week. Yep. We're going to get a better camera angle, and uh, we got a few other adjustments to the well, we, box we, O blanks. We like to experiment with uh, these uh, gags. We take it into the uh, Opie and Anthony Institute. That's right. We take it to the Institute and test this out. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, was, um, this was a field test. A field test, right. Yeah, exactly. We went with a field <laughs> test on this one. And it worked very well. We had a great time with it. And now we'll uh, tweak it a little bit. Yep. And uh, take it back out into the field. Well, I think we're going to try to get a camera inside the box to get the actual reactions right. now the of the people. I, I was a little worried that the camera might be uh, stolen. Nah. And then someone had the great idea of disguising the camera with yet more photographs from the likes of Honcho Magazine. <laughs> and then you wouldn't see the camera, and you could see the people's faces as they open up the box. It's brilliant. The Institute, the scientists working at the ONA Institute are brilliant. And the best part about Called this... from all over the globe. We have people that work for this show. <laughs> That's their whole job. Yeah. Danny's whole job this week is to... Uh, to make this bit even better. Make the box so we can see the people's faces. Right. Make it a little heavier so it feels like there might be a puppy inside. Sound effects. Possible There's another sound thing. effects. We're, we're thinking of putting a uh, some kind of a uh, recording device in there with puppy noises. Mm -hmm. So it would really pique people's interest. Uh, just things like that. Little tweaking that goes on that makes it easier. The uh, uh, Maybe a better sign on top. Uh, things like that. And we will bring it to you online. Yeah. And you'll be able to see part of the ONA experience that goes on after the show. It's a 24-hour experience. It really is. Uh, maybe we could hear from Danny to, to see where, where he's at with the bit. Because he, he's working it. He's, he's, he's working in charge. On the bit. He's in charge of wow. making the bit smoke by the end of the week. But right now, so far, very happy with the brand new bit. Oh, yeah. And uh, very happy with the video that Sam took with his camera Thanks yesterday. Camera. The and, prototype. And once again, the uh, the video of the box O blank.
yeah. is up on opianthony.com. O-P-I-E, by the way. People spell my my name wrong, which is ridiculous. All right. Also, that wrong. also uh, on opianthony.com, we did a commercial for XM and the outtakes. From I was the commercial the last night. The outtakes from the XM commercial are up on opianthony.com. It's worth a worth a, a, a view. And uh, I think I think the people that are faithful listeners of the show that have been with us for a while are really going to enjoy it because Jimmy uh, just did a, a million impressions of people that you know and love from this show. Yeah. So it's very very funny. That's also up on opianthony.com. He had a great. Um it was a great goof on a hacky thing, the the big entrance into the room, where he opens the door, peeks his head in, and says his lines. So he kept peeking in as different people, and it, it really was killing us, man. Yeah. He's just uh, he's like the old a sitcom where, where yeah. like Fonzie came in and he can't even do his line because was, everyone's applauding, so applauding. he has to stop and take in the applause. So he's got to stop. It's like, hey, Mr. C, I... <laughs> hey, Mr. C, I was down at Arnold's, and I had he's got to repeat the line because the applause, the people, woo! Yeah, the actual commercials online, which we think is pretty funny, and then uh, uh, the outtakes has been have been added uh, overnight, so they're yeah. they're both up on opianthony.com. We got Danny on the line. He's uh, at the institute, the Opian Anthony Institute. Danny, what's up? Hey guys, how are you? All right. So, have you been doing a lot of thinking overnight? I have. I have. Okay. And uh, I think I have some solutions for some of the issues that we ran into. All right. Uh, first off being, we definitely need some kind of walkie-talkie apparatus in the box. In the box. Now, what would a two-way device uh, do? Well, I think that would allow us, like, if we had a sign that didn't necessarily say puppy, but maybe if it just said free to a good home. Free to a good home. Yeah, that way you could make uh, baby whatever noises. corresponding Don't. sound that you would need. You could, it could be puppies, it could be kittens, or if you wanted to try making baby sounds, you could go for that. <laughs> all right, I'm kind of liking it. He's thinking this is what the Institute is all about. I think we got to make it very obvious, though. Like, either well, puppies, then, kittens, also, babies. we could have different signs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the box should should definitely have air holes just to sell it a little better. Yep, but um, but they should be on the side of the box, not on the lid, because we've noticed people there was a little gap um, on the lid of the box, and some people would just peer into the gap and realize there was nothing inside without being able to see the yeah. filth that was actually in there. Yeah, the holes definitely couldn't be big enough to peer through. Yeah. Uh, second, uh, let's see, the weight issue was also brought up yesterday. Yep. And I think I can kill two birds with one stone here. I say that we take a laptop computer yeah. with an air card uh -huh. and a webcam. And a webcam. And we disguise it up yeah. so that there's um, parts covering the, uh, the laptop. And that will take care of the weight issue. And also and people could log into Pal Talk Live. And watch watch it down. live oh, as oh, it yeah. happens. Now that's brilliant. <laughs> See, again, bringing the audience in <laughs> as it happens to be able to watch that and uh, and listen. We could actually put the uh, the mic on on that and they could listen to what the people are saying uh, and then they could listen to us on the radio. Please. I love it. That is perfect. All right, you got to try all this out maybe today or something there. Wow, Dan. the Institute cranking at this hour. I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, Danny. Boy, I, you know something? I didn't really think Danny was... I thought it was just a radio shtick thing that Danny was actually working on this. Amazing. Well, I actually I actually thought about it before I went to bed last night. <laughs> That's good. And you know something, though? That's what we really want to do is start loading this box up with electronic devices. Like the police wouldn't be... Uh, what is Danny yeah. going to get an extra stripe for going to bed thinking of... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, give, we'll make him a private. <laughs> I, I, I predict... This box being blown up by the bomb squad at some point when they I don't understand this cameras and it. electronics. Yeah, who would open it? I don't get it. Who? What lunatic walks down the street of Manhattan in this day and age of Al Qaeda and terrorism and 9/11 and actually opens up a random box left in any, the middle of a sidewalk? Box. Curiosity. Anybody, I don't care what it's, it says it, on it. It comes down to curiosity. We all have it. Open, puppy, my friend. <laughs> If it was a baby, if it was up to me, it'd have all that, that blue 
bank ink from when you rob it. <laughs> I'll make sure. <laughs> that you baby know? have something on it just to make sure it ain't a bomb. I like uh, Danny's idea about the walkie-talkie, too, because at one point we could see how daring people are and just play that awful music they listen to. Like that uh, prayer, that call to prayer. We'll play that and see if somebody actually opens the box lid to that. Awesome. All right, Danny, thank you. You got it, guys. All right, we got to take a break. We got Patrice O'Neill in studio today, and we couldn't be, uh, what? Look, we did 20 minutes already. What's wrong with you? Nothing. But those oh, big yeah. eyes. <laughs> what happened? What? I don't know. What, what happened? Hell magazine do you read? Uh, nothing. Feds? Feds. We'll get into it after the break. Oh, I got to know what that is. <laughs> and also, I've Patrice... never heard of it. And as Ecstasy of Gold was playing, Patrice uh, admitted that he had a black president doll uh, growing up. <laughs> we got to get into that. We're a little bit about collector's items. And that would apparently be one. And the Harlem Hero. We'll get into that next. And, uh, well, we want to get your take on James Brown. Uh, yes, sir. And Saddam Hussein. And yeah. James Brown just died at the wrong time. And he No respect for James Not Brown. Not even no. a drop. Nothing. We got lots to do today. Stay there. It's the Opie and Anthony Nothing. show. We're with them out with And if you don't have a wow sticker because the radio station listened to us on is lazy and they don't feel like getting wow stickers printed, you can always. None of those. You can always make a. Yeah, there's a few actually. It's unfortunate. You can make a uh, homemade wow sign and throw it on the back of your car or truck, okay? Yeah, do that. Or write it in the dirt on the, on the back of your truck. Patrice O'Neill in studio. Our phone number 1 866 313 free. That's one eight six six three one three free. I wanted to ask Patrice about uh, his uh, his thoughts on James Brown and I and, miss and 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 and, I miss and, him already. and Gerald Ford and 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 Saddam and Saddam. Uh, I'm, I'm, I miss Saddam and Lionel from the Jeffersons. Oh, that's right. Are you kidding me? That's yeah. right. Lionel from the Jeffersons is dead? Yeah, Lionel died. The the first, the original Lionel, the one. Oh, the original the one. Nah. No, no, the good one. The the, the famous one. The Lionel. good, the famous one. Yeah, the, the 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 one that created Good Times, the one that was on uh, All in the, the Family. The one that was on All in the Family. Yeah. Used to give Archie a bunch of crap. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Okay, uh, Mr. Bunker, we make sure we be do he, he used to yeah, do that used to and goof fun, on yeah. Archie all the time. He got this much uh, space on page like uh, 73 wow. of Daily in, News. In the oh. white press. <laughs> the oh. Amsterdam News did a 17-page spread about did Lionel they? from Good yeah, Time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George, I mean, uh, <laughs> Gerald Ford got, Gerald Ford got uh, the page right before the, the sports yeah. in the Amsterdam News and Lionel from the Jeffersons. Front page. It was a special uh, blast on special there. Edition, it was a special <laughs> Pull out, pull out <laughs> section. <laughs> you know that when the dopey paper has it to was be a, a full, it was a full body fold out. <laughs> I hate when the dopey papers have to give you like five like pages before the actual paper starts. Hey man, ah. a special it. fold out. Wow, that's weird. Like George Jefferson is still alive. Sherman Hemsley, yeah. Yeah. But he died of something creepy. Like, he died of a white man's disease, like some Did he? creepy cancer. Too much salt, I think, or something like creepy. that. Creepy. No, he had, um, <laughs> he had uh, something wrong with his throat. Like, he had um, oh. uh, throat cancer or something. Oh. Was it throat cancer? Yeah. And he Poor was doing bastard. something weird at the end of his life. Like, I don't know, selling real estate or something. Yeah, uh, he was a man now for that, though. What the hell was yeah. it? I, I I read the old bit. I, I can't even remember anymore. He made all but... his money off good times, did the real estate, and then, you know. That's I mean, it. A lot of people, and then I, you know, you gotta miss James Brown, which is it, it's disappointing. How Saddam and Gerald Ford, <laughs> Gerald and, Ford, and James Brown was doing concerts like y'all was saying up to his last breath. Oh yeah, Gerald Ford was doing absolutely nothing but being an ex-president, just existing as an ex-president. Just, a, just yeah, a guy a job, that used though. to work is better than uh, touring the country. And, and a guy who never was voted for any... No one voted for this guy no. under any circumstance. He, like, he worked in the post office or something. I don't even know what he did. I, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, because of uh, events at Watergate, he gets made the president of the United States. I like also no, how they... Don't forget pardoned. he was part of the Warren Commission, too. Oh, ooh. And he pardoned everybody. Yeah. Pardon Nixon. I pardon you. Fell downstairs and, and it's just like... He, they talked about him... Like, he healed the country after Watergate. Like, everyone was so suspect of the government, and we had been lied to. And Gerald Ford was this uniting force that calmed us as a nation. <laughs> this guy did nothing. No. Yeah. He did nothing. Well, did you watch office. the coverage yesterday? They they couldn't come up with anything. They, they talked they, they about him trying. like the savior of the nation. Meanwhile, all he did was not 
rob anyone, <laughs> not do anything like Nixon did. And he his just sat wife. there. He just got the car yeah. back on the road after. Betty Ford and got his more. wife helped drunks. Well, that's what. Yeah, that's where. That's the angle they took all day yesterday. They kept going uh, to Betty Ford because they had nothing on this. His Betty funeral should have opened up for James Brown's funeral. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the opening act. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. <laughs> the hardest working man in show business, Gerald Ford's corpse, proudly presents James Brown's corpse. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Ford's cor corpse should put a cape on James Brown. Dude, I can't go on. Yeah, we know. Yeah. You're dead. But James Brown dies, and I'm thinking, wow, the guy's getting a lot of respect, a lot of print, a lot of coverage. Oh, did he get nothing? And then all of a sudden, oh, no, a president died. And then, oh, no, they decided thanks to Donald so Trump. <laughs> they decided on, in two you know, seconds listen, thanks Richard to Donald Trump. That was a the, hell of a two proper, days there. No, Richard, Richard Pryor didn't, didn't get either. the proper no. he's dead stuff either. I, when's no. the last black person that got, oh, everybody, oh, everybody he died. Martin Luther conspiracy. King. Something else, something was going on. 1968, that was it? <laughs> Martin Luther King got his even, due. I don't even know if he did, man. No, you know who? Uh, let me tell you who got it. Uh, who 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 uh, did they? Uh, uh, Rosa Parks. There, yeah, Rosa. She, got they some they put her in the the rotunda there. Yeah, she died. Yeah, yeah. She, she's, she's in dead. A... By the way, uh, Coretta Scott King. She got some respect. All she got some respect. Civil rights people. Yeah, all, civil rights people. I mean, uh, that's I mean, fair enough. But give, I mean, James Brown. James Brown deserves uh. And what? Uh, you know what it was though? James Brown in life was kind of a scumbag. That He's very matter. entertaining. All, all artists are scumbags. There's yeah. not one artist that you can think of that's not a piece of garbage. Guns and beating women and stuff like that. Yeah, that kept, it it, got that people. kept this creative flow. It certainly yeah. did. I'm not arguing with the point, How do you think it came up with Al? Every time he <laughs> punched the bitch in the rib cage. <laughs> <laughs> he makes that. Hey, good one, baby. Oh, that's a good hey, one. I got, I got a sample of that. <laughs> got a mic in front of her face. <laughs> Hitting her in different areas. Giving her a Charlie horse. That doesn't work. Dunk a head in the sink. <laughs> Got to find oh. the right tone. <laughs> be, Ow! Punching a bitch in the stomach never worked. I'm, I'm, for all the music he made, I, I, I'd give up. I'd proudly give up. Uh, you know, any of those chicks he beat up on. Yeah. yeah, any of them. Yeah. And, and his current wife, who they throwing out. Of oh the my house, God! Like, they threw her they out of the mansion. Throw her out. But do you know why though? It, I mean, look, it, it's le it's legal. Even though yeah. life ain't fair. She she married him, but she never got divorced from this other guy. Uh huh. So what happened is she she married James and then got divorced from from the other guy, but then she was supposed to marry James again. Yeah, because the first one didn't because take. Because the first one wasn't <laughs> wasn't true. Right, because she was still married. He had uh he had uh, his, uh he she had his son though. That don't matter. There's a lot of baby daddies. Yeah, yeah I guess. But there's a huge, you know. I think that know, would count for something. Gerald Ford got a baby, baby, <laughs> baby <Yeah>. mama. <laughs> I don't think there's any argument over that, though. There's a there's an 82 year old boy out there. They didn't <laughs> lock Betty Ford out of the house. <laughs> yeah. Some old broad sitting there on the stoop. <laughs> <laughs> what What did you say, James Brown looked like in that coffin? He looked like uh, Esther Roll. I didn't want to. I didn't want to look at him. You know what it is? It's like you. you first of all, he was 73. He, he lived yeah. a long life. He gave so much, man. It's mm -hmm. just I don't want to see any. For me to go, oh, James Brown is dead. Is just selfishness. Yeah. I mean, other than the people who love him, for me to go, oh, he gave so much. You know, just when he died, just he, he if he disappeared, it's fine, man. <laughs> they propped him up in that weird. Oh uh, yeah. Just that death look, man. It's I just, saw. I saw, and they showed it on the news. They 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 showed him dead. On the news, and they—I don't know what it is. Maybe the morticians got it. They didn't show any makeup version of Gerald Ford. They didn't show the the funny looking dead right. Gerald Ford. They gotta get better makeup for black people when they're dead. <laughs> they all look gray. <laughs> they all look too ashy. That's because white makeup ladies are doing white it. White makeup people don't know to do getting, that. Getting sag scale. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see? Uh, he uh, he was make a good point. He was propped up a in the coffin, ashen. gray. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> they gotta Come hire guy union, union workers. <laughs> Get some of that. Uh, what's his name? Little Richard makeup on. But that Richard is completely looks unbelievable. He looks good because it's like brown spackle they put on him. It just it's it's unnecessary to. They didn't. I mean, it, open it, coffins on tour. 
Uh, sh- it, uh, they no. shouldn't be allowed at this no. point. No, I, no. I, I think that's an older generation thing, first of all. I don't think the younger generation in yeah. general has uh, open coffins. It's too creepy I think that's for everybody the, involved. I think that whole thing started before photography, when they didn't have pictures of loved ones, so they wanted to get a last look. Right. How about you just have pictures and you remember that? Yeah, it's more open. I mean, a Stop n- it. Close like coffin enough. with a couple nice pictures. Right. You know, maybe a picture <laughs> Slam of... Slam that thing shut. Maybe a picture of the person in Jamaica sipping one of those cute little, like, uh, tropical drinks. A pina colada. With a Hawaiian a banana shirt daiquiri. Now, was this president's death protocol, what they did for Gerald Ford? Like, every... I don't even remember Reagan getting... Reagan got a lot more. Reagan got like. a big one, but I don't remember. I think it was more of a private thing, though, wasn't it? It didn't seem like he got this much. They didn't. Well, we didn't trapes him all over the place, yeah, did they? We didn't elect the guy, so you know, not gonna give him the full uh, all-out funeral. <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of walked into the job. Reagan He's had, never meant to be a president. Let's be honest here. Reagan had like a. It was kind of a private thing, wasn't it? Reagan? It wasn't, Reagan? I don't, I don't remember. remember being because Gerald Ford. Quite frankly, look, I, you know, I'm not trying to disrespect presidents. But mm. the guy was, he was pretty he's insignificant until he, up to his death. He Dave was a Brown filler. Was, yeah, not, I think he was doing, uh, I think he was doing uh, the music hall up there in uh, Westbury. Yeah, Westbury. Westbury that Music was, Center. We were, t- we were talking about that. My, my aunt actually had tickets for Elvis Presley. He was supposed to be, uh, play uh, Westbury Music Fair here in New York. Uh, and, of course, we know how that ended. Uh, he dies. Uh, my aunt goes and gets a refund for the tickets. Oh. It's like, why wouldn't you want to hold on to the the tickets to the show that Elvis didn't make because he died? You know, even then, there was enough Elvis lunatics out there that buy up anything Elvis that, you know, would would it would be a collector's item. But we were talking about that, and the fact uh, that things become collector's items is because people do stupid things like get the refund for the ticket. How much money uh, did you get back? After, back then, it's probably like, fifteen bucks. Like seven dollars a ticket or something, probably, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, probably not what do you even. Think 15. That would be worth though if, if she had kept it. Now, you for an Elvis lunatic, they'd probably pay thousands for it. Probably the, the pay thousands. The last thousand. concert ticket, right? Before he was supposed to perform, but he didn't. Yeah. D- right before he died, yeah. it. you think that would be worth some money? I think it would be worth a lot of money. Did you have anything in your, re- in your memory that, that would, was worth money that you could think of might have been if you kept it? I talk about my signed Christmas card from Richard Milhouse Nixon. <laughs> I sent him a Christmas card, and he sent me one back. <laughs> and you sold it for what, crack? No, I threw it away at some point in my moving. Is it an actual was, signature? When I, you when I moved it? 80 times <laughs> o- over five years. Is it an actual signature? Years, uh, yes, it was an actual signature. Oh, dude, these tickets. Thank you, E Rock. Uh, Elvis tickets, 50 bucks. Now, $50. I think they peaked. <laughs> she did what the is right it, thing. $50, who cares? What, for this what? was for like a Memphis show, I think, right? What's this, Memphis. eBay? Yeah. Is it a show he made? Huh? Is it a show that he made? Uh, yeah, yeah, is it a all ticket right, stop right, point? I don't know. 1970. This is this is tickets that they she was supposed to enjoy right after the toilet. These uh, the the date on the ticket that he's supposed to perform <laughs> is after on the, the date he died. <laughs> right, before. August right. August 28th, 1977. When when did the king die? 78. Uh, he died in 78. Did he? I think it was. Wait, I think it was 77. I don't think he died. I think he died in 78. I think it was 77. I think it was. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, we don't but even she was know. A, she was a, but he died. Nineteen seventy-seven. He died, right? Here we go. August sixteenth, nineteen seventy-seven. So the tickets would have been for ten, eleven days uh, later. Oh, okay. That, it. that should be fifty worth bucks and fifty dollars. That's she yeah. did the right thing. She you keep the she tickets the right around for, for thirty years. So you can deal make fifty bucks or no deal. I guess uh, she made the right decision. Yeah, I think so. And then uh, Patrice, we were talking about this during the break, and Patrice said that uh, he uh, he, <laughs> he uh, had a black president doll. <laughs> yeah, you bought you collect. It was it a collector's item? It didn't exist. <laughs> it wasn't no black president doll. I don't know. <laughs> By who? Mattel. 
<laughs> Maybe if they, if 24 puts out a little play character set. Wasn't there a black president oh, on 24? And, uh, 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 who is the hardest? He's the hardest working man in show business. That now. guy is in everything. Uh, what's his name? Uh, exactly. It's, no, no, I'll tell it's you his the name. guy. Don't you don't. Do, his name is Dennis Haysberg. And oh. I remember that. Yes. Very he good. does the insurance. Commercials. He's yeah. on like some where he's a Navy SEAL. He's on Twenty Four. Trace. I will remem remember that for the next five minutes. You should. And then you it's should. gonna leave my brain. He's the guy that comes out when the, when the cars crash yes. on the Allstate commercial. Yes. He goes, uh, "There's been an accident." Dennis Haysburg. Yeah. You gotta start respecting black performers, man. I do. I was sad when James Brown died. Name an obscure and then you black see, performer. And then you see MC Hammer. Showed up at the funeral, oh, and, he, and then uh, the Michael tribute. Jackson kissing uh, James Brown. That you know who's a that good actor? Freak. Yafit Koto. <laughs> There's my respect. Yafit, that's who the James Brown looked like in the. <laughs> he looked like Yafit Koto. Like, and that was Yafit Koto. <laughs> <laughs> I do love Yafit though. I was watching Alien was this morning. About Alien that. was I was watching it too. I do enjoy I Yafit. Sleep. The movie's fantastic. <laughs> they made James look like Yafik. <laughs> oh, that's oh, terrible. Oh, man. Poor James. No respect. No yeah, respect. Well. And then he, yeah, he had to compete with Ford and uh, Saddam. And Saddam. Who, right. by the way, you know, we've been, we were talking about and that I yesterday. He still should have closed. He still should have been headlining all those deaths. You would headline that? I think Saddam would be the headliner. Of those deaths? Those oh, deaths? Yeah. Saddam oh, headlines. Gerald Ford hosts. Gerald Ford hosts. S Saddam Middles does a does a, t a tight twenty five to thirty. How do you follow a hanging? Brent, uh, it's you, Saddam. You, I, let me tell you so something. You end with the hanging. I got a live. Tape That's like the pyro of James Brown, right. right? Live tape of James Brown in Boston, right? Unless after, he hangs right at the end of it. <laughs> riots. It was it was some riots in Boston. Right after they had riots in Boston, and the people on the stage rioting. Mm. James Brown, like, come on, sit down. James Brown told the police, "Don't no, no, don't worry about it." People on the stage kicking stuff, going crazy. James Brown stopped a riot and then went right into bewildered. <laughs> <laughs> he's a miracle he, worker. He, I'm telling you, he was he was like. So you think he could bring the crowd back after a hanging? I, let me tell you something. The hanging happened. He wow. could close a Saddam Hussein if Saddam Hussein gave one of his "I hate America" speeches. Yeah. And then James Brown could close in Iraq. In front of insurgents, <laughs> and they be cheering after a, a F America speech by Saddam, <laughs> without question. Everybody, calm down. America's great. Be well done. <laughs> wow, man. I'm telling you, that's some power. Now, I, I, the power I, hanging. I'm gonna have to disagree, hanging. though. There's no way that that's hanging Saddam is Saddam hanging was fantastic. I laughed, I cried, I felt great about myself. It was, he, they bring him in, and he just looks like they probably told him they were taking him out to dinner. Because he's wearing his little coat. <laughs> right. He, he comes in to the room, looks around, and, and gives, the, gives the pesci, oh no. You know, like, oh boy. It looks like oh, I no bamboozled. Idea. And I think that was part of the plan. And this guy, uh, it, with the other guys, uh, the executioners with their ski masks on, the guy's kind of telling him, all right, I'm going to put this black uh, uh, material around, around your neck, and then the noose, and then some guy starts bad-mouthing him. And they start uh, uh, saying names of people that Saddam had killed and, and, and uh, leaders of, of, of people that Saddam had problems with. Mm -hmm. And Saddam just looks at the guy and goes, it, 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 you call this manhood? Is this, is this manhood? And just gives the guy crap right back. He goes, uh, 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 God uh, damn you. You go to hell, tells he, he, Saddam was just, he had a set of balls on him right there before they hung him. He had the crowd warmed up. He's still middling. No that way. Is still middling. Saddam's even, whole act was great. Even though it was, and, it and it was some layers, there? it was some layers. The layer, the layer was that that he was very smooth under. It, it was no holding he up. Kept there was it no short. dead man walking. It was tight. And a big ending. They didn't have to give him the red light. <laughs> <laughs> he knew when to get it. off the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. He didn't go over. <laughs> he didn't go over. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. And then you're going to tell me that uh, James Brown is going to follow <laughs> the hanging with this. <laughs> Everybody, 
Lord, please, all the insurgents, sit down, please. Please, sit down. I understand you hate America. America, Infidel, Infidel. Hey, I know Infidel. Listen, listen. Hey, no, no, calm down. Calm down, no. Listen, 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 don't let the police come in here and spoil us in time. Listen here. Listen here. Hey, man. Hey, man. Let, hold on. Stop music for a second. Stop music for a second. Stop music. Stop music. Listen, listen. <laughs> Give a big hand for Saddam Hussein. He's very, he's, he's fantastic. Everybody, does Saddam Hussein, everybody. Now, listen to me. Listen. We're going to get this going here now. Sit down. Sit down. Stop shooting, man. Ah! Stop shooting. Stop shooting. Oh, listen, man. Listen. Oh, listen. Everybody, hold on. No, no, no. Listen. <laughs> listen, officer, officer, no, no, don't grab it, man. Listen to me. Man. Okay, everybody, calm down. Be well done. Chasing people. <laughs> <laughs> you think James Brown can follow? James Brown can follow. Can follow. Can follow. Can he can follow Saddam. It's close, but How I say Saddam's got to close that show. No way in hell does Saddam <laughs> close that show. <laughs> That was Daffy uh, Duck drinking the gasoline, kerosene, and uranium, and the match. <laughs> I can only do it once. <laughs> that was it. That, I've seen him, under all those noises, do a show. Still bring bring the crowd back. <laughs> We're bewildered. <laughs> they were shooting. They oh. were stabbing. <laughs> and he just blew <laughs> All right, listen. Oh, damn. We got to step aside, man. Mm. Hey, how about their death penalty, though? We'll, we'll get into that after the break. Oh, yeah. We, oh, that was whole we were number. figuring that out in the office before the show. Wow. We'll some uh, stats on that. And man, we got to talk about the Harlem hero. This guy's nuts. We got the story of the day here in New York. Well, we'll see. Maybe another city has yeah, a better story. Know. But I doubt you're going to beat the, the Harlem Hero it's story. It's a biggie. This guy is nuts. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. Good morning. It's the uh, Opie and Anthony Show. Patrice O'Neill in studio today. You promoting anything? Not yet. I have to get my dates. This might, be... this might be a little inside, but I kind of go with it for a second. Patrice O'Neill was the host of Web Junk uh, 20 on VH1. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he decided to move on. And our old friend Jim Brewer is doing it now. And I got to admit, he's doing a good job. But uh, they did a... Uh, uh, a year in review over the holidays, like yeah. the best videos junk, of the year. Junk 40. And, uh, and, and Jim Brewer, you know, opens up the show talking about here's the best videos of the year. And uh, helping me today is Patrice. And he turns to his right, and there's Patrice just laughing. They just got, like, footage of Patrice laughing at some dopey video and threw it in the middle of this, and they're trying to make it look like, like Patrice was right next is to the right line, Jim to, Brewer. See, once they get you in front of that green screen it's over. and it's tape over. you, they now they could put you in any VH1 show they want. And, they and could I, just use you. And they found me, and they had it, because it wasn't clips from, like, it was, like, old edited out footage. Like, they had to actually work harder to do that than to give me then a just call you dollars. up and go hey Patrice come on in yeah. we're doing a wrap up here for yeah, the year yeah here's a few bucks come on in you know, a couple yeah, hours couple they had to dig up footage of me looking like I was standing there with Brewer yeah <laughs> it, it looks oh. it looks so stupid I gotta oh, say oh I gotta man. see this it's hilarious I think they put me in there like they put a B like I said a B word an R word a U word an yeah. E word and then it spelled out Brewer and I was like hey Brewer <laughs> you should have hired Steven Spielberg or somebody to match it up because it it didn't even match up right. You're like you're like a, your whole your whole being is a lot lighter than Jim Brewer. Like they didn't match. Yeah, the, the colors, lighting's different. Right? <laughs> and you're just next to him, smiling like an idiot. Oh, whoop, <laughs> like it's, oh, that's great. Like it's some dumb attraction in Disney. Can that you, is great. Give me a dime. So they superimposed you. Mm -hmm. Superimposed me. 
Anyway. Into the scene. Into the best of show, the <laughs> year end show. Yeah. That's got to be hysterical. You're flipping around the channels going, wait, I didn't do this. Welcome. Dude, it's me. I'm here. I'm watching myself, but I never did that with that guy. Yeah, you got to check it out. The, the beginning, it's hilarious. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Brewer makes it look like it's, it's, it's Brewer and Patrice giving oh, you the best great. videos of the year. <laughs> Uh, before we move on from the Saddam Hussein thing, we were commenting about the death penalty and how it's different in Iraq uh, than America, of yeah, course. Yeah, me and Patrice are having a great little conversation in the office about this um, foreign people's perception of America based on TV and films and things. And and we always bring up the uh, scenario in the movies when there's the bad guy and the cop. And there's the, the standoff. The foreign, yeah, the foreign, the foreign bad, guy. bad guy and the cop. And there's the standoff. And now, of course, the bad guy's been disarmed. He's laying there at yeah. the cop's mercy. The cop's got the gun at his head. And the bad guy starts his speech. This country is weak, America. You will not shoot me. I will go through your justice system <laughs> and be out. As a matter of fact, my people already wiring funds to have me back out on street by 3 o'clock this afternoon, and there is nothing you can do about it. And the cop sits there shaking with the gun, and his partner's going, Don't do it! No, don't don't, don't do, do it! it. Uh, don't throw away your life! Think about your family! Yeah. And that's now the perception. That's the perception that they have. That that's it. I was at the uh, comic strip. It was a uh, and and you know I'm just having one of these sets where I'm just like it's it, I'm, I'm throwing hand grenades. You know it's <laughs> it's death and destruction. I want them all to leave one by one. <laughs> and it was just misery. And I'm being heckled by people from all over the world. This lady's like. I like, you know, it's just too crowded in this funky country. It's just yeah. too many idiots like you here to watch an apple drop. And <laughs> and she's like, you are in the wrong country, which I will say if we vote, I would say that that any Eastern Bloc accent mm -hmm. from from former Soviet Union. Yeah. Number two worst accent in the country. Number one, without question, is Hindu Indians. Just an accent that yeah. makes your skin crawl. And second is that you, that you, thing. you don't, you do, you in the wrong country. Don't some, shoot. I diplomatic immunity. <laughs> I, I don't wear you blue shoot. Jeans. Like, like, remember, like remember, you. Um, uh, uh, lethal Weapon 2, when the, the South African guy, yeah. and he's just like, diplomatic immunity. And yeah. that's what this country, that's there's a it. bunch of foreigners running around going, diplomatic immunity. <laughs> and, and it's like, we maybe we should just string up one of our ex-presidents <laughs> <laughs> and, and tape it on a cell phone right. to make the rest of the world think that we're not... This this lame. Well, and, and and part of this perception they get is because of things like the death penalty, where now we got guys, they absolutely are guilty of murder. They've killed a family, whatever, the most heinous, horrendous crimes. Uh, they go through the trial process. They're found guilty. Then they have the right to appeal, just like a wonderful uh, diplomatic uh, 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 government over in Iraq. Right, right, right. <laughs> they have the appeal process. We have it here. Uh, that lasts at least a minimum of 12 years 12 or so. Years. We figured out about 12 about years. About 12 minimum, years. Minimum. You'll be sitting there going to court with the lawyers what? appealing. I, I believe the, in the that. The judge Anthony. says they're going to kill uh, you. You got okay. the death penalty. And, and at that moment in your mind, you're like, well, I got at least 12 years from this moment. It, at least. I uh, believe in that because there's so many guys all right. who didn't do it. But this is why right. what makes me mad is in terms of re relative to Iraq, right? It's the mindset, they right? They don't care they, about the justice. It's like you're going to die tonight. They found him guilty. First trial, not an appeal or anything. They found him guilty, what, November, the beginning of December? It was like <laughs> Christmas Eve. It was like, yeah. <laughs> it was about a month before they killed him. Then they, they when they found him guilty, and it was, you see it on the website. I, I remember, I, I, remember I, I put, uh, I had CNN on, uh, and, and it's like Saddam Hussein was found guilty. He could face the death penalty. And you're so used to it here that I'm like, ah, we'll be seeing this guy's face until he's 90. It doesn't matter. And then it's like, he's uh, he has an appeal process, and I'm like, ah, oh, an appeal. Oh, boy. And after the appeal, 
If he loses the appeal, he must be put to death within 30 days. Like, ooh, wait a minute. What? what, what? Uh, and then I'm thinking, the appeal's got to take 12 years. No, that's not an... See, in Iraq, appeal means that's that's his choice of death. Either hang or appeal. He, want, he, he wanted he to be shot. To, either he has to be hung, <laughs> shot, or have all his skin peeled off. <laughs> <laughs> appeal means they will actually <laughs> peel your skin Do you want to peel? <laughs> you want to peel? Appeal. Or you want to hang? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a... <laughs> <laughs> so they have the appeal process, which took, what, a couple of days? It was nothing. And then they didn't even wait the 30 days. No. They waited, like, maybe a, a, a couple of days after his appeal. And there he was on on the Internet, <laughs> hours after he's, he's, he's hung. You're watching it on the Internet. You're watching him, uh, his neck breaking. On Sprint. On, on, on Sprint. Sprint. Somebody. Verizon. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's some well-used minutes right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's what these, these far, far, like, I, I'm just saying, it's just like the attitude. And, yep. and it's just like I'm sitting in the and the audience is just, I'm getting heckled by, you know, some weird Benetton ad. You know, it's like, <laughs> hey, mate, you, you know, you're not funny, mate. Using their words from their country. Australian hey, guys heckling hey, you. Jesus, you wanker. You're not <laughs> you, <laughs> We're trying to get a chit-chat here, buddy. And I'm like, you mother. And I'm looking at pathetic Americans just allowing this to happen because Kramer done made everybody so shell shocked. About <laughs> Watch everything. what you say. Yeah, uh oh, I better not tell this. Uh, can't say Rusky. Mm -hmm. Can't say dirty English criminal. Can't say anything. <laughs> so I'm sitting there just completely alone because this country is just allowing yeah. kidnapped Russian strippers to come over here and tackle me. <laughs> you are in the wrong country. Yeah. Really? I, really, I am? Really, Kilbasa girl? Oh. I'm in the wrong country? <laughs> I, I hope I said I hope that that apple is filled with thallium, thallium <laughs> <laughs> and just wipes everyone out. <laughs> and you bunch oh, of foreigners have some nuclear sushi. Oh my! God. And have all your hair fall out. <laughs> it was, it's just <laughs> and and in Iraq. It's like no, there's no comfort zone over there. No. You you if you get found guilty, you you're gonna swing. And I'm not saying we should do that here, but it's just just to let the rest of the world know you don't come around playing around here with you know like we're soft. Have some kind yeah, of repercussions. Little, Let's little have soft. some repercussions. Uh, when when people say do stuff over here, you know, let, let's have some justice. And make it a little quicker than 12 years, I say. Hey, there it is. There's Saddam hanging. Boom. There he is. What a gentleman he looked like being hung. He I, walked in there like it was reservations at a restaurant. They're just a gentleman. He was looking for the coat check. He was, yeah, where, can I check my coat? I check my coat. It's the same thing we were talking about uh, with the King Kong thing. It's, uh -huh. Can you just do me a favor and not have my evil dictators look like... Little old man. Remember when they first found him in the hole? Oh, he was a he mess. Was checking his teeth, and he's just like, ah, bad tooth. And, and there was, his like, hair was all, he had I been in a rat hole head. His hair's all, his beard was all grown out. And you remember him in that uniform, shooting the gun in the air from that balcony yeah. with his followers. With, with the tight mustache. And he just had the tight mustache, yeah. I want to see my thing. dictators with one of those um, collars that you put on dogs after they get, like, so they don't lick themselves. The, <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, and somebody poking him with a stick, and he's like, rawr, 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 and just like, oh, that, now that's a dictator. Yeah. I don't want to, like, see Kim Jong-il walking around like a little old Chinese man, like, ah, ah, with yeah. slippers and a kimono. <laughs> We're going to hang you. Please don't give me. Oh, no. Don't give me. All right. <laughs> yes, the They're all like, humans deep down. Like, oh, man. <laughs> he's a out his, like, his somebody, beard. Somebody go over there and make him break a break seven boards with his head. <laughs> Just so I know he, he knows some evil karate or something. Yeah, look at that picture. Yeah. There he is. They're dragging him out of the hole. He's he's got that big beard. Oh, he's man. he was just a wreck. And, ah. and he has this, 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 you know, and he, it's like, look, I know what he did. He didn't really do anything to us that much. He did it to a lot of His people. Own people. That's what I said. There was a whole string of, on a, a whack bag uh, message board about about it and people discussing it. And I said, you know something? I could give a crap. I'll be honest with you. This is just a plain honesty. I could give a crap who he killed in his own country. I have no feelings toward the people he killed. It was horrible from what I hear. And I'm sure the families of those people uh, were the ones rejoicing when Saddam was killed. But I 
could care less how many of his countrymen he killed. And and I'm sure somebody's discussing it somewhere. There were no insurgents when he was. Oh, everyone's the yeah been saying that he knew how there, to there, run that that crap hole. He was scarier than blowing yourself up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Scarier. There was no blowing yourself up over there. Did you hear some of the stuff he did? Well, with, we were with talking about and the, the chest family. Bombs. And, yeah, they they put they, they, he was Yesterday. in a he was in a town. This is what he was tried and killed for. He went to a town, uh, and there was an assassination attempt against him. So he sent his people over there and just started killing young men that he thought might have been responsible. Killed a bunch of them. Uh, not not a firing squad, not a quick hanging. Not the, he strapped explosives to these chests. There are films of that. I saw this on YouTube. They, they strapped explosives to these uh, young men's chests, put them on the side of a dirt hill, and then whenever they felt like it, they pushed the button and blew it up. And then there's this blown up dead guy, and they bring the next guy over and lay him next to the dead guy with the explosive. And he's looking around like, all right. Boy, if that ain't anticipation, waiting for that thing to blow up. And boom, there goes another one. And then they bring another guy. And these people are so cooperative with yeah. their own death. I've seen beheadings where no one was tied up. No one was screaming. Oh, yeah. Oh, they don't cut my head off. No, they just, It was all just right. very comfortable getting I'll into head-cutting position. <laughs> yeah, they get into head-cutting position. Hey, listen, my fate. Hey, listen, try this. This is a this is a double X bomb. See if you fit this one. Yeah, this one's a good fit. All right, go stand <laughs> yeah. over there. I... I <laughs> Go to the rack and pick out the size that fits you. I also believe uh, Saddam uh, had his son-in-law killed. He he had he had done something or said something and then fled the country. And Saddam and the the sons, his sons, had assured this guy, "Please come back. Everything's everything. everything's fine. You you will not be hurt. All is forgiven. Just please come back." The guy came back into the country. Oh, he's the dummy. They killed him so fast and so horrifically. In the end, that guy's the dummy. Oh, what adult. Of course. But this guy was, Saddam was ruthless. We might have something good here. Uh, we're being heard all over the world at this point yes. because of the internet and satellite radio and all that. Uh, we got Paul in Ireland listening online. Paul. Yes. We want to hear from people, uh, you know, outside America. I love your Guinness, uh, my friend. At this point. So far, we got Paul from Ireland. What's up, Paul? Um, what other people think of America? You don't is, sound Irish. No, I'm, I'm originally from New Jersey. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus! It's, it's, uh, <laughs> we I, thought we we thought we were onto something he's here. A yeah. He's a plastic patty. No, no, no. <laughs> he's from Newark. <laughs> Great, his job brought him to Ireland. <laughs> First of all, let me explain something to you about Ireland right now. Yeah. Um, used to be one of those places. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I did a little bit of traveling in the last. Ten years or whatever, Ireland used to be one of those places. Like, oh, this is fantastic because the people over there, like, we're the blacks of Europe. They identify with black people. They had this wonderful. It was beautiful over there, and something happened. Nigerian immigrants came over because uh -huh. the country's so rich right now that now they didn't. Ha they wasn't racist because there wasn't anybody over there living of a different right. ethnic group. <laughs> it was now, all just the Irish. When I went over there first, I was like, hey, this is beautiful. I got over there the second time. They're looking at me like, you fa and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> oh, no. Hey, what happened here? Now, Idi Amin over there. <laughs> now all the real racism's coming out in Ireland. Really? Yeah, absolutely. They're brand new races over there. They yeah. Oh, racism. brand new. That's cute. That's cute. I <laughs> brand new they, racism. Huh? I hope they can cultivate it. Thank still, God, it's still, still happening. still got the silicone back in their racism. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> <laughs> Keeps the moisture out. Keeps the moisture off the race. Well, Speaking of us, uh, Catholics need somebody new to hate. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Catholic. Yeah. Speaking of Idi yeah. Amin, ha have you watched uh, King of Scotland? Yet? I want to see that. Oh I my seen it yet. God, is that a great movie? Is it a good movie? Great movie. I want to see that. What's his name? Uh, might just win the Oscar for uh, Jefferson from uh, Jefferson uh, from uh, I, 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 uh, Fast Times, not Jefferson. Uh, Forrest Whitaker. No, no, we know him as uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the the football player from Ridgemont. How was his name? What was his name? Y'all are foul. What? Just give some respect and know his name. Was please. it Jefferson? Uh, he play, uh, 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 now he's Edie Amin. He d yeah, it's unbelievable. Edie Amin. He is great in this flick. <laughs> Last King of Scotland. Anyway, Paul, what do you got for the show? Edie Amin for Earth, Wind, and Fire, Fire. and Little Brother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what people outside of America think is fat people, Jesus freaks, and gun nuts. 
That's what they think about when they think about America. They don't understand the difference between the red states and the blue states. Fat There's people, Jesus freaks, states. and gun nuts. Yeah. yeah. Charles gun Jefferson. Nuts. Yeah, it was Jefferson. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Hi, Paul. Jefferson and Thank you. Little yeah. brother. Uh, if you're listening somewhere in the world right now, give <laughs> us a call, will you? One eight six six three one three free. Yeah, we have a. Paul's a, from Jersey. There's though. a perception. You know what happened? This is all came about because of the fall of the Soviet Union. There were two big boys on the block. Now there's only one, and we're the a holes now. <clears throat> we're the world's like uh, uh, cat box. Can we lose? Can we end up being like Russia? Uh, I don't know enough about politics to be comfortable enough to say that we're not going to be walking around without give paper. Give China some time. They're 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 building. They could become that next superpower that really becomes the threat to us. I I uh, we're are, at the poker table right now not, with all the chips. We got all the chips. People like the insurgencies and, and the terrorists. They're winning some hands and taking some chips from us. But we got a huge stack. China's building. They're building. I've been saying it for a while. The Chinese are coming. Let me tell you They're something. They're coming, man. White Slowly world but surely. is not going to let China run it. It might not, not have any choice. The only good part about it There'll is fat China is embracing go. capitalism. <clears throat> China is embracing the money. Yeah, money, still money, under the guise money. Of, of, of communism, though, still under that. Yeah, but it, it's no Russian communism. They are selling like crazy over there. What did we ever buy that was Russian over here? How many things we buy that are Chinese? We buy a lot of stuff from China in this country. We bought nothing from Russia. They produced crap. Russia produced fear and uh, bombs. Here's another thing we, we don't produce in this country. Mm. We, could, we produce people who will kill for this country. But we don't pr produce people who... Now, you got to get this right because I don't want nobody saying I'm a <laughs> jackass. Good we luck. die in the in the midst of protecting this country. The soldiers die. Yeah. But they don't. We don't go in with the express idea of death. We don't have suicide d missions and suicide squads where we go. You know what? Hey, Jimmy, run up in that building and right. blow yourself up. These people. Th these people have that kind of loyalty. The Chinese, the Japanese, the the terrorists. They, they and and Russians to this thing, man. They'll just go in there and they'll just go. Look, I'm ready to. I'm gonna die. Now we go in ready Chechnyans. to die, but I'm oh, trying to live. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but they, they have to do that because they don't have the weapons they don't we have. have. The great Are weapons we have. China has the weapons we have. <laughs> yeah, the Ch Japanese had the weapons yeah, the, we had in World War II. They, they weren't doing kamikaze runs until uh, they yeah. knew they were done. When they no, finally they have kamikaze runs. When they finally had those little. When their planes were shot up and they were and they were uh, done for. They were there. What do you think? No jet planes ever landed not, back at the carrier. I just want to make sure people understand what I'm saying. When they, I say they don't it. have a they don't have a choice. Yeah. That's the only reason. If yeah. they have the technology, they're going to take that out of their game. Trust I know, me. I know they're, what you're saying. Stop blowing themselves There's up. There's a passion for fighting and winning that goes with blowing yourself up. You're saying that that we don't have that. I, no, 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 no. I'm with Hope on this one. I think we, we have better weapons. We are willing. <clears throat> we are willing to die mm -hmm. for for this country. People, people, soldiers are over there dying, so they're willing yeah. to die. But if over we, three thousand now, by the way, exactly. So, I'm but we're track. not. We don't go over there with express. We go over there with the idea of living, right? And 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 killing and living, not killing and go. You know, death is a part of the job. But there's nobody. We don't have. We don't raise people who go. I'm gonna kill. We try. Hey, look at. We try to kill as many people as we can and still live. We were like that in World War Two, though. Too, you know, as as a country, we, no one yeah. wanted to go over there and, and, and we kicked some ass over there. Revolutionary War. The guy with the drums. He yeah. didn't have a weapon. He was just drumming. The drum the guy. Idea, his he idea was, was like, guy. yeah, but he was the stupid yeah. drum guy. It wasn't like, all right, <laughs> stupid hey. guy with the fife. You would think they would give him, hey, give him hey, something. Hey, on hey, Jesus. hey, Tony the drummer. <laughs> Go out there you and kidding? be ready to die. It wasn't like the crazy dude. dude did we, the, he was patriotic. We had and it. Ready to die. Look, we but had you know it just I'm like saying. they have it yeah. now, but then we figured out the weaponry. The, we had civil, civil we war. Had stupid there. fife guy. We talked him into playing a little tune while freaking bullets are flying have, over his head. Do you think we can have suicide? Civil war. We can have suicide bombers. There. It, under the right to. circumstances. No, d d I'm, I'm just saying that the, the logistics of don't not right saying, now. Do you think we could ever have suicide bombers represent this country? Meaning, all right, you're gonna go in and you're just gonna kill yourself 
for the sake of this of what we're doing now. Honestly, yeah, I think there's there's guys out there that are more than willing to do that. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. But I, I but I think because the weaponry and stuff, we don't have to go down that road. That's all. Yeah. Stupid five guy, don't forget. I don't we know. did, we I mean, did talk uh, yeah. guys into doing some crazy things for the Revolutionary I mean, War. AK forty sevens is that's that's technological enough. And them dudes were you still don't think killing these guys... themselves during the Afghanistan Dude. thing against Russia. They were still Hold on, running Patrice. around blowing themselves up. I know, yeah. Patrice, you and got that AK forty seven. You got anybody over in Iraq that you know? No. So you're not getting some of the stories mm -hmm. coming back? These guys are taking some sick effing uh, chances. Listen to me. I'm, They're not hiding behind trees this, and this taking is, a shot at No, here. this is not the argument. Let They're me, running I, into I villages and to, houses not knowing what the I want what you to be clear find. about what I'm saying, Th just to make sure. I'm not saying that there's not guys willing to die. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because that's a part of being a soldier. I'm saying that... If you had to talk to everybody, if you talk to one of the insurgents, they go, oh, I'm going to die. Right. Die, right. Allah, they, they do a, a, a farewell video to the family. Everybody, they're already ready to die. Americans, we are ready to kill and maybe die, but hopefully we live. But it's because of the Dudes situation. want to live. It's the situation we're in. It, it, it during is. the revolution, when yeah. the English were o over here, uh, and we were fighting for our, our uh, freedom from from them. Uh, I think a lot of people were going into battle, knowing saying, I'm, "I'm dying for this cause. I'm not killing and living to get freedom. I know I'm running into these red coats and and, and I'm getting killed." I think I think that changes when you got all the chips and you're the big guy. You know, we got guys. I I read a, a great article in uh, Popular Mechanics. I think it was. There are guys in California that are in these big containers. You know, this container tr ship containers right. that are decked out with all kinds of electronics. They're flying predators. Those unmanned aerial uh, devices over Iraq right. from a container in California, bombing stuff. Right. Why would you worry? You're sitting there, you're smoking a cigarette, you're eating, you're sending someone out for KFC. You're in California, and you're blowing people up you're in watching, another country. You're watching ESPN on another screen. Right. Why would you then <laughs> you know. even think about strapping a bomb to yourself? But I think that as a country, we're as passionate about how we live as as they are about how they live. Yeah, but we like building stuff that can kill them and, easier and, 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 and right, keep we us like safe. to live. But right, the, but you're that's what I'm saying. We, we like, like to live. live. You're missing a big point here too. They're doing it for their religion. We're They're, doing it for our religion too. Not, not now really, with Bush. Mm -mm. We're fighting for his religion. Not not like they are, man. It's a, it's a big difference there. Really, is our our way of life under duress if we don't go over there and do it and and and, and fight? In Iraq, our way of life is not under no. That, well, that's been the big argument. It's you know what not. I'm saying? But I'm just my point but, is not that I'm not willing. We, they're not willing to die, but we're not out trying to die. We're trying to. No, they want to get home. Live. Yeah. Right, yes. Listen, yeah. listen, we gotta take a break, but we got a soldier on the line, Mike from Long Island. Uh, Mike. I hope Mike understands Mike's, what I meant. Mike's opinion of dying for the, for this country, Mike. Listen, that's what makes us better and gives us all the chips. Anthony's right. You gotta be a complete retard to want to just go into a building <laughs> and want to blow yourself up just because you think you're doing something better for your country. What makes us better is that we will go and we will blow you up, come back, drink a beer, and tell everybody how badass we are. Which is just the point I was making. Could you? Could we actually make suicide bombers, dude? You think? No. Could we create suicide bombers in this country? Not in this so situation. We're so in. jealous of us that they will blow themselves up thinking that that's a better thing. They're brainwashed retards. Yeah, we're the, gonna go get we're the nasty, first. arrogant country of the world right now. You think now. if this country got a bit more uh, desperate, we, we could get suicide bombers going? Yeah, if we, if we were invaded... If we and, felt like and, our backs and, were against the wall... If then, we were invaded and we started losing oh, the war... Big time. The whole mindset of every American would change. We wouldn't yeah. be the same nation. We wouldn't be the same people. Right. And then perhaps we'd be. But under the, of that. these circumstances, these circumstances, it ain't we're, we're, I'd rather have a Starbucks. By the way, I did get <laughs> then blow myself up. I did get a little overly excited there, and I was saying weaponry, and no one called me out on it. Whatever, it's weapon. Weaponry. <laughs> That's how Bugs Bunny we says it. Weaponry. Weaponry. That's well, I get all my uh, my uh, my weaponry done. <laughs> my grammar from 
Bugs Bunny cartoons. <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. I might Eliza. you. We got to get into the subway here on some other things. We got someone. Ah, oh, they they hung up. If you're listening to us from somewhere in the world, give us a call today. That's uh, one of the things we're doing, right? Yeah, we love the globe. Sure. It's the Opie and Anthony <laughs> show. And he went four for five, four for five, four for five. And I tied Travis at the end of the season. <laughs> so they split it. So we split the money. Travis gets 5000 that he threw right in his back pocket. And I got $5,000, and I'm going to throw it out of a helicopter. But we're, you know, having to go through certain channels uh, because... Um, it's kind of difficult to have a helicopter and money and people and rioting. Stand on a stand on a roof and do it because it, it'll it'll come. A helicopter, first of all, to blow all the money everywhere. That's it'll, what we want. It'll land on roofs. It'll yeah. Land, it'll just it'll. It, how about it'll a how name. about a helicopter over a field there? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you getting mad? You know, I'm you, trying to do something good here. Who are you, the Beatles? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sergeant Pepper the in over a field. Just, just, just block off and stand on top of this building and throw the money off, man. Uh, how about hot air balloon? Yeah, someone suggested There's that. There's no uh, rotor wash, so you're not going to spread the money around. Someone suggested a hot air Lightly balloon. tumble down. That's how about boring, a, man. How about I want a dirigible. I want to fly in on an angle. Is that what you want to do? I want to be, be holding to the door that's open. <laughs> Is it ones or twenties? <laughs> and I hope as you hold it in all the, and all the goofy, <laughs> I hope it blows right up into the blades like a... <laughs> and like just... A, <laughs> cuts it all up. That's why I'm going to have a shredded confetti. Confetti. <laughs> it flies out and goes right back into that back the tail rotor that gets shot off in every movie and it <laughs> spins around. <laughs> the, min and the miniature one hits the cliff and explodes. <laughs> yeah. Stupid special effects from the eighties. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, but, we still got to work on it because. Uh, I don't know. There's got to be laws and things. That well, Chicago has contacted me, and they said they could get this done for me. No problem. Everyone in Chicago? The, the, the entire city of Chicago? Uh, Drew called from Chicago, yeah. from WCKG. He goes, dude, we can make this happen in Chicago. No problem. I know I could get you in a helicopter to drop $5,000. <sighs> and I guess we're asking the listeners to send in their postcards. Yeah. Do we have that address and all that info up the, on the website there, Steve? It's all online. It's all online. Right I'd now. hate to have to, you know, because I would love to do it in Chicago, you know, in January. Why don't you do it over Newark? I'd like to see it. Newark, the whole, don't wow. do it in Manhattan. Fly over the Bronx or fly over um, like 160 some street. <laughs> don't fly. Don't do no nothing about don't, don't, Manhattan. Give it to some Dude. people who need it. Norton does a great bit on the uh, the GPS and the cars and stuff. And it actually happened to me. Club Soda Kenny is falling asleep on the couch. By the way, opianthony.com has all the info. But basically, you send in a postcard to, to us here in New York City, 40 West 57th Street, 14th floor, New York, New York, 10019, attention, Opie and Anthony show. Basically, we're going to get a pile of postcards. I'm going to pick a postcard, whatever city that is. I'm going there, and I'm throwing the $5,000 around. For uh, for the listeners, but anyway, uh, Kenny, come here real fast. We get we come we come back from L.A. <laughs> after the Leno thing. Yeah, we fly into Newark. It's late at night. It's what like midnight there, Kenny. Yeah, yeah. The plane lands at midnight, and we get a nice car, which was very very nice to come back to Manhattan. And the guy, I guess, throws in his GPS. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Manhattan from Newark. Yep, takes us through the ghetto of Newark. Kenny yeah. is losing his mind. Why? Well, well, first I said to the guy, you know, we're going to take the turnpike to the Lincoln Tunnel. Of He's course. Like, Any wait, goddamn person that doesn't take that. we, we got to bring everyone to, into the discussion. Yeah. We're being heard all over the country, okay? Uh, you fly into Newark. It's a short ride to Manhattan. And and like you said, you go uh, right onto the turnpike. turnpike. Lincoln minutes. Tunnel. Lincoln Tunnel. No problem. No riffraff. No ghettos. No drug dealing. One nine to the Holland. Well, you could do that if you need to be downtown. All right, yeah. But, right. Let, let's but just the point put it, is, I'll put it in a perspective very, for people. There's a very safe route. Yeah, for people around take. the country, picture your airport, your international airport, and the city that is nearest to it that you have to get to, and the most direct route right. to all, that. All That's highway. what we're talking about. It's all highway. It's major thoroughfares. That's where you... Where do these savages 
Go, go, driving around, and I look out the window and go, "Why are we here? These yeah. these savages it's out of the GPS way. GPS, GPS. Hunger, bunker, hunger, bunker. That's why when we have to do stuff, I either get uh, Kane to drive me, or I drive my own car, or I jump in a cab. I hate these car services. Hate them. Oh. Well, why didn't you just? Scream at him as soon as he took the wrong turn. Oh, believe me, I was yelling him the whole way. But the guy, I don't even know if he spoke English. He was just like not acknowledging that Kenny was even speaking to him. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm going, look, pal, like, you know, if you want to get a tip from your customers, don't drive them this way. Yeah. You know, you go to Turnpike to the tunnel. Highways. It's yeah. almost. And look, Newark, f for the rest of to get lost from. Right. To, from, oh, you, my God, you, you could see it. He went backwards to get where yep. he yeah. had to get. Yeah. He had to save yep. a couple tolls. Uh, he was trying to save toll money and then and we think it might have been on the gps we went right through the ghetto of newark around one oh, in the morning dude i was in the rain in the rain oh when they are found slumped over that wheel with the one shot to the back of their head <laughs> oh it doesn't even, it doesn't bother me in the least i ain't gonna lie i might have laughed <laughs> another robbed one because he came and he's sending money back to his family and blue 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 bully 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 no, bill no. <laughs> No, I don't know where he... Patrice does the voice. The double uh... double. Yeah. 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 <laughs> in my I I'm GPS the guy in. Gam Idali my look at you idiot. Don't and, just go straight at Bandy. And he was so pissed. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, for the rest of America, Newark is a asshole. Oh, still. you don't want to be there. They're really trying to make it better, but that they... place is downright scary. And the parts we went through, yeah. I mean, burnt out buildings. Why just, would you, you know how no lost reason. you guys had to be? No reason to see and a hard a hard area in well, Newark. I, I knew mm -hmm. my way around because I used to work there, so I knew where we were yeah. going. Kenny, you should have yeah. choked the guy. That means he completely choked him out. You. And, like, it, and it didn't help that we were in a brand new shiny stretched limo. I'm yeah. like, why do we need right. a brand new stretched limo to get back to Manhattan? Give me a stupid car. You, right. You're lucky somebody just didn't shoot at it because it was a limo. No right. kidding. That's what I was saying. Just yeah. pop a few right into the windows. In the double don't worry. A lot of gibblers, <laughs> and then don't worry. That's the only thing you understand. The, en the entry system on his GPS are little bongo drums. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, and even, <laughs> and even if <laughs> Even if you tried to program it yourself, it's all in those squiggly letters with dots over them. You don't know what like it means. X's and some zeros. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny, how could you let oh, boy, it? Not. How could it? It couldn't have disintegrated to that level. It you you can't. You can't get lost just two turns or one turn. He was turn. beyond it pissed. Was he was just losing his mind. It was 50 turns you had to take. I lost. cannot stand when they don't take the way that you know everybody takes. They take it a thousand times, and they try to yeah, save money on tolls. Yeah, because the first words out of my mouth were taken to the turnpike to the Lincoln Tunnel. He's like, no problem. And, and, no and, problem, problem. Yeah, and right. the next thing you know, we're going through downtown Newark, and I'm going like, Great. And, and another thing, Newark Airport. It's only it's logistics that is in that it says is in Newark. Yeah. It's not in New it's like in Jersey City. It's on the it's, border of Elizabeth and Newark. It's just it's not even in the town. It's only in the town because it, it says it has to be in the town. Yeah. yeah. But it's completely it's in New York. You don't have to go into Newark. It's harder to get to New York from LaGuardia than it is <laughs> yeah. Newark. Yeah, it's amazing. Let's yeah. go to Doug in South River. Doug, what's up? <laughs> Yeah, the uh, that GPS and the same thing happened to me the first time I got it. What happened is they put it on shortest distance and it takes you the shortest route. And you cut through all these little towns and all these little ghettos and you have yeah, no idea. Yeah, you just you want are. highway. You don't want shortest distance because it'll take you outside. What's the difference between shortest street. and fastest? Fastest yeah. is it could be longer mile wise, but it's highway. But they know it's shortest distance is side streets and you know one way streets uh, and neighborhoods yeah, okay. and yeah. stop signs and lights and everything. So uh, Norton, Norton does a great bit on the GPS and how you should have to put your race in the in the, in the GPS oh, system. So it takes yeah, you that's the, a great the bit proper way. Oh, he did it on Letterman, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was funny. They didn't really want to blow up his spot, but it's hilarious. Maybe we can find that uh, clip really fast and play it going in a break. I don't know. That would be kind of cool. Let's say hi to uh, Matt. Matt, what's up? How you doing, OP? What's up, man? What's up, man? Hey. How much? Yeah, I just came to that uh, the $5,000. Yeah. Hey, why don't you guys give that to the Harlem guy, the Harlem hero? The Harlem hero? Why would we that give it to a lunatic? lunatic. <laughs> 
Nut job. Oh, he risked his life. It was a great thing, man. He's a lunatic sacrificing his life for a stranger like that when he has two what uh, daughters at home. Watching. You know what? Watching. Yeah, watching father jump onto the tracks. Throw the money on the third rail. Guy yeah, watched too much, uh, too many movies. Vision. Hey, you made that. Lucky you weren't having a seizure, right? Hey, you know what? Let me tell you something, Matt. If I was having a seizure and I was on a subway and I fell between the tracks like that, I don't expect anyone to save me. No, you're I'm not done. stupid. You're done for. You want that guy is really lucky. He has the seizure. That's going to work with the 5000 dollars And let me tell you something else. Why the hell is a guy standing so close to the edge that when he has a seizure, he flies off onto the goddamn tracks? You don't stand by the edge. I love these people. Anytime that somebody gets pushed onto the tracks by some lunatic homeless guy, they're the ones standing on the edge, peering out over the track. <laughs> All right, Matt. Thanks. Oh wait, hold up. You know, hold what's on. that? What, Kenny? The nerve of that guy having a seizure <laughs> and inconveniencing other commuters. <laughs> right, trying to get to work. <laughs> hey, we got the story. It is pretty amazing, but uh, this guy is just plain stupid. He's a hero construction worker. Yeah, well, the news. He's uh, the Harlem hero. No, he's a lunatic. That's what he is. Hero he construction worker. The only son, Wesley Autry, risked his life to save a stranger. I'm Wesley Autry. <laughs> I, I saved a man. I'm Wesley Autry. It's my wife, Christina Autry. <laughs> I'm just an American man. My daughter, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley Autry. <laughs> I think I think he's a superhero. <laughs> I, I'll save you. After the story, we got to get into the fact that maybe the guy is watching too many action movies because <laughs> yeah. this is not right. Stranger today, hours later, with a fresh set of clothes and a mission to make sure that stranger was okay, he spoke to the CW11. Well, I see someone in need of help. I'm going to go to that person's res rescue. Just before 1 p.m., that stranger, 18-year-old film student Cameron Hollowpeter, was waiting for the number one train at the 137th Hollow Street Peter. Broadway station. <laughs> Autry says as he went through the turnstile with his two young daughters, he noticed the first sign of trouble. We saw a guy drop. He went into a seizure. He started kicking his hands, and, and his feet was kicking. Autry says the stranger then got up but stumbled and landed on the tracks. So Autry jumped down after him. Oh. Are you nuts? We all like to think that we would help someone out in a situation like that. Nah. <laughs> We're watching the Sorry. guy... And what time of day was it? Because yeah. I tell you what, if I saw him fall, I'd have did that look to the left and look to the right for the other hero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know there's a hero around here somewhere. Yeah, gotta be. <laughs> All right, everybody, we can do this. And then just back up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Watch this flailing idiot get hit by a truck. You're standing there like, oh, great. I'm the only one on the freaking <laughs> and platform like, here. And as the train's going, I'm looking at him like, like when uh. Alan Rickman fell out of the building and Die Hard with him. Just follow him all the way down. Got to be a hero around here somewhere. That, um, uh, no one to my left. No uh, one to my right. Yeah, I think the train's coming. Uh, I think I can live with myself. <laughs> I'd have tossed him a spoon. <laughs> yeah. Told him to put it in his mouth. And good Don't swallow you. your tongue while you're down there. No, I would have no. tossed him my cell phone to maybe, you know, call his loved one real fast. <laughs> yeah. I got too much selfishness. I would have been thinking of too many things about me, like, wait a minute, rats. Hmm. Third mm. rail. Doo, doo, doo. You ever look how far down that is, too? You got to think. Am I going to be able to lift myself back up? Not me. If I go down there? I know my hey. upper body strength ain't yeah. happening. Ain't. <laughs> well, no, you got to make that assessment before you do it. Well, Ooh. here's how it went down. The, Autry explains how uh, how he jumped onto the subway. I like this jumped. One. This is nuts. The guy was face down, I mean, back down in the, in the gutter. I grabbed both his hands. As I grabbed both his hands, I looked up. I see two lights. A train is approaching us. In moments, Autry knew both oh, of them could die. My next decision, do I struggle there with him and possibly end, we both end up getting hit? Or do I dive on top of him? So I, I went for the dive. Autry shielded the young stranger with his own body in between the tracks. The train rolled over them. Autry walked away without a scratch, and Cameron Hollowpeter was taken to St. Luke's Hospital in stable condition. I guarantee he has a surfboard that he painted silver that he he pretends that he's the silver surfer. He has green paint and pretends he's the Hulk. He super, that day, he had his Superman delusion going. He was a hero. He That guy, it, he has delusions about 
about this was so. This is why he acted so fast. And he, and he in his description of finally happened the two for lights, he imagined it. Let me tell you, in my delusion of imagining things like that, here's what I imagine. Again, selfishness. Uh -huh. I imagine I saved a guy and he doesn't give me the proper thank you. Like that. Whoa. Like I save him and he just wipes himself off and taps him on the shoulder and is good looking out Thanks, and walks away. And I'm, I go, I I'm off to work. I saved your life. <laughs> and this dude. This dude had he has delusions of say he has delusions of catching somebody. I bet you he thinks if a plane crashes, he could just walk right out of it right before it hits the ground. Like step out the door, step out the door, crash around him, and then it'll start helping people. <laughs> he probably has a scenario for everything. Yeah. Like if let, let's say you take the subway every day. This guy does he probably does right. Of He's course, a working of working Joe. So uh, he probably has thought, what would happen? What would I do? You know. And then he sees that and goes, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll let me act. He stabs people so he can stitch them up. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of those guys, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand how you, you – obviously, I, I guess he had no other choice, but to – Lay on the tracks of a subway. You don't know how low any of that gaggy uh, tree under look, there is. Look, and all right, if you're going to jump and try to save the guy, wouldn't you put the guy on top of you? Right. What do you think in your mind? Well, I've done enough. If one of us is going to die, at least, uh, you know, have, I don't know if have there's two him. people's clearance under there. Right. So I know there's the probably train, one person clearance. There may be two, but I'm not taking the yeah. chance. So. so the train was went over them. Over, over both of them. Yeah. No, like, hooks so, so, down there. And hero guy was dangling. on top. So under that theory, why not just let him lay there? That would have just been the same rescue. I think he was trying to get up again or something, so he jumped down. This is what he said. He jumped down and... He said the guy's arms were moving, so instead of struggling with him, he just laid on top of him. Yeah. Instead of trying to pull him off the track. Yeah. He laid yeah, on. Exactly. I laid on top of him and let the train go over. But how do you know there's two people? Cuckoo, clearance? cuckoo, cuckoo. That dude's crazy, man. Yeah. But the news are saying he's a hero. He's a hero. Well, here's more that audio. Wasn't heroic. It was. It was um, silly. Silly. <laughs> Heroic yeah. is lift him up, toss him up, yeah. and then... Jump out of the way last minute. Right. That was and then, crazy. Yeah. And shoot a web or something. <laughs> That's like if somebody shoot, fell out of a... With a web net and it stops the subway. Yeah. If, if somebody fell out of a plane with no parachute and yeah. you jumped and you didn't have a parachute either and yeah. you went to hold him and both of y'all just flew down with while, him. While you didn't hoping, have a way of saving him. While you're hey. hoping to find a parachute on the way down. I think there was a story <laughs> like that. Guy jumped out of a freaking plane without a parachute to save somebody else that was knocked unconscious. Someone look it up on the internet. I'm telling you right now. I remember something about that. I remember Somehow, something like I think, that. Somehow, I think uh, someone jumped out of a plane and, and here's what happened and, and hit the hit the wing or something was knocked out cold. And one of the instructors said, "I could do this." Jumped out. Guy got knocked was out. Was able to get to him using all those fancy and, I'm falling and in the air then moves. What? Guy got screwed up. And held on to the guy and, and pulled the shoe. I know pulled... the goddamn story. Oh, oh the guy, the, uh, the guy knocked out guy, <laughs> the knocked Jesus. out guy had a, a had a parachute on. Here's what happened. Is it right? The guy jumps out of the plane. He pulls his parachute. He starts going into one of these spins because the chute didn't deploy and the right way. And that knocked him out because of the G-force. The G-force has made him go there unconscious. Go. So he's spinning. The other guy had already pulled his chute. So he pulled his chute. He's up there now. And then he releases his main chute. Oh, my God. And oh, okay. goes down, oh. so he grabs the, the guy to straight. He had his reserve chute. Uh, no, I, I know another story then, man. That's crazy no story shoot. from James Bond movie. No. I think you know. <laughs> no shoot. Because James Bond, I know, did that. <laughs> Someone no. go do some research. No that shoot. Was, that was Pierce Brosnan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> with, his, with his little boy shorts on. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's yeah. James Bond with his boy shorts. Oh, the new one? Oh, give us a break, will you? <laughs> that new James Bond movie kicked ass, though. You like the boy shorts? I didn't like the boy shorts. <laughs> I didn't notice the boy shorts, to tell you the truth. I noticed the action packedness. All oh, right. Oh, you noticed action the action packed. Good no, that's good. No, well, no. <laughs> Guy's gone wild. Oh.
Hollow Peter's grandfather tells us tonight he's doing okay. He's miraculously just fine. I mean, we chatted and, uh, yeah, waiting for his dad to come down. The family is grateful. A good Samaritan was in the right place at the right time. I would love to meet him. I would love to shake his hand on behalf of the whole family and say, you know, thanks so much. And what, what can you say? What a guy, right? Who's that Dave Mason? Peter's grandfather says he's not sure how much his grandson remembers of the whole incident. He's been in and out of consciousness since it happened. <laughs> As Jackie Mason. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, 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 hey. Save my grandson. <laughs> Save my grandson. We're all hollow Peters. <laughs> hollow Peter. Oof. Hey, everyone like to think that super negro. For... <laughs> Jumped on my son. I don't know. Everyone is super negro. <laughs> everyone is saying I'm thinking of Point Break. No, this I know it. The, it happened at Point Break. <laughs> it's a movie. <laughs> everyone saying it's a movie. I'm telling it's a movie. you, a... I'm being called out. No, there's something going on here. We need to do some research. Uh, Dean and Philly, what's up? What's up, Bonnie? Hey. hey, man. Hey, you sure it wasn't Keanu Reeves jumping out of the plane after Patrick Swayze? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was a real story. I, I've heard Anthony's story, but I'm telling you, there was another one where the guy jumped out without a parachute and saved somebody. Somebody help me here. That's crazy. No one's helping you. So, so he saw the guy. I don't care if it G takes me until tomorrow. I'll he come saw in with the guy, freaking story. He saw the guy during a G4 spin. Well, no, I remember that one too, but I think there were two. You of think these. some guy got knocked out, right? So he's falling, falling, and in. then another guy comes out and, and catches up to him. But yes. how? It, let's let's just investigate why uh -huh. this story is not. It, yours makes sense. This one doesn't. All right. How do you? If I'm in a plane and you and I go go and you jump, how the hell do I know when you bumped your head and you're falling at seven thousand miles an hour that you are knocked out? That mm. I know that you're in distress right True. away. True. True. Anthony's <clears throat> story definitely happened. But I'm, I remember something about... And why would the guy be in there a without a parachute? He's either the pilot... Or the instructor. Or the instructor. Or, you know, he's either the pilot or the guy that's going to be jumping. It was on that dumb show, Max Videos, or whatever it's called. With <laughs> Max X. The Max X. The you know guy that talks it like this Max no matter what happens. You know what it was? It was, it was a guy... A guy... Matter of fact, he saved himself. I saw that video. Uh, there's been he got a few knocked out. Parachute ones, he got yeah. knocked out, and he's doing a spin, and he saved himself. He un he undid himself. All right, we're gonna get to the bottom of this. I'm telling you. <laughs> of we course we are. We're gonna send this into the institute, and they're gonna do some research. Do some research. The, some research at the uh, Opie and Anthony Institute. All right. Uh, <laughs> no filter. Paul did a uh, salt on the media yesterday. Yes, he did. All the news programs were very excited to to talk about the Harlem hero and uh, Who wouldn't be. No filter. Paul blew up their spot yesterday. We'll get into that audio next. And I, I think uh, Louis C.K. stopping by today. Nice. It's the Opie and Anthony show. Uh -huh. Louis C.K. in studio. We're checking out the fine video on TV. Boise State, right? Boise. I didn't Boise. see this live. You saw this? Greatest. I, I mean, it might be better. I've seen the top, what they, what some people was writing as the top ten college uh, bowl game ever. Mm -hmm. This was uh, like number four or so. I, it was the best I've ever yeah. seen. I've never seen anything like that. They beat Boise State, who's like from Idaho. You know, it's up and coming. They don't squad. give a crap about beat. that. We're talking about what happened after the game. Well, I'm just going. I'm just going <laughs> to have to run it down. We yeah. got to so, talk about so how good playing, that college game was. Yeah, really. Oklahoma. It was. You, you don't understand topic. how great that game was. So they beat Oklahoma. No, no, the guy who saved to. the dude on the tracks and then this game, how good this game it's, is. It's fantastic. And, and by the way, right. someone sent in a video of Moonraker <laughs> as far as the parachute thing goes. It's go. Moonraker where James Bond jumps out of a plane <laughs> without a chute and steals it. All right, we're going to get into a bunch of things here. But but, uh, the, but after the game, after, yeah. they, after they won in this amazing fashion on the uh, Statue of Liberty play, right? Yeah. Then the, uh, the star running back proposed to... <laughs> One of his, the cheerleaders. The black star running back proposed to it. He's the, barely black, though. The, no, he's black. He's, he's, black. he's black. He's not a barely black guy. Justin Guarini's barely black. This, he's not Mickey Rivers black. There's two different blacks, though. And he, and he knits. There's, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's two different types of black that knitter. isn't really black. He's black. There's that's black crazy. guy with white features that's really dark. Yeah. And then there's this guy who has black features, but he's really white. That's true. No, this dude is black. Let me tell you. Oh, oh tell no, you he won't be accepted. Her parents say it. <laughs> right. Let's ask her daddy he asked, if he's black. <laughs> he asked Lily Munster to get married. <laughs> She's as white as you could possibly be. 
Uh, yeah. he, he proposed after the game there. She looks a little there. hispanic doesn't she? Nah, she no. looks like the all-American kind of... Like cleaned up spicky, sort of? I don't not know. She's kind of... Not even close. She's almost got some... Uh, what's her name? Rachel from Friends Hair? Yeah. Kind of yeah. that hair. She's got a Friends thing haircut. Thing going, Friends haircut. Oh, country is And that. this is Idaho. They're coming... Uh, they're all, like, congratulating them. She's real tiny. No, it's funny. They're in New York and are being happy. They'll go back to home to Idaho. Oh, oh be yeah. dead. Yeah. As, as somebody beats him with a bag of potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> what were you thinking, boy? <laughs> You're in Idaho now. Hey. I don't know, though. I think he might be all right. Because, I mean, yeah. I don't have, you know, I don't have uh, racism in me, but I'm white, so I have the reflex. Like, I know. Of course. Like, I know. The You're race. Like, I, I look racial. at his face and I don't feel that sort of reflexive revulsion. Like, oh, my God, a white <laughs> woman with a well, black guy. you live in New York, he Louis. Looks, well, I know, you're from true. New York. Yeah, so I was like, that's hey, true. But that. yeah. We're watching the video, and then Anthony had this uh, thought in his head. It just instantly, like, like as if, uh, yeah, I guess when when psychiatrists say, I'm just going to blurt out a word, and, and you, or I'll show you a picture, and you just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Like, I look, I saw that couple and just said, she loves the big mm. blank. Yeah. She just loves it. All right, uh, yeah. Mr. Kumia. Yes. Uh, you, I'm just going to say a word, and you just blurt out anything you feel. Uh, uh, yes. Refrigerator. Er. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the, and okay, then, Mr. How Kumia. How disappointing uh, would that be? Though? What uh, if yes. she did all this <clears throat> and went on Navy C and defiled, filed her family name, <laughs> and then they go to bed and he's got a tiny little one? Oh, how depressing! How disappointing! Probably, probably doesn't. To date <laughs> honeymoon she, night. You think she already didn't test it out? Like you think she's? Yeah, she took no it for a test that. drive already. Of course, yeah. of course. Yeah. You know when she became a cheerleader too. The father is probably like, now, sweetie, stay away from the players because I know. And he meant like the white players. Yeah. Like stay away from the players because they <laughs> he, like he didn't even consider, didn't even the, consider yeah. the black even, players. Because I don't need to tell you. No, that. no. I, I'm, oh, oh, that should be obvious at this point. I raised you, right? Stop no, it. No, well, because he must have watched to see if he oh. might catch a glimpse of her on TV. <laughs> yeah. Like if he oh, might see no. her in one shot, right. taking her leg up. Oh, he's watching. And then watching. all of a sudden he's watching a black guy make her And his, his last life. name is Johnson. Uh, <laughs> really? Let me show you the difference with this peeled potato and one that isn't peeled. <laughs> you want to stay with the peeled potato, <laughs> not the unpeeled. <laughs> Dirty potato. It's a dirty, a filthy the, potato. The potato skin. Uh, you just want the inside. Uh, <laughs> the unmixed. <laughs> you want the nice lily white inside potato, dear. Processed potato. <laughs> and then you guys. <laughs> when then, I say sweet, I don't mean uh, yeah. the yams. I no. mean the white sweetness. Stay away from yams. <laughs> but then that's why. Then we segged into why you know Obama will never be president. Oh we, yeah. If we can't even accept can't this. accept that. They're making out on TV. They, they kissed like five times right there in that one shot. This country is not ready for President Obama nope. yet. Well, no. CNN can't even get it right. Well, How's CNN, the rest of the country going to get it right? CNN had a glaring little error the yeah, other day. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> where, Obama been lying. It said, where's, where's Obama? <laughs> it said, where's Osama? It was supposed to say, where's Osama? Osama. Oh, they didn't give us a little update. Out. It, wasn't like it was some, a graphic. It was, it was a graphic. Somebody typed, and then someone put it up and yeah. and uh, approved it. It was during Wolf Blitzer's it was like show. A, but if CNN can't get that whole right, corporation makes it. Yeah, oops. We made a glaring typographical error in our graphics department that we want to apologize for. We spent about... 40 minutes, like, a, a manicuring the title and, you know, uh, yeah. putting a shadow on it. <laughs> yeah, of course. You went, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Making it look evil, making the yeah. graphic look What's evil. That? <laughs> putting music behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Remember Wolf Brisson made that mistake during uh, Hurricane Katrina? Oh, Imagine they're the so poor and so black. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, and so into this cheerleader. <laughs> so black. <laughs> the president's so black. This <laughs> is so black. So black. <laughs> he stopped before so hilarious. That was the next thing. <laughs> That's so so hilarious. hilarious. All right, hold on. <laughs> How funny, folks? This is the funniest video you've seen. Yeah. On <laughs> let's what's go to happening, Mr. President? All right, let's go to AJ. AJ. Hey, what's going on, O and A? Hey, uh, AJ. How you guys doing, right? Yeah, we're doing yeah. all right. What you good, got? Good. Uh, the video you guys are looking for is the world's most shocking video. It was the guy who jumped out of the plane in Chile. In Chile? And that, yeah. That's what it was in Chile. And he jumped down. When the guy got to the ground, he tried to revive him. And he said, thank you very much for seeing me, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to listen to the dog house. Ah! 
What is that? See, Wait, if, what? If, if, if he would have... I, yeah. I knew, by the way, he was going for a yeah. gag because he was talking too fast and nervous. But when you blurt out the uh, show that you're trying to promote, make it a little more... Um, what show was he promoting? I don't JV know. and Elvis. Oh, JV and Elvis. Yeah. I, I believe would, he I said Doghouse. I wouldn't have known that. So No, like if you... Yeah, uh, at least blurt out... You know, when we they do assaults on the media... And stuff like uh, No Filter Paul did it. He's holding up a sign with Opie and Anthony, and he's saying Opie and Anthony. Yeah. So if you're gonna try to promote another show, don't at least inside. Don't go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? You what? The guy panicked. I work with the guys, and I barely knew what that was. They're on the same station. I know. Whatever, they're on the man. same station. It's probably a promo for what? them running. Right. Like, there's, there's promos <laughs> running when we go to break for the show that he's trying to promote and, and trying to get past us. <laughs> you dope. Oh, my God. Good point, Lou. Yeah. And we'll, he's we'll got a break, and there'll be a JV and Elvis still the promo. promo. And I swear to you, I swear to you, I saw it coming because he started getting faster and faster. Like, yeah, all right, definitely. they still haven't hung up on me. It's like he's calling into some show and saying, McDonald's, ah, McFlurries, ah, I got them. Ah. All right, let's go to advertise McDonald's. Let's go to Max in Dallas. Max, what's up? Hello, boys. Hello, Max. Uh, Louie, you are a funny dude. Oh, thanks. I watched that Good uh, thing. HBO thing. Oh, I love <laughs> I haven't seen the special yet, but I got on demand. I'll I'll check it out tonight. It airs January thirteenth. Actually, then That's what is he area. talking about? He, he said he saw it already. Did you oh. saw the what? What did you see? Well, I saw a part of it, the part where you were talking about how you race Hitler. Oh yes, yeah. hilarious, dude. <laughs> <laughs> rape, rape Hitler? I have a bit about raping Hitler. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. On the special? Yeah. That's yeah. coming up January the 13th on HBO? January 13th. So how oh, does this guy see it already? He saw the same promo you did. It's on the, It's on there for it's one a of the split lines second. Oh, okay. Oh. Right. I thought he saw the actual bit. No, no. I was telling Louis C.K. the the uh, oh. commercial for his HBO special is hilarious. Thank I can't you. wait to the commercial. see the whole thing. Yeah. Well, Why didn't he go, see Louis C.K.? Raping Hitler, huh? Yeah. They. Well, no, it's just a bit about how that's what I would have done with a time machine. Machine. Oh, because a friend of mine said he would have killed Hitler. He would have done that to save everybody, but right. he would have raped them because I feel like that would have <laughs> been plenty to, you know, take him down a peg. Like he wouldn't have done all that stuff if I yeah. raped him. If he would have had that shame in yeah, his mind. Like, all we that. We invade Poland. No, nah, I'm gonna take a shower. I don't feel good. Like he would have been depressed and had low self-esteem. Yeah. And also, definitely. I would have been cool. I mean, if you had the opportunity to rape Hitler, you would have raped him, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not gay. What? Yeah, that's not gay. Oh no, it's gay. But <laughs> it's one it's gay Hitler. thing I would do. I mean, that's if for somebody, humanity. Yeah, well, if somebody said to me, "You could go back and rape Hitler," what what an amazing uh, experience that would be. I didn't do mm -hmm. this part on the show, but just, <laughs> it does fascinate me the idea. Of it raping. would uh, make history or change yeah. history. Yeah. Yeah. And I wasn't making. I don't. For anybody listening, I'm not making fun of rape or you know saying it's <laughs> or Hitler. No, or Hitler. Don't <laughs> you shouldn't rape anybody unless you have a good uh, reason, like you want to have sex with somebody that won't let you. In which case, <laughs> actually, you don't really have another option. <laughs> which hey, by the way, let's get into the no filter, Paul, before we uh, uh, take a rest from the Harlem Hero. So, all the news crews were doing their story on the Harlem Hero, and no filter, Paul decided to assault on the media. We're not sanctioning these uh, these days. But, uh, no, I believe. Um, but if the listeners are going to do them, they're going to do them. There was never a formal thing that went down. That made us stop doing this, uh, but it was it was kind of presented like, "Hey, look, this is getting out of control because you guys made it a contest, right? Right. And right. the listeners have to always top each other, uh, and uh, there were prizes being given away for the best one. How do you judge the best one? Well, is it the one where you crack the reporter in the mouth with a monkey wrench? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know." But it started getting a little weird. That's so, what happened. They told us to stop so the contest. We stopped the contest. But there were air horns involved. Yeah. <laughs> alleged loss of hearing. I, <laughs> but, so are, aren't actually getting their news anymore. Right? Yeah, it was just not. It, it was Dude, getting ugly. The assault in the media campaign that we started about a year and a half ago got so bad that reporters were giving up on their live shots and just letting... Our fans just have the five to ten seconds. <laughs> oh, there was a woman that was standing on standing on her little uh, uh, box that makes her a couple of feet taller, mm -hmm. and she's standing there uh, doing a live shot, and our 
stupid fans come running in behind her, yelling and screaming. She got scared, turned around and looked at him, and just walked off her box <laughs> and left the shot. And there's our fans <laughs> jumping yeah! up and down. in front of the camera. <laughs> she abandoned her post. She just left. And they cut back to the studio, to, uh, to the anchor guy shuffling papers, going, ah, uh, having some technical issues. Jesus. And they hate us more than they oh, hate Osama. Sure. But they uh, now, uh, look, it's, it's, it's fair game. There are reporters out there, and there's real estate behind them when they do a live shot. Right. What happens back there, I see people throwing up gang signs. You see uh, people waving, saying hi, whatever they want to do. Yeah, if someone's going to throw a gang sign in the background, uh, I, I'm, I, I guess we're allowed to have an Opie and Anthony sign back there's there no, as well. There's sure. no problem with right. the sign, and, that, and uh, obviously you're not touching anybody. You're not harassing anybody. You're just uh, holding up a sign. My, my, favorite, one of, great, my favorite one of all time time by the way was um letterman comes back from his his heart oh yeah this was a great one so they they decide to do a little live shot outside the letterman uh you know theater there it was a very letterman, icy winter day yeah too. letterman's back after he took a month off or whatever it was and uh so maury alter he's an old time uh, reporter here in new york i think he finally retired Mm. I, or they gave him like weekends at the middle of the night oh, or something, yeah, something dumb. Bad slots. So he's on the sidewalk doing the big Letterman is coming back uh, piece live, and here come our guys, uh, 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 Mark, Psycho, Mark, Psycho Mark, comes running down the sidewalk with his Opie and Anthony sign. Because you got to do these fast, because <laughs> right. if the uh, guy sees you coming with the sign, they're going to cut away, or a producer is going to run after you. Yep. So you got to run up behind the reporter real fast. Yeah. Now, remember I said that the sidewalks were very icy. <laughs> so live on TV, he slides into Maury Alter and pretty much knocks him down. Pulls him over. <laughs> Not on purpose. It oh just was an God. accident. It was icy. Right. And, and, Next uh, thing you know, oh. you see on live TV, two big burly guys come running out of the, the live truck. And their feet are slipping on the ice as right. they're chasing Psycho Mark and down they, this, on icy sidewalk. And they had a huge sign, so now there's a tug of war going on on live TV. He's trying to get the sign out of Psycho Mark's hands. And then there's a there's pretty much a fight going on. The so, cameraman. So the camera's like, screw Maury Alter in the Letterman story. This is much better. And he goes to try to cover the fight that's yeah, about sure. to happen. And Maury Alter has to go, no, no, over here, over Maury goes, here. Maury goes, back over to me, to me, to me. To me, to me, to me. <laughs> it was just a, a complete cluster F. <laughs> Loved it. I think it. it's great that every time a reporter's out there, he has to worry he's going to yeah. get tackled. It's that whole thing that they, they yeah, they had this worry now. They can't yeah. just do the story with that pompous kind of reporter yeah. thing where they look right at the camera. I like the slow walk start Yeah, where they're standing there. Right. And they take start their steps. story, and then they take a few steps toward the camera, and, and then stop. Very dramatic, a hand gesture. It's right here at this spot. <laughs> that is it. I like when they have to like shifty eyed look behind yeah. behind him on the side. <laughs> One of these lunatics going to attack me. When we first started this back in uh, when we were at WNEW, it got so bad that all the local reporters here in New York started doing their live shots from on top of the van. Right. Yeah. They they, they didn't even trust the sidewalk anymore. No. So they would do it from on top That's of the van, right, man. and that didn't work either. It should be yeah. that way. Well, and then Psycho Mark, uh, with one of the most famous ones mm -hmm. ever, this girl is on top of the van, mm -hmm. and she thought she was safe. Psycho Mark said, screw that. He got on another fan's shoulders and then held up the C word on live TV. A oh, sign yeah. with the C word. So he and had just like held a Sharpie right and, and plaque. Oh, right. yeah. Psycho oh, yeah. Mark always prepared. He was, oh, he was the great. king. We oh, lost Psycho Mark on uh, Sex for Sam 2 uh, well, or 1? Uh, it was Son of Sam 2, yeah. Son of Sam, <laughs> Son yeah. Of Sam Dopes. <laughs> Player Magazine. Anyway. Yeah. That's great. But here's the latest assault on the media from No Filter Paul from yesterday. <laughs> He's a Vietnam vet. He was in the U.S. Navy. And tonight he is crediting his military training for giving him the knowledge to know what to do in a situation like this. And by the way, the guy who had the seizure, he is in stable condition and he's supposed to be okay. All right, Linda, thank you. We need to hear stuff like that. Wow, she's a trooper. Stuff like that. She plowed right through it. Yeah. 
right through it. At the end, you hear Nofield to Paul say something like, "Don't touch me! I didn't touch." I you. didn't touch them. Right. Well, the he video resorts are... to third grade, uh, third grade defense. Yeah, the video's up on OpieAnthony.com. Lots of good video on the website. Uh, Your Honor, I uh, d- didn't touch her. Um, <laughs> I said no backs, no backs, no penny tax. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe I am entitled to the restitution. <laughs> hey, let's say hi to Mark in Jersey. Mark, what's up? Don't forget uh, the NBC Today show when the girl flashed Matt Lauer. Yeah, that was yeah. a great one, too. Yeah. Was that one of yours? Or they're live, on, live boobage. Well, they're on uh, delay because of us on the Today show, oh, you yeah. know, when they panned the line. Right. One of our uh, fine women back in the day, she uh, she lifted up her oh, uh, shirt, yeah. big boobies, and wow stick right right under her, uh, her mm. breast. Yeah. And Katie Couric actually had to cover her mouth and go, oh, my God. She had they, to cover her mouth. Yeah, they came back, and <laughs> she was in shock. It was wonderful. <laughs> Just love it. And, and the, the greatest part about these things is um, almost this mission control atmosphere mm-hmm. that goes on here, because we hear that it's going to happen sometimes. Right. And we're, there's people on cell phones watching TV, coordinating, <laughs> going, all right, all right, ready? All right, they're live. Go, go, go. And you're watching. It's interactive television. That's great. It's like a Wii. You yeah. got your hand controller, and you're moving the people on the television. That's great. How do the new listeners find all the assault on the media uh, videos? Is it easy to find on, on opianethony.com? Probably not. Is, are they on YouTube? I don't know. They're Where are the they? Place. I don't know. We'll try to make it very easy for you to see all the uh, the past ones. Steve, are they easy to find? Yeah, we just put them back up. Huh? Yeah, we just uh, yes. we just put them back up about a week ago. So yeah, yeah we yeah. had to hide them for about a year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they had to go always, away. We're always the only interesting things that really happen. It's like I was at I got to see the Yankees win the World Series in '95, uh, whatever the first year of that dynasty. Yeah, I was at the game. But the thing I remember is the guys that ran out on the field. Like three different guys ran out yep. on the field. I just love people that run on the field. I just think that's the greatest <laughs> kind of person in the world because the dude had a good enough seat to be right on the wall. Yeah. And you know he was without a shirt saying, like, I'm going out there. And his friends are like, you're stupid. Dude, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. And the I'm look doing on their it, face, dude. once they make the commitment and they're on the infield... <laughs> Like looking at Derek Jeter, and he's looking at him like you idiot. But you are still so going face, to jail. Like, yeah, and the media tries to be. We don't show it. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, wow. The camera this goes away. We're oh, not going yeah. to show this as a man uh, on the field. We don't want. <laughs> we don't want to condone this type of behavior. So we're not everyone showing wants the video. To see it. And then the cops have to make an example of him, so they hit him really hard. Oh, oh. <laughs> drag him off. I just love that guy. I love that moment in anyone's life. The I, takedown is I, I'm fantastic. I'm missing the rest of the game. I'm spending the night in jail. I'm going to get <laughs> yeah. hurt. I don't care. I hate that they've taken that. I'm on the, the one guy slid into home plate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would, With no shirt yeah. on in October. I hate they've taken that out of the sporting events, man. When, yeah. when your team wins the, you know, it all, whatever championship it is, mm-hmm. and, and you get to run on the field. Yep. That, that doesn't happen anymore. No, that, was that the used best to be part. the like, greatest thing ever. Like Chris Samblins when he hit the yep. game-winning home run. And he couldn't and, even get to home, uh, home plate. No, and they have this one picture of where <laughs> one fan is trying to take his helmet off of his head. <laughs> while he's running. <laughs> like he's, he's just going, forget the game. I want that help. Give me your. He's what about steal his the one Wade Boggs? Uh, he's on the horse backwards, the, and everyone is out of the stands, and he's got champagne. And yeah. on a cop's horse, a cop's horse yeah. backwards, and and the yeah. fans are all over the field. I mean, yep. you miss those moments. Yep. It used to be part when of you it. just would see the sea of people just yeah, coming the over part. the wall. Yeah, and they would still destroy do it when they the make place. Movies about it. They'll yeah, still shoot it that way. Yeah. Yeah, like now, they're allowed to. But now your team wins and everyone has their bank sticks mm-hmm. or whatever in the stands. <laughs> yeah, bears. Well, like a half hour before the game is over, they put a line of police on horseback. They make sure they the whole happen. field. Right. You're not jumping out in front of no. that. And you have your noise You'd have to be with, how uh, drunk do you have to be to jump into a horse? You used to come to the game with a jar because you know you're taking some of the field home with you. <laughs> yep. All right, let's say hi to No Filter Paul. Uh, Paul. Yeah, hey, good morning, guys. Good morning. What's going on? I just want to let you know, the funniest part about this one was right before the reporter went live, there was a bunch of guys doing gang signs, which, of course, you never see in Harlem. You know, that's behind There he goes, no filter, told, Paul. The biggest yeah. racist I've ever met, by yeah, the way. I was, I ever. was nice. <laughs> anyway, so she told everybody off, because they, you know, they were all doing it behind the camera. So when we did that, there was a huge cheer from the crowd. It was the funniest thing. And the guy from the truck grabbed the sign. Did you guys notice that? Uh, we heard you yelling like "Don't touch me" or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, actually, uh, yeah, actually, it was, it was a guy with me, Chester's ashes. He's like, "Don't touch my sign. Why, why you're not taking my sign?" Right. Yeah, it was it was pretty funny, and it was you know it was a 
board for choice as to who to go after up there. But, you know, we didn't want to do CBS because I'm sure you guys like your job. But, uh, free yeah, that would be very smart to just stay away from CBS. Yes, please. Yeah, no, no intention. And, of course, then ABC7 was my other choice. And I've had a little bit of history with those guys. So. Right. But, uh, yeah, that was it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. All right. Thank you, No Filter Paul. The right. video's up on Opie and Anthony.com. And I think you could do a little search to find all the past assault on the media. Oh, clips. yeah. All right, more Enjoy. with Louis C.K. and Patrice O'Neill in just a bit. It's the Opie and Anthony Show. That one. Oh, fourth? Tomorrow the fourth? Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. Yeah, that sounds right. Thursday <laughs> through yeah. Sunday? Yeah, Thursday through Sunday. I saw Louis Caroline. C.K. I think last year. That's Hilarious. Right? Yeah, thanks. First time I met you, yeah, and uh, th he just kills, I, I, obviously. You went to a Louis C.K. show? Absolutely, yeah. I was I was really, really into it. Thanks, I see. Man. I see. I've seen you. Uh, I see. I've seen you, Patrice, many times. You seen me when you when you was wasn't working. Oh. When y'all wasn't working, y'all oh. came to come around. Not when you're working. Oh. We don't even go out anymore. Yeah. yeah. You came oh. to see you. Was you working when you came to see Louie? Yeah. But it was like a Friday or Saturday. Oh, I see. I see. Oh. <laughs> I see. I see. Wow. Made that about you, did you? That's uh, Boy, big surprise there. I was, getting, I was getting a little promotion. All of a sudden, yeah, we're really. all trying to make Patrice feel better. <laughs> just trying to sell a few tickets yeah. here, Patrice. Oh, Louis well, sold out there. already, man. <laughs> Louis C.K. at Caroline's all weekend long. How greedy can you be, C.K.? Tickets available, believe me. 212-757-4100? Oh, that's good. Wow. Is that good? Yeah, a lot of comedians I on think. this show. <laughs> been over it. It. how many years have we been saying that number yeah. i think that's what the number is you probably still remember the number at stitches in boston <laughs> <laughs> no uh, it, was, it, it was comedy connection yeah, yeah. the connection oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah we we took care of uh woman right oh god hey uh <laughs> oh god <laughs> god is uh talking to pat robertson oh really he gets a one-on-one -on -one every year did you know this every year Every year he gets only one once. on one with uh, the Almighty. That guy's a piece of garbage. Only once. <laughs> this guy is nuts. God <laughs> once has a year. Once a year. Uh, once that's... a year he gets a one on one with the Almighty. And his annual guy's like, yeah, Pat. Oh God, do I have to do this now? He says to his system. Yeah. Do do uh, can we put off? It's Pat? once a year, Lord. Okay. You, you know he books this early Hi, Pat. every year. You know. Robertson said God spoke to him during his annual one on one prayer retreat with the Almighty. Mm. How does he get? <laughs> well, that's the he thing. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. He gets it's a great junket, like in Cancun. Yeah. And the, the Almighty's like, well, dude, I'll take a free trip. All right. If you're going to go somewhere, <laughs> that's like a convention. <laughs> how does he? You know how many people there are in the world? And, and this guy is like, yeah, do the he math. gets a one-on-one. -on -one. He's the one that gets the one-on-one. And one -on -one. that's if we're the only world God's taken care of. That's right. right. There may be some other There could be other planets there. that right. he's dealing with, but he makes takes a time out of his schedule. Yep. Pump his ass. To make sure he sits down with him. Uh, and uh, God has dropped a bombshell. Uh, oh. Ooh. That's got to make a big explosion when God drops one. On evangelist Pat Robertson, the TV preacher claims the Lord told him to expect a terrorist attack on the United States by the end of 2007 that will result in mass killing. Well, that's and God a... is going to let this happen, too, I guess. Mm. Great. Well, couldn't he tell God, if he's having a face-to-face -face with him, <laughs> to maybe not make that happen? <laughs> right. Your God? Maybe. I love that's what he gets out of talking to God is just inside info. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. Like <laughs> fortune telling. Yeah, it's like insider trading <laughs> by God. Sources close to God say. <laughs> God is denying reports that he said. <laughs> I guess uh, God knows us. Yeah, I know Osama. I'm God. I know him. Yeah. Couldn't he tell him like where it is, where he is? Or so what is this? This sounds like very one-sided face-to-face. Uh, uh, well, it's very uncorroboratable. You can't, yeah, you can't. You really check that can't source. fact check <laughs> no. the source here. And what does God have to lose at that point? Wouldn't he tell you when and where? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you when and where. I can't say very much, Pat. It's still, uh, <laughs> you know, I, it's all under uh, that whole mysterious ways way yeah. I work. If yeah. you give me another hundred dollars, I'll tell you a little more. That's well, all. I, that's all I can say, uh, Pat. Yeah. What was God like? Shining shoes somewhere, uh. Psst, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> For another twenty, he's got to hand him another twenty, and the right. shoe shine God tells him a little more info. <laughs> Maybe like this, Huggy Bear. Where is that from? <laughs> Huggy <laughs> Bear. Yeah, maybe this will uh, oh, spark the memory, guy. God. Yeah, uh, how about <laughs> another saw buck there, God? All right, maybe, since you asked. Yeah, maybe I do remember a little bit more. <laughs> okay, inside of 2007. Uh, this stupid Pat Robertson. God, that guy should die of AIDS immediately. <laughs>
Pat Robertson, uh, Pat Robertson said yesterday on the 700 Club, uh, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to be nuclear. Mm. Uh, not necessarily? Not necessarily saying. The Lord didn't say nuclear, but I do mm. believe it will be something like that, said the 76-year-old preacher and one-time presidential candidate. One uh, time. Stop it. So was Pat Paulson. Yeah. And like I said, Ooh, Robertson said God spoke to him during his <laughs> annual one-on-one -on -one prayer retreat with the Almighty. Oh, Got to be something. Worst guy alive, that's Pat Robertson. He said God told him that major U.S. cities and millions of people will be affected by the terrorist attack forecast to happen after September. So we have some time. Oh, we got mm. some time. Okay. The he evil, told him after September? The evil people will come <laughs> after the cruel God. <laughs> this God is not a nice When person. is it? Well, it's well, after I'll, September. I'll, 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 I'll tell you this much. It's after September. I'm just saying, you know, go out to your country house. <laughs> After Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. You might want to leave. Call me now. The, yeah, that's what it is. I'm God. I'm God, <laughs> call me now. God is is, is Kreskin. Uh, that's what it's 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 a now uh, a hack. But what's he gonna say in two thousand eight when it didn't I mean he's given a pretty big window. That is. He's, he's almost yeah. saying something bad's going to happen to some people sometime in the next 365 days. Yeah, and terrorism might be involved. Yeah, like that. But All in right. 2008, he's well. God said that he wasn't necessarily. <laughs> yeah, that he was. Does he give these every year? He gets the one-on-one -on -one every year. What was last year's? Yeah, what was Do we last? have any previous predictions from him that, uh, or okay. predictions, God's tellings <laughs> that perhaps <laughs> God. He, uh, God, Gene Dixon. <laughs> he didn't. Uh... Well, it goes on. The evil people will come after this country, and there's a possibility, not a po not a possibility, oh. a definite certainty that chaos is going to rule, said Robertson, urging listeners. Chaos. To... And uh, he urged listeners to pray. God said he's going to restrain the evil, but he isn't necessarily going Wait, to restrain so it in the should, beginning. People should pray to the dude who told him this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> Uh, does, pray, some, pray, because that might do some good. Even though I talk to the guy, go, I go hang out with him every year. Yeah, we Pat get, Robertson get, is more. You think you'd have build up a relationship where yeah. you could then say, "God, come on." Yeah, he was just in the steam room with him with a couple of hookers <laughs> in Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have. You folks should pray. Come Why on, didn't you talk to him while you had him in front of you. He's right there. Talk him out of it. it uh, Pat Robertson's more crazy than the Harlem hero. He listen to this quote again. God said he's going to restrain the evil. But he isn't necessarily going to restrain it in the beginning. So he's going to kind of let it happen for a while, and then he's going to control it. Mm. A lot of these things can be reversed. We just need to do a lot of praying. So if we pray, I guess we're going to be yeah, okay. Man. So it's like And that's, a, that's his out, by the way, if this thing doesn't happen. That's like a threat, then. It's a threat. It can be reversed if we, you know, if we pray. And this is an annual event, uh, Robertson coming up with these uh, one-on-ones. And last year he claimed that God told him the Pacific Northwest would get slammed by a tsunami. Do we have proof of that? He said, in May, Robertson t said God told him that storms and a possible tsunami were to crash into America's coastline in 2006. Even though the U.S. was not hit with a tsunami, Robertson on Tuesday cited last spring's heavy rains and flooding in New England <laughs> as partly fulfilling the prediction. <laughs> they had a lot of rain. Uh, was, yeah, so compare the quarter of a million or half million, whoever knows how many people were dead in a tsunami, to, ah, I needed my rubbers and an umbrella that day. Northampton, it would rain for days. Days I on God end. God told me this would happen. And uh, what is this? Uh, the broadcaster predicted in January 2004 that President Bush would easily win re-election. Bush won 51% of the vote uh, that fall. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Robertson said God also told him that the U.S. only feigns friendship with Israel <laughs> and that U.S. policies are pushing Israel t towards national suicide. So God is like a wonk. God's like, yeah. God's got like the inside dope on the nuances yeah. of American foreign policy. God's like, we just, we're faking that. Uh, uh, Pat Robertson would be like, God, why, why are we allied with Israel? <laughs> Pat, we fake that. Just a weird thing for God to say in his big, boomy voice. Yeah. <laughs> the U.S. is only kind of protecting interests, you see, and it's kind of yes. a subtle thing, Pat. Pat, you're so silly, Pat. Why do I see you every year? You don't understand me. <laughs>
<laughs> what an ass. Let's say hi to Kirk in Jersey. Kirk, what's up? Yeah, if uh, Robinson, what he says is true. Does he get on the air the next day like Club Soda Kenny? I told you guys. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news. But I had my one-on-one -on -one with the Almighty this weekend. I went uh, up the mountain. I saw the burning bush, and it turned my hair dry. Where is he? <laughs> <laughs> Not here. No. He's also predicting that the Eagles will win the Super Bowl. So oh, he got he's that giving from God. sports picks. Yeah, he got that from God. Those got to no. be right on. Of course, those got to be right on. <laughs> God's sports picks. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, what an ass! If God hangs out with Pat Robertson, he's a douche too. <laughs> yeah, that's what I. Why think. would he be friends with him? Yeah, no, that oh. discredits God completely. I don't care if he did create the universe. He's a douche. Is Dang Pat that moron? <laughs> Is Pat crazy where he thinks he's actually w with God? Or does he go into a room, sit there, and go, I just got to sit here by myself so everyone thinks <laughs> I'm with here God? For a few hours. Yeah, like, how long should I sit here if I'm with God? Starts yeah. humming and looking around. Does God kick me out or do I leave before? <laughs> right. You know, what's the protocol with God? What a pompous. You don't want ass. God to be turning to go, geez, this guy going to hang out all night? Yeah. He came with a six pack of Meister Brow. He's drinking the bud. You got to know when to leave. <laughs> Every time I talk to that Robertson guy, I'm in the paper the next day. He must call him and say, stop. I don't want to read about our retreat. Yeah, just next between day. you and I. Yeah. Jesus. I'm talking Moron. with you. I thought I was on a mancation. <laughs> <laughs> a mancation with God. Let's say hi to Eric in Michigan. Eric. Hey, what's up, boys? Yeah. Hey, uh, Pat Robertson is just arrogant. He's like, you know, God only speaks to me, and he's only concerned about American affairs. And, you know, we're we're not for uh, fucking punching out. Oh. <laughs> oh, dude, he, 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 he was trying so hard. He panicked a little bit. but He yeah. punched out, though. He pulled it. Uh, Goose yeah. uh, hit his head on the canopy, though. What's so. weird is that he was dead. He doing some big uh, <laughs> the high wire bit. He was just expressing himself. Yeah. He panicked. He definitely panicked. Wow. Well, that's what people do on this show when they yeah. when they lose it. Some so people excited. just go down. Mm. They go down in flames, and it's a big crater of jet fuel and <laughs> aluminum. But he, if you heard him, he said, "I'm punching out." Yeah. That's when you reach down the handle. Right. Boom! You pull, eject canopy. You're out of it. <laughs> so he has saved himself. He was All close right. to the ground, though. He was close. He was real. He close. pulled at the last minute. Let's say hi to John in Jersey. <laughs> it's time, I guess, for what did we learn on the Opie and Anthony show today? Wow. Uh, John, what's up? And fast. I learned that God is the best bookie in the world. Yeah, and he's only concerned with America. That's what mm -hmm. Eric was getting at, that he only cares mm -hmm. about America. Okay, punch it out. All right, let's say hi to Craig on Long Island. Craig, what's up? Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Hey, I was just wondering if anybody tested uh, Robinson's blood for peyote. Yeah, sometimes you do see God. <laughs> when you do mushrooms. Sure. And, like, is everybody? Is anyone else meeting with God, but they could just keep their mouth shut? Pat's the only one, like, blabbing. Pat's the only one. Everybody, he's name-dropping, yeah, and it's God. God's like, he's dude, <laughs> I'm not going on those things anymore. <laughs> you tell everybody yeah. what we talked about. And I didn't say that. I know God, but I got uh, I, bills I, to pay. Nobody pays attention to me no more. I took it the wrong way. Unbelievable. Yeah, he's probably meeting with people all over the place all the time, but he tells them, look, look this is between me and you. It's a face-to-face. You, -face. you and I. If here. I wanted other people involved, I'd invite them. Right. You don't go to the news with what I have to say. I'm God. All right. We can't really start anything new here, so it was a good place to end it. Ah, uh, <laughs> Patrice O'Neill, thank you so much. Jim Norton, Patrice, returns always tomorrow. a pleasure. Patrice O'Neill, who I've seen at least a dozen times in comedy clubs all over the tri-state area, yeah. at Twelve least, times. Times at think? least. Hey, Why are you so bitter? I've that, seen you many times. That was really a heavy white word you just used on me. Bitter. Like, this thing is. Bitter. Don't call me bitter. Are you bitter that I haven't seen you? He's sweet. I did promise I was going to see you last time. I never showed. Well, that's you do a lot of promising. That's all I'm saying. That's the whole point is not that you come to see. I don't need you to come see me. But don't but say. But the first but, thing is, you know, you dry hump Louie, and he's like, hey, I was you know, at the man. last show. Dude, I've seen Louie. Oh, I've, I've seen Louie one time so like, far. One time. You know, it agrees. wasn't like, hey, Louis, it wasn't any pillow talk with Louie. <sighs> it was just right to it. You know what they say? You take your own, count your own chickens and you shove them up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good old saying. Look after your own I have to remember that. I've seen them. Louis C.K. one lousy time. Well, that hurt. You said you had a lousy time seeing Louis C.K.? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> terrible. Oh, I gotta just shut up. I never promised to go out anywhere to see anybody. Isn't that nice? 
It's perfect. It's, it's probably kind of smarter. Stress free. And then they're surprised when I show up. Hey, yeah. you Anthony. Did to, you, did, you did used to show up a lot, though. When it, yeah. you, your girl and um, Heavy Kev. Yeah, when Big Kev was big, Big Kev. When Kev was hard to be your friend. Yeah, he's a big guy. You had to always uh, have an excuse. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got to get out of here. Louis C.K.'s playing Caroline's all weekend long. Yep. Go see him. I'll be there this weekend. Oh, is that a promise? <clears throat> that is a promise. Mm, good. I and think I think uh, Friday Patrice. night. And That's gonna be my my. It's gonna be Louis oh. C.K. instead of Patrice. Oh. <laughs> That's my next album. You know album. what? Please do that. Just yeah. so people just know there's an instead of. <laughs> I'll take instead of. Hey Patrice, uh, what are we promoting? Anything? Nothing. And you know that already. See? And no, I don't know, know that for sure. Yeah, I'm giving you, you an opening coming next up. Next Thursday, I got things. Next Thursday, he's got next things. Thursday, I'm gonna come. All right, yeah, Patrice will be back next week. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll if you're not over. joining us uh, over next time, have a great day. Uh, you. So, shit yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, it begins now, bitches. Yeah, now we can curse. But there's children on the sidewalk. Uh, they shouldn't cuts. be. They should be in school, those little motherfuckers. Hey, little fella. What's this little nigga oh, doing with this little white him. baby? He's adorable. Police. <laughs> Ask her what's going on with that. I ain't That's asking her nothing. It's a nanny. <laughs> it's just a black nanny I'm with a white baby. I'm not trying to protect place. white children. She could be kidnapping them. <laughs> in LA, in LA, it's Mexicans with white babies. That's right. All the nannies are Mexican. Here it's Jamaican. Well, they're in New York, actually it's Jamaican. El Salvadorian. Yeah. Yeah. Mexicans are like white people now in uh, California. Really? Yeah. It's El Salvadorians. El Salvadorians and South Americans. Nicaragua. 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 I heard somebody say Nicaragua. I said Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> you snuck one in there. I did. I didn't would sneak that, it. I said be, it. Would that be a double uh, entendre? No, that's a single entendre. Yeah, that Nicaragua. Wasn't, that wasn't even Nicaragua. an attempt to at no. sneak. He, no. He tried to throw that knuckleball right by you. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but you caught it, man. <laughs> a little chin music for you there. <laughs> a little chin music. A little racist I, chin music. I they went to, sailing. to keep you honest. I went sailing down the Congo River. Right. There you go. <laughs> Racial wordplay. <laughs> All right. Are we doing box o cox today or not? Uh, I think we're testing uh, the camera. We're right? gonna try to test the camera today. Yeah, that way, <laughs> that way we, we, we can uh, see the uh, the expression on the people's faces. Yeah, I never noticed Bubble. there's a hotel here. Where? Right here. The Buckingham. I oh. always stay at the Buckingham. Wow, I I didn't either. That's a Might hotel. be new. Is it upper end? Might be new. There are some real shitholes on this block. I hope you stayed at one. What? You stayed at like one of the real shitholes on this block once? No, I stayed in the same hotel that was used in the Borat movie. Is that the one you're talking about? Maybe. I, I, I just like, remember you had cockroaches and the sheets didn't seem clean. Oh, no, I had to rinse out my own underwear. Yeah, well, <laughs> what? That doesn't sound like the hotel's fault. No, it's <laughs> it made me shit my pants. I walked in. It, was, it sucked so bad. Was I was shit. awful. No, I shit my uh, pants. The deal is really fast. Uh, Ant and I signed this big deal in radio back in the day to syndicate <laughs> our show, and we are finally entering the big time, and they had all sorts of articles the next day in the papers. So we went out that night to celebrate. I wasn't planning on staying in the city. I ended up getting a room at the Wellington because all the, the other hotels were sold it. out. And I had the clothes on my body, and they were smelling pretty bad. So I had to, like, wash out my underwear and, and throw it on a radiator to dry it out. <laughs> oh. So I had something to wear the next day. And I'm, I'm in bed, and the sheets are smelly, and it looked like cockroaches and stuff. Yeah. And yeah, I'm reading Mouth about shit. how, how uh, we just how signed this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how great we're doing. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Just and I was in a, a huge horrible deal. situation, <laughs> cleaning out my own underwear in this horrible the hotel. hotel sink. Anyway, whatever. Ah, uh, you'll hear it on a replay someday. The brr, the long version of that story. Ah, uh, <laughs> that wasn't it. Ah, it was that, that's the headlines basically. <laughs> Where's where are you, Patrice? I don't Freeman. know. I'm just out here. I'm just staying out here looking at people. People well, walking. Just people. We'll bring them upstairs. Good morning, sir. How are you today? Uh, da, da, da. My pal. 
Well, he's, he's an asshole. I forgot my wallet today. That Remember guy, after all that, that hubbub guy, yesterday? The biggest, huh? After all that hubbub yesterday about you got to bring your wallet and right. your IDs so you could give the proper credentials. And I left this morning without my wallet. I, I, and I was driving like 95 down the expressway. I would have been, or I had not, not a PBA card on me. <laughs> Ooh, very dangerous. Oh, could you? Uh, oh, no, I'm not going to oh. the now. We'll see you upstairs. Obi and Anthony, XM202. They all. Alright, turn the music off immediately. Good. That's how I want the show to start. <laughs> Fuck that music already. I've had it. With the rage music. It's called identifiability, motherfucker. Yeah, but you know something? Let the people have what they want, nigga. Stop trying to be a vanguard or a crusader. Just let that Hard. fucking palaver shit start so these motherfuckers can get... It's like foreplay. It's yeah. like, you know what? Motherfuckers like to come the way they like to come. All right, give me a little bit then. A mm. little bit. Oh, look, he's in a panic. Yeah, I can't do it. He is in a panic. He doesn't know how to get it back now. Yet nothing. Well, now the time has passed. Now if you play it, it's silly. Identifiability, though, because it sounds like every... I mean, all radio stations have that crap now. Yeah. Enough of this palaver. We're crazy. But you know something? We'll say anything. We had enough palaver. Exactly. And then we got to talk over the music. Well, that's what people fucking want. Do they? I don't know what people want. I know what people want. You don't know either. It wouldn't have been superimposing your ass in on Left Young 20. If I know what people want, it wouldn't have been six people at the place I was doing my New Year's show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, nobody had to know that. Uh, uh, yeah, right? Except for the six people. You could have kept that to yourself. At least it was a small you know, secret I, I like until the now. Share. <laughs> we just realized that we have a dramatic opening for this crap. <laughs> and it's, it's so stupid. Yeah, you came in a little oh, late. Yeah. He wants to start. I think it should stay. Don't fucking ever get No, I was just like, enough of the music. I, want, I, I don't like when the music plays too long. But then, yeah, we, we always talk about this big dramatic ecstasy of gold that plays. That's this huge buildup, and then you get this <laughs> shit. And it's like, what was so important? <laughs> Such an important show. You get ecstasy of gold, and you get sirens, and then it's just us <laughs> with this important. shit. Important. Very important. Today. Yeah. yeah, and then you get like, hey, I stayed at a shitty hotel, <laughs> and I had to fucking wash the skid marks out of my underwear and put on a radiator. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was worth the dramatic Clint Eastwood the laser music. light Clint, show. Yeah, the Clint Eastwood music beginning. <laughs> it's a laser light show oh, outside. Oh, oh, ban -ah, ban -ah, ban -ah. Wait till you hear this shit. Wow. You're expecting a cure for AIDS or something. Yeah. No, it's just something. another shit joke. Yep. Give me something. Another dick joke. And All right. So where are we at today? God, I'm didn't just, we just uh, like leave the other place? That was the shortest talk. walk ever. I yeah. like it. It's not bad when the weather's cold, I right? told Louie right when we walked out, I go, this fucking walk is getting so old. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That we're starting to walk now before we're on the air. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll hear like the, the Opie and Anthony uh, XM walkover begins now, and we're already like in front of the building. <laughs> we walked. We didn't get. We, uh, well, how many things fucking that somebody pitches? Who came up with the walkover? It was forced. It was pretty much we're gonna we, tape we every to time it. we go over. Every time because something exciting has to happen <laughs> during time. one block. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't if something exciting was going to happen on the same block every fucking day? Wouldn't yeah. news crews be yeah. camped out there? Let's be honest here, please. Out of all places to walk to, 57th Avenue. 57th. Let me tell you, between like Boy, fifth and a... seventh, there is fucking uh, pandemonium on a daily basis. That Steinway piano store is a holy madhouse. shit. What happens out there that every bitch day? Takes her shirt off every day. Get the news van down there. Raise that boom, and I want cameras. Something's the about to happen. Like cologne. Hey, uh, oh. MSNBC is reporting that uh, we we have put out an official statement, in America, huh? that we had nothing to do with Saddam Hussein's hanging. <laughs> nothing to do. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> didn't we kind of? We, I, I, didn't we kind of have something to do with it? Pushed it along at least. <laughs> I think we at least we gave it a nice push. Put it yeah, this well. way: if it wasn't for us, he'd still be with the little mustache shooting yeah. his gun off the balcony. <laughs> yeah. They they just put out a statement. We had nothing to do with the hanging. Are you kidding me? Maybe not the actual hanging. Yeah. Jesus. Not the actual hanging. We didn't pull the noose tight, but... No. 
we fucked the dude up. The reason the guy was standing yeah. there with a noose around his neck, yeah. we could have had something to do with. Yeah, a little bit. I think we gave a big hint at what we wanted yeah. to uh, accomplish. I'll be willing to go out on a limb and say, I don't believe any Americans were pulling the lever. All right? Yeah. There, I said it. <laughs> but as far as having nothing to do with it? No, we are a little ah. bit involved. A little bit. Remember shock and awe? Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of... Thing remember shock and awe? Remember uh, the first uh, war? And before it shock, started there. Before shock and awe, they played Ecstasy of Gold. Did they? And a little Rage Against the Machine music. Saddam's hanging. <laughs> wow. We didn't have nothing to do with it, though. Was there ever a time where outrage actually meant anything in this guy? Like... Sometimes things like this, like that just now, is almost like, I don't even have the vocabulary to just describe what how, that, I, like, yeah. what that means, like, what? who put that fucking statement out? <laughs> what, oh, you mean that, that they said that? Yeah, like, yeah. it's just, like, I don't even, it's almost like, as comedians, man, you gotta be like, there's, you know, always social, social commentators or mm -hmm. whatever, and it just gets completely draining, like, you just go, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna talk yeah. about marbles and and, and Why cheese whiz because I'm just so tired of this shitty country talking about like like just saying anything. Is there anyone that just saw that that went, Phew, okay, good, oh, yes, good thing we didn't good. do it. We didn't. Now we, we, we a statement came out and we didn't. <laughs> And he'll go now to work and go, you know, uh, we had nothing to do with the hanging. There's no. people who feel safer I, or less safe or less safe according to how the, the alert. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like, okay, I feel a little safer yeah. now. Cause mm -hmm. it's a, when they boost that alert up, do you go like, uh-oh? No, shit. I go, uh-oh, when I go there and I, and I sneak on two... Uh, Screwdrivers without a problem, or two, or I what look do you at do different screwdrivers on a flight. Just, for. I hope you mean I, drinks. I, you know by the saying? way, I'm just gonna for real. I yeah. don't know if this is against the law to say. I just sneak things on to see if I can. Do you really? You are. are you you're out of your crazy? mind. Because they don't. Do they, really? they won't just all laugh and go. Ha, <laughs> no, Patrice, you no, nuts. Patrice, I mean, you got us again. Okay. I'll see you down at uh, the okay. Chuckle Hut. Ready? <laughs> you, are you ready what for this? You, Listen to me. I, I, I don't like. I don't like airports. So I. I'm so you very, bring no, weapons? I'm very frustrated because I don't have land enough a money to on fucking your lawn. buy a bus. That's yeah. what. That's my my. Dream. No, I know that how that place. feels. Not being able to buy a bus is a now, big drag for most Americans. <laughs> because I don't want to so, fly. Yeah. And 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 do you realize that the the fucking butter knife, the shit they give you because of nine eleven, the food. Right. Yeah. No, the, the butter knife is plastic, the, but the fork is metal. No. Yeah. But the butter knife. Yeah. Is dangerous. <laughs> I have physically taken it, the butter knife. The plastic and just one. Went flat and cut yourself. And I have cut myself with the that plastic one or the metal knife. The first plastic class one. butter knife. You're out of your mind. They give me metal first right. in first class. You get metal yeah. knives, and, yep. and, the and that's where the terrorists were all <laughs> yes, sitting. They were all sitting in first fucking class. first class. You bend down the the prongs. Oh, you're using some prison shit now. And you, and you poke a nigga in his temple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like making shanks on in first class. All right, we're on to something nice, but we got OCD man standing there. Kenny, say what you have to say. He's so upset because I haven't. Uh, so the OCD can like, a, oh. like uh, I'm waiting for the order. I yes, gotta get wait. my order in. I have to stand here until they tell me if they want anything like or not. Good, good fellas. Why are you hanging over my? <laughs> you like fucking vote? Bring, <laughs> <laughs> bring the fucking check. You guys want to bring the fucking check? Tie food? and put a bottle over his some? head. I already wrote it down. I'm trying to write. I oh, you're right. Wanted... Okay. So Patrice, could I get you, you drinks first? You really sneak stuff onto a not, plane? Not weapons, just things. Just little things, things that you would know could be a problem. That could be a problem. Like what? I had screwdrivers. I brought a screwdriver. A How big of a screwdriver? A baby, one of those do from the dollar store baby screwdriver sets. For like a eyeglasses? The one that goes from... He might, he might take the screw out of the pilot's eyeglasses <laughs> right. and he can't see. Are you that serious? Way. The one that goes from There's one millimeter to five How millimeters. How big is the biggest one? The biggest one is about uh, one to four inches. Uh-huh. And it can be held uh, in a... Poking way or a stabbing motion. Look, if you can you bite can... someone's eye off, if you really want to fucking let, fuck them up. Ready? Let me let me t let me. I've brought three ounces, three ounces uh -huh. of Crisco oil on a plane, and that's flammable. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Holy the thing shit. that's weird to me is Patrice O'Neill cutting himself. 
going, this is bullshit. Yeah. I, I, I pay I taxes. Cut the, Why am I allowed to cut myself? I cut the, Patrice is a cutter. I cut the meaty part of my hand, like the... <laughs> the, the you should sue the airlines because you just, cut yourself and, with your fucking and, knife. And, 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 and Louis, Christ. just to see, because I, I don't feel safe. It I like starts the, at the TSA. Yeah. Do you feel safe well, you're not feel with those safer cruddy knowing you not, not, let, me, let me tell you something. I feel safer now than I do when I, I, I think back at how it was. Yeah. I it's, think it's safer it, now just because why would they try it You twice? can still I, get I've a been, box I've had shit. on. I guarantee fact you can get a box They don't let, need let to do it something. again, though. They don't need to do right. it again. That's what. Do you think the Japanese could have fucking point. bombed Pearl Harbor again? <laughs> do you <laughs> absolutely I think, think? I think they could. That was so easy. Matter Let's do that shit again. We do it again. <laughs> if 9-11, <laughs> if they didn't, they, if that's Pearl Harbor. So they, yeah. yes, they could have did it again if they fucking felt like doing it. No, they can't they, get anything. First no of all, point. if there are five guys with four-inch fucking screwdrivers, they are getting pounded by even the old lady sitting next to them. There ain't one motherfucker no. ain't gonna stand up and be like Super Negro in Harlem and, and, again, and fucking no. beat again, the shit out of everybody. Right, right with you, I'm on, this is going back. That can't work again, the airplane back one. to the conversation we had over at, at, at Free FM. Yeah. It's television. And I do agree that that the fact is that 9-11 people, go, the fact is that we watch so much TV, it's yeah. like, we're going to fly to Cuba for that don't watch no more. asylum. You know what that was? That <clears throat> kept people from fucking doing anything? From doing oh, anything. Hope kept people from fucking with hijackers. Yeah. Not anymore. Because now you don't have the fucking hope. You're thinking, no. you're going into a building, yeah. I'm dead, I'm fucking it everyone. It doesn't matter, they can't remember, top right. that. Right. Any, any other hijacker is going to be a hack now. It's right. going to be like, exactly. oh, the Empire State Building, wow. So yeah. what? Ooh. No. Ooh. What nice work. Do? We knocked down the two biggest buildings and you crack me in up America. With your three ounces of fucking flammable. <laughs> There's 65,000 pounds of fuel in those wings. <laughs> If I have just the right... He's got cooking oil. If I cooking just, oil. Just the right wick. Oh, totally. Oh, Listen, wick. Crisco is... What are you can, wick in I, the shoelace? I can make a sandal bomb. You could make a fucking <laughs> nightlight from 1850. I what are you going to... You're going to walk to the bathroom with that little white stocking cap and your oil lantern? Excuse me, stewardess. I am going to... the ghost of and Christmas how do you get past. Humbug, yeah. <laughs> the ghost of Christmas past is going to show you that... How do you get it on the plane? Yeah, what oh, are you, you taking it to, in? You my to, thing, I, I just do it to see what they're really doing. You know what I mean? Right what, what is Crisco I can't oil. believe that's how you spend your packing time, putting Crisco oil in a fucking How flammable not like is Crisco, Crisco oil it's like, it's that like, it's going to make a difference? Do you know how slow it burns? They put it in... <laughs> You, you put I it in a lamp. It, if I spread it on your arm. All right, let, let yeah. me. Uh, you spread it on my arm <laughs> while he I patiently waits. Light it. May I see the and pilot for a moment? Because I, I want to put some oil on his arm. <laughs> if I spread it on your arm. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. We're right. with you so far. We're spread it on my arm. And I go, you? sorry, sir. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. And then I go, and I. Uh, the matches. Your plan is falling it's apart. Already, yeah. You're allowed it's to bad. bring matches on a plane. You could bring matches on a plane. I just still love Patrice sitting in his little seat, fucking cutting his hand. And yeah, look at what I over. could do. Excuse me, do you see this? Do you, <laughs> do you see, see what, what I, I did to doing? myself? Yes! Did you do yes! that? Yes! A person can no, cut I their own I just, hand. I just had the plastic... You safety point knife. Out to anyone else? I had the plat. No, I just had the. You just plastic, did it and got mad. The plastic safety knife. The plastic. Yeah. Saving yeah. us from terrorist knife, right? It's yeah. it's serrated. It's so serrated it's, and dangerous. It's only part of the plan. And you can cut a neck. The, the the big door on the pilot's uh, on the cockpit helps. Yeah. Too. It's that not big really just locked the door <laughs> that they really don't. You're gonna jimmy that door open with your plastic knife. Yeah. Let me tell you what they've taken away from me. That door is open. When I fly when, when it's class, on the ground. No, it's open. Those guys, no, I watch. The, the flight attendants. The flight attendants don't puts, do a secret knock. They no, don't go, they, yes, you know, do. the eagle walks up. They just go in and go, hi, You're trying to upset people and, then, and you're telling lies. They I is, fuck, there no, is a protocol to yeah. opening. You're comfortable. There is a watch protocol to opening that door. A steward or stewardess will they stand. Put the, they put the, uh, the cart, the refreshment And cart, they will stand there when the pilot gets out to take a piss yeah. or something. The pilot has one chance to take a piss. I see it on every flight. Yep. 
And if the plane is hijacked, I fly first class because I'm white, <laughs> which means I Wait, fly first class. First the same all, fare you that you fly. Think, do by you the way. think that I see this from Coach? You're not. No, no. you're not see, too well for the back. They block it off. I'm sitting up front. He takes a piss. This situation. And if he gets out in a couple of Al Qaeda flying plane, he goes, "Hope you had a nice piss, Arnold." <laughs> <laughs> and even if the cockpit door is open, the stewardess is in the way. Yeah, yeah no, they do. She they do a coordinated to the What is that obis going to do? There is a contingency plan. I'm going to slow someone down. Look, and rub some oil on her. And rub some oil on her. Throw <laughs> oil in the eyes. You don't get close enough. A knife. <laughs> I've seen people. I've seen people stand up and yep. try to approach that bathroom when the student. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they warn you right away. Go back to your seat. Yeah. They don't wait for you to get up to her so you yeah. can clock her in the I've face. I've never been told to sit down when I got to take a piss in first class. But, but when the yeah, pilot's when been the in the pilots, bathroom, when the pilot's in there, you when the can't pilot's get up. in there, you are not getting up and going toward the. the There's the, a procedure okay. to it, and you're ignoring first, it no, because. Wait, no, no, no. First of all, see, this is this is white guy non paranoid. This is why you're. No, you're, it's. This is why I'm the country, most paranoid no, no. motherfucker. I look country, at every goddamn Arab on my fucking flight. I the scan the terminal. Is so fucked up because you guys are in charge and you're not. Fit your reaction. Your reactionary. The, everything we do is reacting mm -hmm. to what these inventive errors are doing. Listen, Think, but wait a minute. Patrice, wait a minute. White Louis. people have been in charge for a long time. And we know what we're doing. Up. We know what we're white doing. Guilt is ruining everything. If there's one thing we can do, it's take charge this of the is, country and tell people. There what ain't do. one Nike print on the moon, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Nike. What? White men. White men. Your, your racism is misguided right now. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but hush puppies. <laughs> Puppy on the moon. <laughs> Brooks Brothers. Brooks Brothers. <laughs> listen, listen. This is the thing about the, the, the about the the no, whole plan we're about, not the steward, enough? about the stewardess. About the stewardess stopping. Okay. Right, now you, you you drive through a tunnel. No, you don't drive through a tunnel coming in ever. Well, I drive yeah, through, no, I, I, I yeah. Midtown, midtown Tunnel. Well, I drive tunnel through the every day. tunnel every right. day. There's there's five cops or whatever uh -huh. sitting there. Yeah, they sit at all the tunnels. Now uh -huh. they they don't do the the tunnel. Che they don't check for fucked up shit a mile away from the fucking uh, uh, tunnel. No, they check after you pay your fucking toll. Then they look, then they go for suspicious box characters. trucks, things like that. You know, all they I pull have over. to fucking do is pay my toll, and the guy goes, pull over, you're in a truck. And I go, F go fuck yourself, thank you very much, and pat him on his head, and drive in the fucking tunnel. So, why do you think a fucking steward is under her plan? I can't just fucking muscle this fucking steward is out the way, if I wanted to. The still, the cockpit door is closed and locked. There's one pilot. Both of those motherfuckers. Fly. Pilot, it ain't the pilot and some fucking mechanic in the other seat. He can fly the motherfucker. They, when, the pilot, when it's time for the pilot to take a piss. <laughs> why am I explaining this, this to a fucking I, paranoid this is, Negro? This is white guy. Yeah. With I mean, this is white guy stereo. I'm bringing That's Crisco right. and screw everything's them. gonna be fine. It's under control. <laughs> and a plastic butter knife. Don't worry about the planes I'm anymore. Just, the I'm fucking planes MacGyver are fine. The thing is, just, Patrice, just, the reason why we don't worry as much is because being white is so awesome. Oh. <laughs> the benefits are so rich. It rocks. That even if we die tomorrow of terrorism, it's not that bad. Was you worried about? We, was you worried about Gatorade before this Gatorade guy did this? I don't even know what you're talking about. The, but I don't the reason care. that England, we can't, the reason, I don't drink Gatorade. No, it's the reason that we can't bring, <laughs> it's got bring, too much sugar in it. The reason we can't bring our fucking liquids on anymore. Oh, it's because of the guy. England That's what I'm saying. Uh, threat. So, was you thinking about that before they did it? No. Do you understand? That's what I mean. My point is that so you we're, think, well, we're I reacting think, to whatever. <clears throat> yeah, but you have to. you are totally irrationally insane. You have made yeah. you, your brain yeah. makes no sense. Yeah, Chris, your brain does not work properly. What else have you brought on? I don't really. If you were running the country, nobody would be. People do you would be know, going on and all bandaged. Liar. Also, do you know those x-ray machines <laughs> that they send through? They don't have Crisco uh, meters. The, the Crisco <laughs> meter. They do have... And then they check your shoes for bomb. <clears throat> that, that rub they do. Yeah. You know what? I don't take my shoes... Well, now they make you take your shoes off. But I don't take anything off. It just it just doesn't make any fucking sense. I flew right after 9-11. I, I was on tour. When 9-11 happened, I was in L.A. And I was going on a, on a bunch of road work. And so I started flying as soon as they had planes going up. And uh, there was nobody in the airports. It was like just walking oh. through these empty airports. Everyone's petrified. Everybody got, we all, any airline you flew, you were immediately platinum class, 
in the lounge. Please. <laughs> they were begging you to fun. fly. And all of the whole thing that they're not even supposed to mention plane crashes or terrorism, yeah. that was out the window because the, the flight attendants, everybody were really scared. So you'd be on the plane and the flight attendant is saying, I'm really scared we're all gonna, we're all gonna die on this one. Like they were talking <laughs> oh, like that. Shit. And before every flight that I flew for like a month, the pilot would come out to the first class people and say, you guys are the last line of defense. <laughs> he's saying, Great. He's rich I'm fucking I'm a soldier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he says, I don't want you. And he seriously, I was in the first seat, like 1A. And he said, I'd appreciate you not sleeping, to be honest with you, on this flight, because uh, you got to protect me like i got to protect That's you. That's fine. Could I have a kosher meal? <laughs> yeah. uh, if I'm going to be uh, de defending you, I, I, I'm hungry. I need good food, plenty of it. Please. Let's, let's talk to an air marshal. Mike in Philly, what's up? Gentlemen, how are you this morning? Good. Good. Say, uh, I'm going to break down the third wall for you, Patrice. Right. Uh, you stay... You stand up and uh, and try to muscle one of the uh, flight attendants. I will peel your cap back. Yeah. So fast. Ah. Is that on every flight, to, sir? Every flight? Don't answer uh, that. You know, you can, I, you can, I, I don't want to know. No, no, I don't want to fucking know. I don't want to know if there's an air marshal on every flight. He'd like to think there's that it's no every way flight. There's an air marshal on every flight. I, 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 I assume no there is. Answer that. Huh? I, I'm not able to answer that. All right. I thought you could answer. Um, there's no way. I don't want an answer. Hey, I like to think they're well, sir, I'm, sprinkled look, that around makes liberally. Me feel a little hey. safer that yeah. that he would shoot me in the head if I tried anything. That uh -huh. that hey. makes me feel safer. Yeah. Hey, Mike, what kind of weapons do do the pilots have now? Uh, I'm not at liberty to discuss that. <laughs> at liberty, I think they it's still plastic. working. You know what I read in the? Well, I, 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 I saw this thing on the news. I, I, yeah. that, I think it's on the QT. I think they got some stuff up there. I now. saw this thing on the news hey. that freaked me out because when they were talking about arming pilots, people complained that the bullets would pierce the uh, the plane and, yeah. and let it. No, and then somebody on the new, uh, news goes, uh, "Well, no, a guy from the FAA said we know that's not true because often when we bring planes in, there's bullets all underneath." Because people that live in the airports shoot at planes Just all shoot the time. At the plane? <laughs> is that real? <laughs> yes, and there's always bullets lodged. It's just part of maintenance is pull the bullets out of the bottom of the plane. Because every airport has psychos living near it. Shooting at planes. Oh, yeah, and the guy just said it casually like, we know, because that's oh. just part of a... Uh... Oh, wow. Don't you have special you want, I'm gonna munitions? Give you, I'm gonna get, uh, Patrice, I'm going to give you a hint. If you want to take over a plane, take that plastic... Knife, stand up and say, "Take the plane down, or the end gets it." The what? Take the plane down. Uh, oh, like a uh, uh, you suck. Blazing saddle. Yeah. It's like blazing saddle. Oh, oh. Put the, put instead the of put the gun to your head. But see, did All you right. see where I'm saying how the country is? Not, no. It, for the f the fact is, how do you not feel a little safer? He should have said nigger to, to explain that, yeah, so we can no. all know it. The end. Yeah. What, what the all, fuck that, is that going made, on here? And that made joy it depressing. And yeah. Rejoice. That made him sound. It's despicable, uh, man. Yeah. Dude, I, I don't. I don't agree. That would have been either. funny if he had quoted the goddamn movie, and I get what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. the goddamn. Put the nigger down. Yeah. <laughs> Make a move, and the nigger gets the it. Nigger. I don't think he's bluffing. <laughs> goddamn <laughs> Kramer. Kramer ruined it I for know. everybody. Let's get out of here for a minute or two. We got Louis C.K. playing Carolines this weekend. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> I also have an HBO special starting on January carried. 13th. Yes. It's also called yeah. uh, Not Patrice O'Neill's HBO <laughs> special. I really am feeling like I, I can't find my HBO special to save my life, man. Oh. Just come up with a good title, like Plastic Knives and Crisco. Crisco, oil. Crisco and Ooh. Plastic Knives. Yeah, Crisco that and Plastic Knives. That might be actually knives. good. Thank you very much. Mm. Crisco yeah. and, pa Crisco which and I don't, Plastic Knives. I knives. don't bring Crisco on a plan, by the way. I, well, well, why would no, you? you? You eat it at It'd be home, very man. dangerous. <laughs> Could smear it on the window and obscure the next passenger's view. <laughs> I, I would hate that. I would hate to sit there with Crisco smeared on my, my window when I'm trying to look at the beautiful scenery. Right, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. Ready? Yeah. Uh -oh. What oh, if you rub it. your body down? Yeah, with Crisco. Uh -huh. Naked. Uh -huh. Rub your body down. I'm trying to think ahead. All right. All right. I'm right. with you right you now. You rub your body down yeah. with, with, with something completely flammable. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> then you put... you An you, odorless. Totally odorless. And then you hope, <laughs> and you hope you it's not going to smell when you come through. And yeah. then you... <laughs> You, yeah. yeah, 
it's something odorless like a sure. grease or a Vaseline type yeah, of thing. hasn't been product. invented yet, uh -huh. totally. <laughs> <laughs> something not on the chart of the elements. And then, yeah. and then your clothes are a, a, a you wear, uh, you wear uh, mm -hmm. like Explosive silk clothing. Silk clothing, silk clothing silk very silk flammable totally. clothing. Oh, yeah. You go on uh -huh. and you just light, light yourself, yourself on, on fire. fire. And just run through the plane. How about a fire extinguisher? Then you'll just fall down on fire. <laughs> yeah. Put you out and land in the next airport. <laughs> and, and, and you'd be laying your dumb there. body off under the tarmac. You'd be laying there with fucking third degree burns <laughs> yeah. on your body. God, I thought you'd be on the news. Good idea. They'll be time. making fun of you here oh. in the morning. <laughs> Did you hear about that asshole that lit himself on yeah. fire and didn't yeah. hurt a person? I just hug somebody. I go and hug the pilot with Vaseline mm. You can't get through fire. the door. You'd be knocking all, ow, <laughs> hurry, open the door. We wouldn't even acknowledge that we ever do. Yeah. <laughs> no. just, oh. You hear what this asshole did? You wouldn't even get that. I'm just you trying to get think. that respect. I'm just trying to think like a terrorist would think. Man, after Gatorade, you got to think these, yeah. couple, mm. these things. Man. Gatorade was pretty impressive. you got to think these things. You do, you do, do you do the uh, uh, other celebrities? Because Jay Moore turned us on to this. The other celebrities that are on the plane with you, if you would get top billing if the plane went down. Oh, yeah. 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 No. Uh, I was flying uh, recently uh, from L.A. back to Newark. And Sebastian Bach was on the plane. Mm. And I'm like, ah. You wouldn't be mentioned. No. I go, I, I think I'd be mentioned just mm -hmm. because the post would have been able to do rocker Bach and shock jock. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the post would have loved to have yeah. done that. Although I think he would have gotten top billing. I was billing. on with Dan Rather once, so. Yeah? Dan Rather. That would have even been a footnote. Nah, nothing. Not even a footnote. Dan Rather. This whole big thing on Dan yeah. Rather. Not even Source Magazine. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I would have been You would have been James somewhere. fucking Brown this week. <laughs> even your mom like, would have oh, been yeah. like, did you hear about Dan Rather? <laughs> <laughs> might have made King magazine. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you might have yeah. made King. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, let's get out of here for a couple minutes. All right. Whip Em Out Wednesday. Introducing Wow for Dummies, an easy to follow guide to get you started with Whip Em Out Wednesday on the Opie and Anthony Show. Big, luscious, juicy one. Step one, get a wow sticker. OpieandAnthony.com. Step two, put said sticker on car, not under the hood. Step three, drive around. Please pull up next to me, honk your horn, and demand to see my tits. Let me see those boobies. That's so sexy. Step four, enjoy boobies. God damn it, what nice tits. Some people call them the bosom. Oh, yeah. So ladies. From all over the country, if you feel like showing us a little something, something. Whip them out Wednesday. This message was brought to you by the cooperative staff at the Opie and Anthony program. with the Obi and Anthony show on this fine Whip Em Out Wednesday. Trace, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. at Caroline's all weekend long. Having uh, fun. Yes. CNN had a fine story about a foul-mouthed doll. Oh, I didn't click on this. God, I get so sidetracked with the internet. Wow. Like, I, I go, my homepage is CNN. Because I like, uh, if, I, if I've been watching videos, or if you're on, like, you, you're doing a marathon uh, on a weekend... And you know they wouldn't break in for anything because it's yeah. like the shit channel. You ever see those channels that just they keep playing Bewitched <laughs> yeah, and like even on 9/11? Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. like building the people don't down, care. But fucking is still on. Bewitched marathon is on. <laughs> that is so and, true. So, There's still somebody cooking some shrimp for you yeah, on TV. Yeah, on the like Food Network. Add some salt. They have no. They have no resources for news <laughs> gathering, so they just keep running the fucking Food Network. Yeah. How to boil water? No, it's great. Not. The fucking place is burning down. Man, you're onto something. Because like when the president speaks, yeah, I I'll go through all the channels and count how many fucking channels had mm -hmm. to cover are the covering place. it. You know, you got the networks and the news mm -hmm. channels obviously are covering it. Uh, but then you get amazed every once in a while, like, well, Sky Fi. I'm at fucking like like. I always flip around when he's on too, not just for the slight Nick at night. Nick or, and or, the Jeffersons are gonna be on no matter. No matter what? Absolutely. <laughs> you are guaranteed to see James. Oh, oh, they made a painting and I was trying to sell it. <laughs> like fucking b b buildings are burning. Family. Fucking Three's Company will be on Nickelodeon. Yep. Uh, Noggin, mm -hmm. there was something that will never... Noggin. HB, none of the HBOs, uh, none of that Showtime, or they'll never... What about a nuclear explosion in Manhattan? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Those channels will still keep going. 
ESPN interrupted for the president dying for for Gerald Ford. Yeah. And they interrupted for 9/11. They did. ESPN did. They, they interrupted. Yeah. For Gerald for Ford. Ford dying. Absolutely. They had, Ladies they like, and gentlemen, this has to be the most tragic events we've ever seen. A nuclear device uh, detonating uh, in Manhattan. Uh, the loss of life inconceivable at this point. Click. Come and knock on our door. <laughs> we've been waiting for you. Nuclear explosion. Where the well, kisses are. What the fuck? You know that this comedian uh, Adele Givers, she, she was doing a joke. I, probably some other people did it, but I saw her do it. I'm talking about 9/11, and she was like, "What the fuck happened to the emergency broadcast system?" Like, yeah, she I just like they're always testing it. But 9/11 was it. If that wasn't it, <laughs> it was I right. don't know what it was the time fuck. To pull the switch. Pull the yeah. fucking switch <laughs> on right. that beep. Right. This is the emergency broadcast system. Yeah. This is not a test. Had like, this been a real emergency? <laughs> Didn't that used to horrify you, like, growing yes. up? Because it was, it was Cold War and shit, so mm -hmm. that meant there were nuclear missiles coming over, yep. and they were fucking going to hit, and that was it. Yep. So, you know, boop, this is a test of the emergency broadcast system. We're testing it, broadcasting it in your local name, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but this time, it was like nothing. Nope. You just, I guess you really didn't need it if you're watching it happen. I guess Back well, then, yeah. you needed it because, you know. A uh, storm was coming or something. You had five channels. Yeah, it would have been like, uh, nice storm was we interrupt coming. Aaron Brown and Dan Rather to bring you some weird guy who has yeah, never yeah. broadcast. Uh, um, there seems to be a problem. <laughs> Bad things are happening. I, I don't know exactly how to describe this. Would that be like being the anchor for the fucking emergency broadcast network. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nuclear and, and after 9-11, he's like, couldn't I have had five fucking minutes? <laughs> Planes hit the World Trade Center. Come on. And I still didn't get to punch <laughs> in. <laughs> <Get> shit. <laughs> Jesus. I love how I, they I think I've been clear in my throat for 30 fucking years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to fucking go on now. Cocksuckers. Oh. Anyway, I, CNN. Yeah, I saw that story. And CNN, I keep it as my homepage just for that because a lot of times I'll be watching marathons or a bunch of videos. Now with box sets, you know, you're completely cut off. Yeah. There ain't, a, a DVD isn't going to interrupt, <laughs> no. that's for sure. No. So I like having the computer there. Just, you know, you pop it up and there's CNN to uh, keep you uh, safe. And I saw that story. And somehow, through two clicks, I went from that to watching a uh, German shit video. Wow. Like I, what? And, and I swear, wow. I wanted to watch... Two degrees of separation that. from yeah. CNN to German Two shitting. clicks away. Wow. I don't even know how it happened. It was within wow. two clicks. I think it was a, a link that took me somewhere, and then a pop-up came up. I said, oh, fuck, I got to see that. I got to see that. <laughs> like I, how that's easy something. it is to get I to... Yeah. Wow. I don't click on pop-ups So what I use I gotta see this I gotta one. to keep me informed <laughs> is also there for... Shitting in Hitler's mouth video. Shit, right. Yeah, German shit videos. Wow. <laughs> Schittler. <laughs> Schittler. <laughs> that's what they would have called it. Schittler's listen. Ah, Schittler. Good. Schittler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking chicken. Oh, God. <laughs> So what, what what was the story? I uh, didn't I don't know. click it's, on it. Uh, well, let's get into it here. Hey there, try and keep up with me. What did the woman say? We had to bleep it out because the singing Baby Bratz doll's lyrics sound too much like profanity. Yes, I am very disgusted, really, of uh, the lyrics of what I heard myself. And we don't use profanity at home. It shocked Louis Arce's six-year-old daughter, Christina, on Christmas Day when she came to him in dismay after listening to her baby brat doll named Jade sing. What did you hear when you, when you played it? The F word. <laughs> the F Great. word. The F word. The F word. He just said fuck and cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have it unbleeped? Yeah, we have it unbleeped. Oh, thank we're goodness. we to that point. The F word. The toy companies do this on purpose, by the way. Yeah. It's. I just think it's. It, it's a lot when of you're exposure. recording something, sometimes it sounds different. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Uh, you could go through what? song lyrics. What? I, I wanted Jimmy to Hendrix. take a break of the show and kiss yeah, a man. Excuse me. <laughs> what do you what? think of it? That yeah, there are plenty nowhere. of song lyrics. There's a bathroom on the right. Mm. There's plenty of song Purple. lyrics that Purple. you just fuck up. But they, they, they didn't record it that way. For, the, for my half of my life, I thought in Purple Rain, he said, uh, you say you want a leader, but you can't seem to make up your mind. I think you better close them big eyes, ooh. <laughs> them big eyes, ooh. You think you better close 
<laughs> them big eyes, ooh. <laughs> and then my girl, like back, my girlfriend back then goes, no, he says, I think you better come and let me guide you. Oh. And I said, man. oh shit, okay. And it's such revelation when well, you, you know, figure like, it out. Well, you know that song where he says, uh, revved up like a deuce and yep. run through night. Uh, yeah. I used to think he was Douche. saying, uh, yeah. your mother's cunt smells like oranges. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. It's just a weird trick of the ear, you know. <laughs> so it's subtle. Just a weird, yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? What a weird lyric. <laughs> oh, is that great? <laughs> Just a trick of the year. <laughs> Who hasn't heard that? Yeah, of oh, course. I'm with you. Oh, that. Christ. Uh. So today, the RCs took the doll back to the Kmart where it was purchased did. and played the song for the store's manager. We went along to see the manager's reaction. He said he heard it. It's the bad word that the doll said. The manager offered to take the doll back and said the manufacturer of the doll should be notified possibly to initiate a recall. Arshi said he called the manufacturer and someone there told him the doll's lyrics said Fuck something off. else. <laughs> she said that it said so cute, but I'm telling her what my daughter told oh, me. Oh, so cute. The F word. Yeah. When we you. called for comment, we were transferred yeah, to the PR department. We left a message, but everyone was out of the office until after the holidays. Now, Puerto Rico. Mr. Arce says that he plans oh, to hold huh. on to this doll until after the first of the new year, when he can speak to the manufacturer of this doll. It's MGA Entertainment. And he says he plans to get to the bottom of it. Do you? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love it if the doll company just said, so it says fuck. What's your fucking yeah. problem? You got a problem with <laughs> like that? They just did it. Yeah, we decided, is, we yeah. decided that we wanted our doll to say fuck. Kids are, kids like fuck, don't they? Like they yeah. just go, oh shit, really? That's a problem? <laughs> <laughs> we thought fuck was good for just a kid's doll. Complete, complete ignorance. Yeah, just, Wait, no. what? Oh, thank you for telling us because oh. uh, <laughs> the next line of uh, shitty Sammy dolls. <laughs> uh, my wife, the old, uh, you know, I hate people that act outraged at this kind of shit, especially yeah. when it comes to kids because... Is there's just people who gives a shit, but yeah. my my daughter somebody gave her a makeup kit for a four year old. <laughs> it's a pink it's pink little pink pouch with makeup in it, and yeah. uh, you know it's stuff she can smear on her face and look like a young rape whore. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah, like all fucking looked like someone really did her in. <laughs> <laughs> like she had a bad turning night. around and make four. her look like yeah, Jodie exactly. Foster from Taxi Driver. Oh, that's what she looks like. Oh, that is horrible. All smeared makeup. <laughs> yeah. But the nail polish, she opens it up. It the whole house stinks. It's fucking toxic. It's lacquer nail polish. It's real nail it's polish. It's real nail polish. And there's oh no warning. God. There's warnings on <laughs> re, on fucking adult oh, nail polish. Yeah. It's not the apple juice made out no. of apple juice. No. Apple juice. The Play-Doh that you can eat. <laughs> no, it's like she's fucking incredibly toxic. It's if she like, drank it, it would kill her. Benjamin yeah. Moore <laughs> Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> oh everything <laughs> kids get turpentine. these days. <laughs> yeah, everything ki uh, kids get these days has to be like dissolving it. I don't know how they got away with mouth this. Or, yeah, how the but fuck how they the get away with that? But how the fuck are you still alive? I'm alive. No, our toys were ridiculous. 15, 17 years older than I am. <laughs> How are you still alive? They didn't give a fuck about kids when you were growing no. up. The most dangerous toy I ever had in my life, it was something called Incredible Edibles. It, it, it came with this metal mold of a bug. And you put this <laughs> fucking chemical in it. I don't know what it was. It was not food. Wow. You put a chemical in and shoved it into this electron. It plugged in. This device that heated up like a nuclear reactor. You felt radiant heat coming from this to thing. Melt the thing. And then they gave you tongs yeah. to reach in <laughs> yeah. and pull Jesus. this metal mold out. Jesus. That was all, it was red hot. And then you had to set aside to cool. You pulled out this incredible edible bug and ate it. And it was like rubber. For it was rub. one rubber. To one yeah, to they seven. didn't care. Right. They didn't care back no. then. There wasn't a thing. Click clacks, what, wait, which wait. were the mm -hmm. most dangerous. What like, do you do after you ran out of that stuff that you put in the mold? Oh, you melted your toy crayons. soldiers in them. Yeah. Or, and crayons right. or whatever yeah. else. Yeah. And there was also, a, I remember a friend of mine had this I wasn't interested in it because I wasn't interested in like, like Civil War stuff. But he had Civil War characters he would make with molten lead. Jesus. It was a toy for kids. You <laughs> melted lead and then poured them shot precariously it. into these little holes in top of these little figurine molds. But why are you still alive? Why are we still, why are we still, why are we still, still alive? Because we're not one of the people that were killed. 
Like yeah, I, yeah. I saw, <laughs> that's the thing that people Bravo. are like, but that's no the way, simplest no, fucking answer, no and it's 100% people did die accurate. just because you're, it's just so self-centered. Wait a minute, I, I saw a comedian once who was supposed to be like a non-PC guy, and he's like, hey, with seat belts and airbags, how many people here were all still alive? Yeah, but lots of people died. <laughs> so They're not here so to raise their hands and enjoy your shitty jokes, you fucking hack. But that doesn't mean that shit ain't dangerous. But what's the difference between now and then? We all flew in the The difference is that less people die of those causes because somebody's I, I looking after them. I believe less people die. I mean, he made a good point. I'm saying yeah. now it's got to be less a white people die. Don't you right. understand? <laughs> the point. Have, less <laughs> white people white die. People die. There, is still there. there is still rules over there. There is still minority children. Melton, molten oh. Those companies are still selling sun. those toys in Bangkok and shit. They just yeah, don't yeah. sell them here. They don't sell them here. They still make the whatever that thing was called. The incredible edibles. But they sell it in Brazil and other brown people places. Along with paint chip places. Let's hear the doll. This is what happened. This is what you get All to right, hear. All right, let's hear. Hey, Dad, show me what you got. Oh. Hey, Dad, try and keep up with me. I didn't uh, well, first it was of all, so the doll's a whore. Distorted. Yeah, the doll's yeah. a little hose bag yeah. anyway. Yeah. But I heard like a little fuck you. But I it was it, it could have been anything. We got it isolated. Oh good. The guys behind the Look scenes. Look at the guys. That's great. That's it? That's fuck you. Right wow. There. What? I'm not buying it. <laughs> yeah, those people are douchebags. <laughs> I'm outraged. <laughs> yeah. Are you that kidding That could be me. anything you <laughs> A, Are you, know, you kidding me? It's, a, oh, it's supposed to say so cute. Oh, the hell is that? My awful phone. Da, 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 I, it, yeah, it, it makes the thing when I get a text message like that, because it doesn't have a, a funny um, ringtone. Oh. I don't have a my. I have kitty porn on my computer like you do. It yells at his phone. Yells. Hey, call I have phone. kitty porn call on my, my phone. computer. <laughs> yeah, it's Jim Norton. Listen to this awful. Ringtone. And I, I keep meaning to change it, but I just have so much fun when it goes mm -hmm. off, panicking and making mm -hmm. noises. Uh, the best was in line at the oh, bank. I don't even have your number in my phone. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> number. <laughs> right? As we eagerly await. This is really my ringtone. All right. I have kitty porn on my computer. I have kitty porn on my computer. I have kitty porn on my computer. <laughs> I've seen I that go off in restaurants. <laughs> I, awesome. it, dude, and then you go into major panic mode, and I can't get mm -hmm. to the phone fast enough. I'm like the fumbling idiot <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and all those dumb comedies. <laughs> you got to not go for the phone when that happens. Like, if I'm in a movie theater and my phone goes off, I just look around like, who's, who's <laughs> Who the fuck? Yeah, hey, there you the go. The instant you reach in your pocket, you're guilty. Yeah. yeah. You Nobody can't really has... tell. Because no. look at what happens. If a phone rings in here, a lot of people, if they have the same ringtone, everybody's, be, ring everyone's grabbing. Yeah. So you don't actually know. There's something weird about a cell phone ring. You can't quite place where no. it is. You ever lose it and then mm -hmm. have uh, somebody call, call it, it and you walk around the house like, yeah. I hear it, <laughs> but I, I don't. I, am I close to it? Is it under me or in three rooms away? You know what? I, every time I'm checking, if I want to check my voicemail on my cell phone from a, a landline, yeah, I'm holding my cell phone in my right hand. I'm calling it with my left hand. I know I'm doing this. And then when it rings, my cell phone rings, and it's me. And I go, oh, I'm getting a call. And I, I'm like, oh, idiot. And then I'll hang up. I'll do that three times. I go, okay, remember, it's you this time. Ring, hey, somebody, how nice to get a call from a person. That uh, The cell phone has to be the biggest change in society over... Oh, by far. Uh, since I can't even think of what the last invention was. It crept up real slow. Since the like, phone. Since the actual yeah, phone. Yeah, the actual yeah. phone, right. Because it's just changed everything yep. we do. And now with yep. cameras in them and stuff, it, with, with the Saddam thing we were talking about earlier, it's just I would put that top of the fucking yep. list. No, I, I had oh, a cell oh. phone early because I was working on a TV show when we needed phones. You, remember? Oh, you had a great one. I, I had bet. a big, big, huge one. But I was talking on this New York City street corner on a phone, and some kind of like uh, trendy, you know, punky kids walked by and went like, uh, "Hi, mom! Oh, you're on a phone." They made fun of me. Oh, and I remember screaming yes. at them, "You're gonna have one, asshole! <laughs> you're going to have one of these. Remember this day, you fucking cunt." Everyone will have one. And they do. They used to be, yeah, those big, huge ones that went on the phone. But one what thing they used to do though. Do you what, even remember? Pay phones. Yeah. Even, Fucking even, disgusting pay even phones. Even before pages, though. What did we do? You had to get You had to, to, yeah. 
to a payphone. Everybody had different kind of message machines. You had a fucking tape. Tape. Message machine. Leave a message on the one big tape. thing where you could call your message machine and punch a code in and yep. hear it go. That was and amazing. Play messages for you. But there oh were lines God, at the mall. Yeah. I remember being at the mall as a kid, and, and mm -hmm. you'd have to stand on a fucking line a of phone. kids to call your parents to come pick you up and shit. Because yep. that, that was all, all you had. And, uh, another white experience. Yeah. 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 Yes. Then they got big, big, up with them all. fat cell phones that look like old Vietnam military, uh, <laughs> yeah. like you're calling it walkie an talkies. Yeah, I'm calling it an air strike. Getting, getting kidnapped is a white experience, too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Take the bad with the good. Oh, well, yeah. Hey, uh, Craig in Jersey, what's up? Hey, good morning, fellas. Good morning, Craig. I actually have, uh, Jim Norton on my cell phone yelling, ring, ding, ding, pick up the phone cunt when my one buddy calls. Loads oh, of fun nice. when you're standing in line at the bank. Yeah, you think that's it's nice. fun at first, and then you get in these situations and go, uh, maybe this isn't a good idea. Um, Wildly I, inappropriate. I want to challenge uh, line five, Eric. Eric, hello. You're challenging yeah. my toy knowledge. Go ahead. Absolutely. Every time you tell the story, yep. you tell it wrong. They All were right. never called click clacks. Right. They were always God called bangers. No, oh. they weren't dick, fuck, ass, cunt, shit, dick, yes, fuck, they bitch. Were, you old they were click clacks, you, you motherfucking dick bag. They were called you click clacks. So Punch up click clacks. Fucking retard. You motherfucker. I'm, I'm, I'm experienced. Not old. Experience? You're experienced <laughs> grave digging, you fucking old I'm grave digger. Why would I be grave digger if I'm make, old? Get your joke make, straight, I you, don't know I you ran fucking out, dick you bag. Fool. You stink. <laughs> what did you call them? They're kabangers. Kabangers? Where did you grow up? What shithole fucking podunk Iowa crap dick shit fuck <clears throat> did sir, you grow up in? Sir, you must understand that. Jersey, that... you Long Island. Oh, fool. Jersey, that's what it is. Anthony, that's his excuse. Okay, Anthony, let me apologize. He's from fucking Jersey. You gotta understand, Anthony used to call a slinky a long spring. Right. We <laughs> called it the big fat spring. <laughs> Uh, what, look it up. I what does it say? I think you're both right. <laughs> it is. Of course it is. Depending I'm on where right you're from. You're depending on where you're from. According to Google, you throw click clack in Google and hit it, you images. get click clacks. Now you put in his clack. stupid word, and I'm sure it comes up. What like they didn't have two different words yeah, for toys. Yeah, it was a knockoff. Dumbass. What was it? Something bangers. I love that guy. Kabangers. Kabangers. <clears throat> his mother bangers. Were a knockoff of click clacks. Right. Oh my God! There you are. Yeah. Two different ones, but he calls. But he calls me up to call me out on it. He goes what across his house and picks up the phone. Yeah, I'm gonna call him out because it couldn't possibly have two different names. Uh, calls the screener. They were in oh, Australia. They call him something else. What do they use? What do they call him? It's that thing that they weapon. used to a weapon that you used to fucking catch ostrich with <laughs> around, it, fucking around, its around its neck. Koala it's a killers. weapon. <laughs> Koala All right, we're gonna step aside so we can like uh, digest a little bit more with Louis C.K. and oh, Patrice O'Neill okay, just a bit. <laughs> now we all know that Opie and Anthony Wouth. We gotta bring this to the radio, actually. Talking yeah. about uh, yeah. navigation systems. We've been all over the place during this yeah. break. Oh, but we were talking about God. our credit card uh, theft because we were talking about uh, shredders. I have a shredder. Apparently, Patrice is a shredder. Cross you cut. like to shred. Got to have the cross cut I shredder. I have a shredder. I don't think I got the cross cut, though. You have to have cross you cut. You got to have cross cut. They could, they could tape that shit right back together you again. How long You're that screwed. would take, though? Hey, hey. for you? To, to steal your identity? Oh, you, yeah. Nigerians? Yeah, Come man. on, they're yeah. out there. Yeah. There's, yeah, a, but see, there's I, an African Obi somewhere. Uh, like, with I am Greg, Greg Obi Hughes. <laughs> <laughs> no, and my point of view is uh, people who stole my credit cards and then they reverse the chart. You know, I get the yeah. money back. You get it back. I'm white. Everything works out. <laughs> <laughs> it works out. It's How long did it white. take? Like okay. two <laughs> minutes. Two weeks, you know, and then I go, oh, by the way, could you reverse those charges? Of course, Mr. Of C course, C Mr. Of course, white Mr. We've done that already. Yes. Probably. The have. best part during the break, Louis like, yeah, and I'll, I'll go. What? I didn't buy that. Yeah, you got to take that off the card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm thinking yeah. a couple of my own purchases. <laughs> yeah, just a couple yeah. purchases. Also, I, I would never buy an iPod. Dinner? And Why Bennington? would I ever? <laughs> Bennington's? Dinner what? with, dinner television. with my wife? I didn't pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody took my wife to dinner on that credit card. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this, I saw this comedian Morgan Murphy in L.A. who did a bit about. Uh, I'm just stealing her bit, but at least I'm quoting her. Uh, when they, some commercial for Citibank where they show a, a black guy saying, they thought, I, uh, you know, I saw something for a surfboard on my card. 
And I called, and ah. they told me, of course, we already took that off. And the message is, wow. here at Citibank, we know black guys don't surf. Mr. Rodriguez, of course we know you didn't buy those textbooks or whatever. you know. <laughs> don't you get annoyed when they check on you, though? Like, there oh, are yeah. certain things I do all the time and use my credit cards for, and then they'll, like... Uh, it's been denied. We have to call. You have to call up uh, American Express or something and right. make sure. I'm like, dude, I've done this 15 yep. times. Yeah. That happened to me during this uh, Christmas season. Did it? They Why? Because you card. used it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah, they no. They your card they, off when you go shopping. They explain yeah, you the whole thing from scratch. Like, well, how do we know it's you? Yeah. Well, because I signed it, but anyone can use your signature. Well, why did you ever let me use this? Well, card? then why am I? Yeah. Why am I allowed <laughs> to do this? Well, we noticed you made multiple purchases in yeah. one day. Very yeah, suspicious. at the same mall. This uh, uh, around Christmas. When's I'm the last shopping. Time you ask for a ID for you with your credit card. Yeah, you don't. Ever. You don't ever. ask for an ID. No. Ever. You just nope. hand them the credit card. Done. Yep. Transaction complete. It doesn't matter. Yeah, because people can steal it. it all, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I had I had mine stolen. You know, he, Jekyll yeah, and Hyde here in New York. That's apparently, a great story. Apparently, some guy, uh, one of the waiters over there, had this little device in his uh, apron. Oh, and boy. when he took your credit card on on the way to the register, he'd swipe it into this device, which later he plugs into his computer, gets all the info, and he had a thing that prints up cards and puts oh, the information on the magnetic sure. strip. Yeah. So he used. My credit card to get like eight hundred and something dollars worth of cell phone equipment and, yeah. and stuff. And I called up Amex and they stopped it and, and reimbursed and That's everything right. was Wait, done. Wait, do you pay attention? See, this is where I fucking up. <laughs> yeah, I'm so afraid of what my balance is gonna be. You don't you even open look. it up and kind of shut your like, eyes. And go, I don't. I don't even. Look. I don't fucking call my balance. So it's like I don't know if somebody you don't look no, at the charges. Too, yeah. I'm I, saying I don't look I, at my I'm afraid oh, like to hear it go I down. You know, I, I don't have enough for I, every time I spend. I know I'm spending, so it's like I, I'm afraid that I'm, it's going down. So I don't check it a lot. Yeah. So somebody could steal my shit and I, uh, for a minute. You know? See, and, and I t I check I check it now. I didn't used to. I would just look at the balance until I realized I was paying for AOL for four years every month and I hadn't used it. In four years, I I just Crazy. hadn't used it. It was like I used to riding around on a bicycle with training wheels still on. I just <laughs> never like AOL was your first foray into yeah. the internet kind of thing. But once you were done with it, mm -hmm. you, pay, you pay bills over the internet. Uh, yeah. Oh, I, I have uh, porn sites that fucking bill me monthly that I haven't, <laughs> I haven't jerked off to since the fucking 90s. Since forever. Yeah. Like, and a charge will come in sometimes for six bucks yeah. every month for some service. I don't know. It's like gm2b.com, yeah. and, and you're like, what the, what, what the I don't even know what this? that is. Yeah. But you, I might need it someday, yeah. so. Yeah. That's keep, funny. Let it ride. Yeah. Yeah. Louis in the middle of a 10-year contract. He's <laughs> signing some yeah, porn some sites. <laughs> keeping some company alive right now. I have no idea. Yeah. Is one guy still paying to <laughs> keep the company going? I watched Paris Hilton's video, uh, blowing what's his name? Yeah, uh, yeah. And that, yeah, I paid for that for a long time because I, I paid for it just it, jerked off to it once, never watched it again. Done. And then, like, I don't know, three years later, I looked on my credit card and oh, damn, I'm still paying. Still paying. monthly, every month. You got to check the charges. In Thirty-six though. months I paid, and it's a it's a process for you to get that shit off, like to not pay. Oh, and, it's and hard. Yeah. Sites. Yeah. You got to go to PayPal and then reverse it, and you got to mm -hmm. send your code. And yeah. sometimes you just have to report the card as stolen, get yep. a new one, and say you want a new number. Yeah. And then they can't charge that one anymore. Yep. But then you got to go through the shit of calling them the legitimate charges, and you got to actually call Paris Hilton and say, "I don't <laughs> yeah, want to jerk off to you anymore. I'm done with you, <laughs> you whore." Please. She's like, "Are you Let sure? Me off the hook, will you? <laughs> a couple more, come on." <laughs> uh, let's go to Dave in Vegas. Dave, what's up? Yeah, the golden ticket for not getting hassled with your credit card, U.S. passport. Everyone accepts the U.S. passport as your ID. Nobody, we're, but no, you're, you're we thinking were, in the wrong direction here. Nobody's how? having trouble using their credit card. It's That's that it's too that easy. They, it's too easy for others uh, to use your credit card. All right. <laughs> uh, the golden. I love it. There's a golden <laughs> ticket. A golden I ticket. Got it. I got it. You I show them a passport, you don't even need a credit card. <laughs> yeah. They just give you the merchandise. <laughs> Let's say hi to Eric in Boston. Eric. Hey, yeah, I uh, did that freecreditreport.com. Oh, yeah. And uh, I got, uh, apparently I got signed up for a membership for $13 a month. 
They got me like for seven or eight months before I figured it out and finally canceled it. There are a lot of services out there, either on the computer or uh, some of these TV services, like uh, uh, the one with the chicks, Girls Gone Wild, that you don't just buy something. You're subscribing to something. Yep. So if you buy Girls Gone Wild, they show the tape, you go, oh, I call the number, I want that one. They, You were all of a sudden in this... Uh, subscription-based thing where they send you tapes every month and yep. you're, you're billed for them. And then you have to box them up and send them back and they make it real difficult to do that and a lot of people didn't realize that. And it happens with things like Free Credit Report, uh, other websites where you're signed up and, and it comes every CDs month. for a penny. Yeah, that was the original days. one back yep. then. Dude, I'm get, it, it was great when you were a kid, though. Yeah. You'd send the penny, you'd get a bunch of CDs, Your mother kills it. you. Yeah. Well, why mother. am I getting this from Columbia House? <laughs> I, I used to know. have it mailed to like the neighbor's house. And then you get your CDs. Is that what you would do? Yeah, and then you don't have to worry about anything right. else. Jack it up to a federal crime. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you, Mr. <laughs> fucking set the Puerto Rican murderers <laughs> to your <laughs> somebody at your neighbor's house? Your neighbor's on the house. fucking... <laughs> well, I, you know, I never thought of that. Wow, what happens if yeah. they go to that house and like murder the whole family? going to to those people. Oh, I'm sorry. We have the wrong name. house that we were going to murder. <laughs> can't murder the wrong people. Oh, they break in and kill the family. And my... Uh, oh. Well, you got to explain now it. Now I got the guilt factor. But you got to explain what he's talking about because that happened during the break. You don't... Oh. Yeah, when you when you have a navigation system, which a lot of people are getting now, mm -hmm. it's easy uh, to program in home. They have a setting. It says home. Yeah, picture you, of your house and everything. Yeah, yeah it's a little house, yeah. and you hit the button. Your address is there. It takes you right home, no matter where you are. Uh, but the the bad thing is, if someone gets a hold of your keys to your car, which usually has the keys to your house like on it, valet parking. Yeah, it. valet parking, things like that. Uh, they hit home. Now they know where your house is, and they have your house keys mm -hmm. and your car yep. to drive them and your goods away. So they're taking your car for a joyride. For a joy to your house to rob it. You learned that uh, watching first Bueller. Uh, well, they didn't have a nav system. They just had a cool car. That's pretty funny. But, but it's true. Christ, it's paranoid. But, but if you put home in, they but, know where you live. So put home a few doors right, away from your home. Show me one story where that actually happened. Uh, I've, I've not. But just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it, it, it might not. Well, or maybe it has. It goes back to uh, Louis saying the f plenty of kids choked on uh, on toys. On toys. People who got but we're killed still that way. Here. Not around to. Um, but no, now, now really. you got me thinking that I put a few doors away from my house. Now you're going to kill get somebody as murdered. home because I get close enough to my house if I'm uh, seven, eight houses away Why from my house. Why the fuck I don't make... you just put it in the vicinity? Don't you know where you live by that time? Because it's a button for home and it's easy. You don't have to just go like uh, put in an that. address. It's one button. But that's why I don't have an easy pass, I told you. Because they know where you were? Because you know, like sitting in fucking no. a line of traffic. So you like because going into the easy pass lane and then cutting into the cash lane so I can sit behind you, you, you motherfucker? If you speed, if yeah. you're going through multiple tolls, and you're and the speed limit is 55... They you, don't send you a ticket. Yes, that. they do. No, they don't. No, they they, they're happened. talking about I, doing it. They yes, were they at do. some point, but they no, don't. I'm not... Listen, first of all, I'm getting tired of... Of both of you. Well, then like, don't be on the radio. Wait a minute, I'm getting tired of both of you with, you your, to be here. with your dismissive nose and no proof. It's just like everybody listens to white nose. I'm saying yes. And, yeah, but and, the and default, go, nah. Nah. The and default it's, it's shouldn't be parent. In your case, default is paranoia. Everything that could possibly that you could that your amazing imagination can dream of Patrice. is going to happen to you. I've you done think people 90. should spend calories like thinking of okay, what if somebody <laughs> stole my cell phone while I was sleeping, took out the chip, shoved it up my ass, and used it to find me so they could rape my mouth with Something they stole from me when I was and, eight. And at, at this point, it's yeah, very you got to look out for that kind of thing. At Could this happen. point, it's very yes. easy to say no to you because you came up with that Crisco oil thing an hour ago. Yeah, that's now. true. You hurt your own. Uh, but yeah. more. people have heard about the Easy Pass situation. I have driven between Easy Pass stations, mm -hmm. doing 95 miles an hour. And you've got nary a ticket. No, I've never gotten a speeding ticket. How many ticket. times am I going to say we're white? We they can do whatever we check want. Your, yeah, exactly. check you your, get comes up you white. Check speeding your tickets check because your license points. There's a W on on my <laughs> have you statement. Checked your license <laughs> yes, exactly. Have you checked your license points? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I think you better check him again. Dude, I, my license you is squeaky. You think they're just squeaky. stealthily upping his license points and without telling him why? Better, that's just, that's that's black just, why? You don't think I would get something in the mail saying go to... <laughs> yeah. Look, you get pulled over <laughs> for no his, reason. Fence, right. His new magazine. Fence, 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 magazine. Fence. Again, Patrice, you get pulled over for no reason because you're yes, black. Yes. That's how the fucking country works. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it's always been. So we have no reason to be paranoid the way you are. I understand your... Lack of let me tell you no, what my white, me lack me of what need lack, of paranoia. Let me tell you what white guys are now. You becoming the the women of the oh new my god because you're you're not working hard at at this this moniker that you that you have now. Mm -hmm. You're not you're lazy. You think mm -hmm. it's all about you. And I'm telling it you, it is about us. The whole country down. is based on white guys having a good time and not worrying. But they're not. First of all, at let me your tell expense, you, it's coming England, crashing in down. In England, yeah, you're a piece of shit because you're a gingered head. <laughs> I know that. That's why up. I don't live there. So, so, <laughs> I know. I would never live there. <laughs> in, in England, if I run shit in England, if I go over there with fucking, do you? He's not, not really. They don't like you. Let me tell you. Something. No ginger just hair, polite. <laughs> and he's a ginger oh, hello, hair yank. A ginger hair yank. Anybody yeah. over right. in England? That's why I don't go over a there. A foot in the fucking ass. Really? Absolutely. Yeah, no, because Scottish. Irish. Oh, Scottish. That's why I'm not there. Scottish. That's why I'm here. We're just having skin that's relatively pale. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge advantage. A huge advantage. And you know what? You to have the a, point where it's criminal. You know how great my life is. It's a global crime. How good my life is compared to yours. You have a slight niggery texture to your hair too. I know. It's a little niggery. <laughs> he has a niggery texture. Well, I'm so half Mexican. I'm I half Mexican. Yeah, I'm half Mexican. Half? Yeah, and really? it does, that's how great it is. Wow. I'm half Mexican and still and I get you all are the white guys. Completely white. One all the white guys. Hundred percent Mexican. My dad is Mexican. Hundred percent Mexican. Wow. Well, no, his his dad is Hungarian, but he's my whole family lives in Mexico on my dad's side. He's not a wow. Here. My dad's a Mexican citizen. Holy shit. I didn't speak English when I was uh, seven, eight years old. I came here and didn't speak English. Spoke Spanish. Now this is some, why wasn't this, this on the this bio could, we got for you from it, Roland? Man. Why didn't Roland send us a Louis C.K. <laughs> bio? By the way, his career back at least six years. You better <laughs> be careful. <laughs> yeah, whoa, whoa, whoa! It doesn't matter. I, I look white. I it doesn't it was, matter. I thought he was a Mick. <laughs> I want to go see My him on the stage. <laughs> hey, I'm a beaner. Hey, I'm a beaner. Come on, hey! I'm, I am way more Mexican than Carlos Mencia. Yeah, apparently so. More. He's never lived over there. I lived in Mexico City. You lived from when I was one till I was about seven or eight. Holy wow. shit! Wow! And that's where my grandmother is. Uh, you go down there, everybody, still? all my uncles. Yeah. yeah, my whole dad's side of the family is over there. So we go there, you know, about once a year. My, so, the, my sister. That well, is like Patrice I don't know telling me he's a fucking Kennedy. I yeah. swear to God, it just. I'm looking know, at weird. you, it makes no sense. Yeah. So well, C Mexico is made up of... The is for Spick. <laughs> he took the SPI right. out of his fucking That's right. That's <laughs> right. sneaky motherfucker. I know. It's Luis, Luis Spick. Spick. It's Luis. That's what my dad's name is, Luis, with L-U-I-S. That's his name. <laughs> you motherfucker. Wow. Holy shit, Luis C.K. You are a counterfeit That's white right. man. I am. Very good counterfeit, though, because you look so yeah, white. The best. He looks, he's the whitest That's the why I appreciate it. That's why I appreciate it. Yeah, see? Look at that. I'm He's living, living the life. Man. Oh, it's awesome. Oh, man. So awesome. That is terrific. Wow. Hey, no, I went into a store the other day, convenience store, and I got a bottle of water, and then I walk around looking to see what else I want, and then I kind of space <laughs> out, and I walked out with the water. Oh, shit. And then I'm in my car drinking the water, and I realize I didn't pay for this, and I realize that's because I'm white. Because they, <laughs> they looked at me, and they're like, He'll pay for something today. It'll even that? out. He's, he's contributing to the economy. It's going to be fine. When did you start saying I'm a white guy? What? At what age would you like, you know what, fucking oh, I'm white. Call, call me white. Uh, I don't know. I but look I mean, white. At what point well, white, was, white is, a, is a bullshit identity. It's not a real identity. Cause but I, nothing, mean, I have nothing in common with other European white people. But I mean, at what point did you go, oh, I'm not fighting for to be Mexican anymore. Like, I'm not fighting for this whole Mexican thing. What do you mean fighting for it? I mean, like, Alamo? You, what the fuck? When you're eight years old, you're not speaking English. You're, you're Mexican. You feel mm -hmm. Mexican. You, yeah. you identify yeah. with Mexican. At yeah. what point did you go, I'm now a white guy? I forgot how to speak Spanish very fast. I mean, I still <laughs> remember it. I still can speak a little. But I was uh, young enough to just I, I adapted. I did what the the second, other immigrants do. The here. second he crossed the Rio Grande, yeah, <laughs> he fucking went, hello. went back and all. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, "Hi, I'm white." Hello, everyone. I'm now a white. No, man. the thing is, I was white in Mexico. The, here's the thing that people don't understand: is Mexico is just like America. It's made up of some black people and some white people, 
and brown people. The only difference is that they didn't genocide their Indians as well as we did yeah. in the United States. We got that job done. Yeah, so they that's why the face of a Mexican to most people. And also Mexicans, you meet Mexicans that look like me all the time, but you don't know they're Mexican when you're meeting them. Fuck. You, only the say, brown guys I with hope the push I don't say bad things all the time. <laughs> you oh, probably do. I probably do. People say, well, I live in L.A. for the last five years, and people say nasty oh. shit about Mexicans to me all the time. Oh, because they don't know I'm Mexican. Yeah. You go, yeah. <laughs> Louis goes, I agree. Yeah, <laughs> damn those Mexicans. <laughs> Holy shit. That is wild. See, but he's, yeah, he's white. Well, listen, my, my is grandmother, it is, it is. my Mexican grandmother, whose family has been there since sometime in the mid-1800s, there are Spaniards that came over. Espana. There are Europe, Europeans that came over to Mexico, and there are some Mexican uh, Indian blood in us, and some... Is that like black uh, people, Jewish, though, saying they're Indian? For Mexicans to say we're Spaniards, we're no, it is Spanish. It is. There's Sp yeah. some of the, that's the because black <laughs> people like saying they're Indians. No, rich Our white Earl, Earl. No, rich that, white, that rich, only rich Mexicans, to like hair quality. Rich like, Mexicans <laughs> don't like some, to say you know. that they're uh, that they're <laughs> that they're Indians. To be yeah. in Indio is really dirty. No, I mean like American Indian. Oh yeah, like yeah. black people but like saying they they were they mixed with for... Sioux, and it's always Sioux and Cherokee. That's only like a hair thing. Really? It's not a hair and skin thing because mm. it was always good to be like that lighter thing growing mm. up. You know what I mean? And then you have the the the, the white people, yeah. straight white people hair. Yeah. yeah. So mm. any any black person with white people features, they'll say is is. See, Indian. I barely make, I Indian. barely make it into whitey. I'm yeah. barely white. I'm like too you got Italian because I'm Sicilian. Too. Yeah. So you know, yeah, you got, know what happened. You yeah, watch, you watch uh, True, uh, the true the Romance. Moors, yeah. Your great, great, yeah, the great, Moors, great, great grandmother, <laughs> which I don't doubt. I wouldn't doubt my great great grandmother's just Othello taking that black cock. Othello was up in Miss Cumia. <laughs> just banging the fuck out of my great 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 grandmother. <laughs> and Iago was like, "Get it, nigga, get it." <laughs> just conquer. <laughs> Fucking my great great grandfather just hacked with a machete. His body's laying there, and my grandmother's just being fucked by. Some more black cock. I know what happened. She kept no the baby. She and couldn't have hated it yeah. that much. She and kept the baby. Had, that nigga had a Chesterfield right after. Yeah, that yeah, yeah, fucking. That's it. Yep. I know my history, but uh, but as the years went by, I tried to whiteificate. That's uh, right. My family uh, whiteificated that's ourselves. Right. Uh, here in America, just, just by skin, that is trying to get that. Uh, that's that's, that's yeah, we, that. poured, we poured concrete. That's right. Fucking fucking skin. Skin. Uh, I'm trying more to pour, American work that than grape Louis soda out of your uh, out of your bloodstream. <laughs> yeah. I'm more American than Louis C.K. Yeah, you are. Yep. And he gets wow. to live the American dream. That's exactly right. Because I look white. Funky. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. His dirty wet back. His people. <laughs> that's that's right. Fucking <laughs> fucking up the spinach. That's right. Giving us the life. And meanwhile, here's spinach field. The hilarious part of it is that anybody who's black, you can almost guarantee their family's been here longer than anybody Oh, white. hell yeah. Because everybody who's white just got here. Black people have been... They yeah. built the country 17, for free. Built the country for Who'd free. For free. And Where now they get fucked. Why do they do this to us? Who would have thought that? Because you're black. Louis selling me on reparations. Yeah. <laughs> I want to give you some fucking money. And, and it yeah, takes but see, my thing a is white if, Mexican man to make you motherfucking see that's what you did to us all again. But who my thing though is that if we show would have got to this point where we're calling him a dirty Mexican. Louis is a dirty Mexican. I know. And I want to give the blacks I, reparations. I the was, like, here's the way I feel. If we're going to give blacks reparations, they should have to be slaves again. Like, if we're going to pay, Bro. basically we're paying them for the slavery. Right. Then they should, then they should be... accept the so slavery. Is, is, is CK, yeah. oh, is CK I mean, an that's going to wash. Is CK an offset of some... Of it's Hungarian. Language? My grandfather, who's... Oh, my this God. gets even worse. Wow. My Hungarian, who's... Uh, my Hungarian grandfather was Jewish, and he left Hungary because they, they were killing the Jews. Yeah. And he, he couldn't come to the United States because there was too many uh, Jews going. They weren't letting him. They so, turned, turned boats yeah. away. So he went to Mexico. And he met my Catholic Mexican grandmother, and Ray, that's the or that's the family I came a from. A Jew and a Catholic Mexican. Mexican. And he didn't grandma. tell her he was Jewish because he he was so in love with her. Cause CK the is Mexican just the first two hot. letters of your whole. Accent. It's pronounced it's Jewish, Jewish but Mexican. It's much longer. Wow, hey, here's some interesting here news yeah, about yeah. the Jew oh. thing. Hey, I, I do yes. know where the, where the term kite came from, by the way. Ah, oh, derogatory term it's for the, Jewish yes, people. I where do, that I, I do know where that came from. Where it is when that, when people used to come uh, over on the uh, you know in the ships that, on Ellis Island, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of people couldn't write English, so they used to make their mark, and the Jews' mark was a circle, and uh, the circle is called Keikel. So that's what they were just shorting it to kike. The oh, guys oh, coming yeah? in and say, here's another kike once they've seen the, the, the circle. 
You know Shaft. where a nigger came from <laughs> originally? <laughs> there was some black guy being a nigger. <laughs> and so they called him a nigger. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He was being a real nigger, and somebody said, what a nigger. And that's where it started. And this was a, nigger was a feeling. Yeah. He's <laughs> just like, this, mu- look at him, this. Yeah, it wasn't some wordplay. He was blurting out a sound, and it came out yeah. like that. Just the guy was being such a nigger <laughs> that it fucking made someone say the word. <laughs> Oh my God, oh, man! Is that awful. Well, that's we're learning about awful. derogatory terms that's and where right. they came from. Oh, that's right. Wow, it's history. It's a really good history so lesson. I never man. knew that. Thank Let's say you. hi to Jesse. Jesse, what's up? <laughs> Jesse, go. Yeah, hey, Jesse. Up, hey, Opie, I wonder if you think you're related to Pee <clears throat> since your aunt all the way May was known to play around with the Negro. That's true. All the way May, who was right, in boys, uh, League now. of Their Own. Played yeah. by Madonna is right. actually Opie's great aunt. Really, the real woman that oh, was all the way May. That's all the awesome. way May. So we yeah. just talk about how much black <laughs> Negro oh League. My God, <laughs> she was taken. Oh my God, the ne- oh that Negro would be a, League. That would be a great was porno, amazing. by the way. The Negro Leagues and the it Ladies all League. Oh. Satchel Paige plug Opie. Oh. That. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When when nun. when all the she white Gibson smashed the a a All the white men oh. were off to war. Western New York. She was being fucked by. Negro Leaguers and the Tuskegee uh. Airmen were just like fucking plowing uh. all and the way May. Laid it down right on the fucking syphilis blanket. <laughs> I shared a nice story about my family history, and it, yeah. it has come down to this. On how to be all the way May, it couldn't have been the nice to hold oh, someone. Did you ever meet her? She hit a lot of home runs and stuff. I no. bet. You, that's no. great, man. That's I don't think awesome. so. Maybe I did. I don't know. She's, yeah. a, she's, a, she's a nun in I Western New York. I can't believe They fucked her right into the nunnery. Wet back. I can't <laughs> believe this, man. It's it's a that Mexican, is something. Have a Mexican passport somewhere. God Son damn! In that, like, unless you tell people that, and you really got to explain it like you did. Yeah, no, it's you can't uh, just say, yeah, I'm Mexican. You, they'd be right. like, yeah, okay, uh, right, one billionth of yeah. a Mexican from twenty thousand years people ago. People expect you to look a certain. This guy's way. been on hold for like twenty minutes. Uh, Good we'll, for him. We'll clean up something here. Ed in Jersey, go. Hey, Patrice, I'm a cop in Jersey. You cannot get a uh, speeding ticket for uh, Easy Pass because it's a moving violation. And that has to be assessed to a driver for the points, and not uh, not just the vehicle itself. That's why you don't okay, get points when they take the snapshot. That's why I was going to ask. They What's don't the... put points on your license when you get a snapshot for going through red light. But what about the red light situation? No points, just fine. What? That but, is you, no but, point, you still, but... but you still could get a ticket oh. for the fucking... Somebody oh, yeah. could take your easy oh, pass. Yeah. Somebody could take no, your easy pass easy and pass. speed with it. That's why yeah. they can't do that. Wait, we got a car. A parking ticket, a parking ticket, you get the actual vehicle gets the ticket. And, which is a registered owner, but no. in uh, in the situation of a moving violation, those points it's a moving violation, so that the, the uh, driver has to be identified. That's why they have to be stopped. Because anybody can be driving your vehicle; they can't yeah. just assess. I'm telling you, points, Patrice, you know? it's you. The reason you're getting speeding well, tickets in the mail is because <laughs> you're black, <laughs> and they got tired of pulling you over. You know how cops used to pull you over all the time. Well, now they just send you the ticket in the mail, and you pay, and you don't have to do the whole bullshit. Uh, Did you buy this car yourself, yeah. my but, skin and boy? But all you that stuff. too, very soon, hombre. That's hombre, right. I'm a very hard to track Mexican, so I don't get that kind of shit from people. Some redhead. Mexican. Yep. Wow. That's Mexican up. with some Jew in them. With a little Jew, man. It's a really throw you off. Wow. Yeah. Jewish, Mexican, Irish. That's something. Oh. I, I would have you pegged as fucking Blarney Stone kissing Irish. Yeah, man. my on mother's the, very white. My mother's white jeans were very On strong. the Aryan list, he's... He's oh, hanging yeah. more than I am. That's right. Two of you. Two, two parts of you. Jew, you would fuck it. If you went yeah. to prison... There would be the essays, and they yeah. would fuck you up. Yeah. You would have to go with the swastika guys, yeah, with the oh, tattoos. Totally. Oh, and I it, would. Yeah, Those you would guys, have to. There's more of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, yeah. That's amazing. Who's going to take a stand in prison? Oh. You, know, this, you shouldn't be, like, be racist. <laughs> yeah. William, Stop it. William Forsyth in uh, American Me. Remember that, remember that movie? Oh, no, shit. With uh, Edward James Olmos. Remember yeah, that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Damn God. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly like him. I was just thinking American <laughs> History X. You don't want that happening. <laughs> Wow, Louie, that's that's fucking amazing, though. It really, really is. like a, like yeah. a different dude sitting yeah. next to me there. He's yeah. a melting pot of money. I need Nick DePaul to say he's from fucking Nigeria. Or from ah. mm-hmm. <laughs> he's blacker than anybody I know. That guy, Nick, <laughs> Nick. <laughs> fucking dark, and he resents the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. In studio playing Carolines all weekend long here in New York City. 
Always have a good time when Louis shows up. Uh, and it looks like a bunch of us will be going to see Louis C.K. this weekend. Patrice O'Neill also in studio today. We were talking about dangerous toys, and I guess there was a list that came out. Uh, what was it? Radar Radar Online did the top ten worst toys of all time. I don't know. I got to page uh, three. Uh, no, page two, actually, the second one. And th Oh, this only came in second? Yeah. I'm not giving it away. I'm just oh, saying you give it away. It that's matter. impossible. It's more just, I mean, Lawn Darts, uh, the number one most dangerous toy of all time. I don't know. Johnny what? Reb Cannon. I remember that. Uh, Fisher Price Power Wheels motorcycle. Yeah. I it's, guess it's a motorcycle. It's a motorcycle. <laughs> it's for kids. For kids. Uh, it's a fucking motorcycle. From zero to broken arm in 39 seconds, <laughs> they say. Queasy Rider. A little yeah, kid, no yeah. no training wheels or anything. No, he's, he's riding a fucking fucking motorcycle. Here, have a motorcycle. He's riding a motorcycle. Here. A mini motorcycle. That's awesome. uh, that came out in 2000, by the way. They yeah. Re they recalled 218,000 of them. In uh, 1978, Battlestar Galactica missile launcher. It's like a, a Cylon with these choking hazard projectiles. Uh, Very big with the projectile launcher when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, That's used what you to have, do when you're a kid. Yeah, Actually, you want to launch worse, projectiles. Man. That probably worth I don't a know. lot of money. I had a James Bond briefcase that um, you shot pressed the, the button things, and it right? shot the dart out yeah, yeah, yeah. and you opened it up and it put had guns you put together. Oh, man. And then I had Jesus. something called six, Sixth <clears throat> Finger. And you would put it between your ring finger and your middle finger and uh, push your fingers together yeah. and a dart would shoot out the tip of the uh, sixth oh, one. The sixth the finger? Oh, it was horrible. Jesus. You ever have the Uncle Fester light bulb? Oh, I didn't have nothing. The Uncle Fester light yeah, bulb could be have, yeah. didn't have horrid. Good growing up. I used it to steal toys bulb. from the kid. Seriously, the kid next because my parents never bought me toys. Just never bought me nothing. But the kid next door always had toys, and he'd leave them out on his lawn, and I'd just go over and <laughs> yeah. steal them. Right, right. Oh, he is Mexican. You know, okay. Yeah. Say. <laughs> now it's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Big surprise. Yeah, big surprise coming, coming, coming from a Mexican. That's right. right. The Jesus Uncle Anthony, Festa light bulb. You know what? You're older than Santa Claus. No one remembers. <laughs> I was a little He's kid. Like, remember? Remember when you had a pet dinosaur and you used to build <laughs> his teeth? Like, no one knows this fucking shit. I was a little kid, and I got the Uncle Festa what, light bulb. How did it work? You put it in your mouth. You put it in your mouth like Uncle Fester and it yeah. would light up yeah. but but it, it, there were two contacts on the uh, part that you would normally screw in there so it wouldn't make contact you had to take a piece of tin foil and put it under your tongue oh, and then shove this in your mouth and touch the foil onto the Jesus. so you had to roll up tin foil and shove it in your mouth let me tell you how old, let me tell you how old that is yeah. you only make toys that are relevant to shit that's on the Adams family came. Uncle Fester was Adams family. Yeah, but that they came on in 1952. It was in no. black and white. It, it was, was in you, black and white. It was in the sixties. <laughs> in the sixties. <laughs> and they they re, re, re ran the shit. It wasn't like they had 300 channels of new shit on. First of all, they played the Adams Family 10 years all, after it was no, off the air. It was still being no run one prime makes time. A toy based on fucking uh, reruns. No one. 1960. They did back the then. All right, move on because we got they a lot on this then. list here. Uh, so you explain the light bulb? Yeah, the light bulb. Right, good, good. Uh, number eight, the Johnny Reb Cannon. Uh, whistling Dixie through the new hole in your head. <laughs> uh, the South did rise again, at least during playtime, the owner of the Johnny Reb, a 30-inch authentic Civil War cannon. And, uh, what it did was you would load it up, um, with what, flash powder? <laughs> You know. knew. Stop trying to act like you didn't have one, too. Six cannonballs. A ram I had the real thing during the real war, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> With the little knife on the end of the gun and everything. Yeah. Uh, it would uh, launch a Fixed cannonball. Bayonets. <laughs> It would actually launch cl uh, plastic cannonballs with a spring mechanism uh, 35 feet. Jeez. So that could put an eye out. Uh, that made number eight. Creepy crawlers. Hold on. No, no. With Johnny uh, Reb Cannon. Yeah. You didn't read this little thing. Sh uh, schlock and load. Read that real fast. Oh, this must-watch 1961 commercial for the Reb uh, features the catchy jingle, uh, We'll all be gay when Johnny comes marching home. Wow. <laughs> that meant something different back then. Oh. Let's listen. The ladies may will all turn out and we'll all feel gay when Johnny comes marching home. The hero's name is Johnny Rev. Hurrah, hurrah. Most famous cannon you can get. Hurrah, hurrah. Oh, Johnny Rev is ready now. Load him up. 
keep the niggers out. <laughs> Listen to this fucking... I know, there's a southern metal on the flag. Where you get this Confederate Red. flag right on the thing. Authentic Civil War cannon. 1198, complete with loader, cannonballs, tow rope, and battle flags. Battle Remember, flag. every boy wants a Remco toy, and so do girls. Was there, was, there North, there. was there a North version? No. No. no, no, fuck no. no. You two Johnny can Rems. fight a losing battle to keep your slave. <laughs> right was in there, your home, yeah. Was there a little <laughs> Denzel and Morgan Freeman action figure? There's a little tear going down his cheek if you Jesus. pumped it back. <laughs> there wasn't a fucking no. East Coast version of this fucking nope. cannon? No. Nothing, man. There Johnny were. Reb. <laughs> Johnny Reb, we know there's enough of you. All right, creepy crawlers. Yeah. Creepy What's crawlers. Tobacco. That's kind of what you were talking about earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, nothing safer uh, as to safety like an open hot plate. And that's pretty much what it was. Uh, Mattel, uh, a fryer could heat up to a nerve searing 310 degrees. This Jesus. fucker went up to 310 degrees. Jesus. The plastic goop, that's what it was called, was poured over an extremely hot surface and then cast into molds of various multicolored critters. The results, fingerprint removal. <laughs> <laughs> At least uh, those who dodge serious injury or disfigurement could uh, safely eat their creatures. Oh, wait, the critters were toxic, too. But this was the 60s, uh, and they thought uh, there and was an the, outcry. Yeah. Uh, and though the... Why can't I read? The 60s, and though there was an outcry from the sickened, uh, the sing singed and sickened masses, Mattel went right on marketing their electric ovens to children. Yep. Uh, I had a hard time reading that. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you ate too many uh, creepy crawlers. Creepy cla up. crawlers. Uh, my, my daughter burnt herself doing uh, shrinky dinks. This, shrinky dinks. This Christmas, you know, where and you... They involve the oven. Yeah, she put them in, the, in a real grown-up oven. Yeah. And uh, she, t she put her hand right on the cookie dish. Why wouldn't she? Yeah, and she burnt it and... <laughs> She explained it to me. Uh, she was crying, and I came in the room. What's the matter? I burnt my hand on the shrinky dinks. Well, how did you burn? I touched the thing, and then I'm like, I zero sympathy now. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> if somebody threw the thing at you, then I'm really sorry. A but child. you touched a hot thing, you retarded fucking <laughs> dumb shit. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Why am I dealing with this? <laughs> uh, uh, number six, Bat Masterson's Derringer belt gun. Uh... Let's see. Uh, some uh, kids had belt buckles, other had cap guns. Only the lucky ones had Batmasterson's Derringer belt gun. A two-in-one combo took care of uh, all your pants-securing needs with the option every 10-year-old dreams of the ability to shoot caps at groin level. Um, what would happen? When you stuck out your stomach putting pressure on the buckle, a small gun would pop out and fire a cap. <laughs> the gut -busting me uh, a gut-busting meal in that case could lead to serious friendly fire mishap. Hell, this keeps the uncle away, at least. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, caps could be... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but you got to turn them on to make it work. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you got to yeah. leave yeah. your You got to put right. your pelvis on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, to, oh. to keep them away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> That's awful, though. The kid goes to play with this. The uncle takes him in the room. It sounds like Chinese New Year in there. Right. <laughs> Johnny, boy... leave him alone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Stop fucking my kid. Apparently, the caps can be ignited by friction and cause serious burns is what was uh, happening. Serious mm. little abdominal burns right. oh. on little children. Uh, Sky Dancer. I kind of remember this. I think my sister had one of these. What? It's... How do you... No, this is uh, something You're newer. You're not that much older than me. How do you remember this shit? No, this was uh, 1994. This was like a Barbie-type thing. She had wings, and it spun at high velocity, and these little helicopter wings on the tips of her hands would, would stick out. Uh, ten Safety dance, but ten-foot foam wings? How big was this fucking thing? <laughs> 150 children fell prey to Sky Dancer helicopter blade arms. Uh... <laughs> and erratic, oh Jesus, it's chasing me flying pattern. <laughs> I guess you'd pull it and it would fly. Uh, injuries included scratch corneas, temporary blindness, mild concussions, broken ribs, teeth, and facial lacerations. Jeez. Nearly 9 million sky dancers were uh, recalled. Just a bad dreams from this thing. It's that, bizarre. Yeah, yeah, you, what, it's spinning around, chasing you around the house. Nick, uh, Nick DiPaolo's calling me. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> What's that what's nigger up? one? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Disguised himself as an Italian. <laughs> I'm on. Yeah, yeah, right now. Yeah, look at the yeah, look yeah. at the ethnics talking. <laughs> uh, snack time, cabbage patch style. Yep. Feed me. Beg the package. Uh, uh, 1996 cabbage patch snack time, kid. What did this do? 
They merely wanted to nibble a cabot, perhaps. They would stop chewing when the snack time was done. They promised. Then they chomped your child's finger off. Oh, okay. It was a motorized mouth that sensed neither pleasure nor pain. It chewed for chewing's sake with no mechanism to turn off the munching should trouble arise. Oh, it was wow. only a matter of time before some cherub's long blonde hair got caught in the doll's rabid jaws. After 35 fingers and ponytails fell victim, the snack time kids were removed from uh, retail shelves forever. Wow. So it would just keep chewing and eating, <laughs> uh, whether it was hair or fingers or anything. Uh, number three, mini hammock from Easy Sales. Uh, one false move on the mini hammock and leisure time turns seizure. <laughs> mini hammocks uh, seemed innocuous enough. No projectiles, no lead paint, no sharp edges, no explicit danger except sloth. But between the years of 84 and 95, um, the uh, item, uh, also named Hang 10, managed to hang 12. <laughs> Holy Jeez, shit. Wow. Reported in August 96, the product had resulted in the fatal and near-fatal asphyxiation of dozens of children, uh, kids aged 5 to 17, dozens, and recalled 3 million of them. Among the banned easy products were Hangout's Baby, for, uh, Hangout's baby Hammock, or oh. baby's first death cocoon. <laughs> the culprit was a missing set of spreader bars. Uh, you usually get on hammocks. Supports meant to keep the hammock open when it was at ease. Unfortunately, children seeking to spend an afternoon like Gilligan became entangled in the net and strangled to death. That's what happens when you spend $4 Your on a hammock. Your kid's 17 and they die in a hammock, though. That yeah. Like a fucking jerk. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Uh, five, you know, you don't let a five-year-old be in a hammock. No. So. Now, no, what is this? Some anything. of these things, though, are opportunities. Like when my daughter burnt herself, I told her, I explained pain to her. Now she knows. I said, see, your fingers would have been worse. You took them away from the thing when you, they got burnt. If there hadn't been pain hurting you, you would have, kept your you would have just out. let it sit there and get burnt and fried. She learned. Yeah. Now she's she not understood. Do it again. She stopped crying. That's the only way they do learn. Yeah. And, and the ones that die. You know, pain is good. Die. The ones that don't, you learn. Yeah. Uh, number one was, like you said, lawn darts. Um, Which we, we all, all remember these. Yeah. You would throw them at each other. They would fly very high into the air and come down at high velocity. Uh, you knew Poke not where. Skull and stuff, yeah, whatever. For we all know that thing. one. But go to two. I don't think that's number one. Number two. I've never heard of this one. This goes back to. I don't remember this either, Patrice. You absolutely do. I have no I'm recollection. I'm tell you why. You bought it the day you did that uh, that drill that you hide under the table. W the hide desk. from the Russians. I used to have to hide from the Russians exactly. under the desk. You fucking, you're 96. You never had to hide from the Russian missiles. Motherfucker. Was duck, and, duck and cover? Under a, a school I was, desk. I was 10 when they knocked the wall down. <laughs> oh, why? <yeah. laughs> Shit. Oh, motherfucking Jesus Christ. I remember when I was in like uh, seventh grade. No, it was, it was sixth grade, fifth grade. Things like that when I was in elementary school. Uh, we used to have to hide under the desk. There'd be like an alarm would go off. I mean, eh, eh. Oh, it wasn't a fire coming? alarm. It was a eh, eh. First of all, and it, you used to have to get under the desk. Anthony, that will, Anthony that will protect, stop, yeah. looking, stop looking around the room for people who are, are, are I, like I stop. agreeing with you. How old you. are you, Patrice? I think you're younger 37. than him. Oh, okay, you're younger okay. than me. A couple of years. Well, go into this uh, no atomic energy to you, lab. Man. And that... <laughs> Go ahead, keep okay. reading, Adam okay. Ant. Well, this, this thing is amazing. This came out in 1951. This, this is called Adam Ant. <laughs> Adam Ant. You're Adam Ant. <laughs> Gilbert U238 Atomic Energy Lab. A fission buddy, fallout shelter not included. Honey, why is your face glowing? In 1951, A.C. Gilbert introduced his U-28 Atomic Energy Lab, a radioactive learning set. We can only assume for fun, uh, was fun for the uh, whole math club. Gilbert, who... American memorabilia claims was often compared to Walt Disney for his creative genius, had a dream that nuclear power could capture the imagination of children everywhere. For a mere forty nine fifty pretty How expensive. is this not That's number a lot one? For by a the way. It's a lot for a coin now. Nineteen fifty one. Jesus. A kit came complete with three very low level, in parentheses, or uh, quotation marks, sorry, ra radioactive sources, a Geiger Mueller radiation counter, a Wilson cloud chamber to see paths of alpha particles, Jesus. a spintheroscope to see live radioactive oh disintegration, God. four samples of uranium bearing ores, and an electroscope to measure radioactivity. Get Jesus. the fuck out of here. But this is, you know what? Uh, oh, this is this is retrospect though. This is dealing with radiation. Yeah. The reason I think is not number one. The only reason not number one because it's it it's it's not official. 
it's not officially killing kids. It's possibly killing kids. Well, yeah. And, and the first one, it, it you throw it up and the darts were landing on top of your head, killing you. True. Which is, you know. Well, this sounds pretty dangerous, but they probably didn't know back then. Kids do the darndest things, but apparently, uh, but not apparently nuclear physics. The toy was only sold for one year. It's unclear what effects the uranium bearing ores That's why might have had one. on those lucky few uh, kids that received the set, but exposure to the same isotope, U-238, uh, <laughs> has been linked to Gulf War Syndrome, <laughs> cancer, leukemia, <laughs> lymphoma, among other serious ailments. Holy Even more uncertain is the long-term impact uh, being raised by the kind of nerds who would give their kid an yeah, you know, energy lab. Yeah, you know, the thing is, how fun was this toy? Let's, uh, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to watch live radioactive disintegration. That sounds awesome. Yeah, disintegration. And, and all the unsold ones at the bottom of the Hudson. Oh, uh, yeah. Where'd they put those? <laughs> yeah. There were, there were uh, a bunch of women that wound up dying from leukemia because they used to uh, paint the little glowing... Uh, numbers on the the watch faces. Remember when mm -hmm. uh, watch faces would glow in the dark? I think they still do. That was in a Kurt Vonnegut novel. It was. Uh, was that real though? Because yeah, I remember I heard reading it in the Kurt Vonnegut novel. They they would put it in and to keep the little brush tip. Yeah, they'd lick it. They lick it. Yeah. And yeah, that was apparently real. Yeah. Go to Snopes.com. That was a good. That was real. a good. It was a special. Let's get the hell out of here. We got yeah. some lines of the day and oh, then we. Oh uh, shit! Look at the time. Is it already? It flies by when we have fun. Line of the day sponsored by Bodog. Fight.com. Ooh. Kashi seven whole grain honey pus will be one of the ten most dangerous cereals in about ten years. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Eating that. Remember when people used to eat that shit and then they found out and <laughs> fucking blew up your liver? Here's the first runner up line of the day. I looking know, at weird. you, it makes no sense. Yeah. So well, C Mexico is made up of... for Spick. <laughs> he took the SPI right. out of his fucking That's right. That's <laughs> right. sneaky motherfucker. I know. It's Luis Spick. Spick. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Patrice, with one of the runner-up lines of the day. We have one more runner-up line of the day, sponsored by BowDogFight.com. And it's such revelation when you, well, you know, figure like it out. song where he says, uh, revved up like a deuce. And yep. uh, yeah. I used to think he was deuce. saying, uh, yeah. your mother's cunt smells like oranges. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. It's just a weird trick of the ear, you know? <laughs> so subtle. Weird, yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? What a weird lyric. I, oh, I fucking love walked one. into that like Pesci. <laughs> we all I did. fucking walked right into it. <laughs> Blindsided. Okay, very good. And finally, here is today's line. <laughs> we all know what it is. Of course we, we do. Here's today's line of the day. Here, here Jimmy makes an appearance. Comes. Line of the day. 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 You know where Stamp. nigger came from originally? <laughs> there was some black guy being a nigger. <laughs> and so they called him a nigger. <laughs> he was being a real nigger. And somebody said, what a nigger. And that's where it started. It just was a, nigger was a feeling. <laughs> it's just like, this, it wasn't just. Yeah, it wasn't some wordplay. Just blurting out a sound and it came out like, oh, just the guy was being such a nigger. <laughs> that he fucking that's made someone say the word. That's fucked up. That's just how he felt when he said it. How oh, great is that? Oh, yeah. oh man. Wow. Uh, with that, we have to thank Louis C.K. for coming oh, in today. Absolutely. Thanks, you gave us a nice bump. Patrice, yeah, you gave you us a nice Patrice, bump. Patrice, absolutely love having uh, Patrice in. We have great conversations in the studio. <laughs> and then we leave, and we don't fucking say a word to each other. Like it's so uncomfortable. Roaches when the lights come on. It's it's like just, it, it, we, you know, we either walk to the garage or downstairs or something like that, and it's just, yeah. hey... Well, that was uh, it. Yeah. My yeah. fucking truck, Show. please. <laughs> I, I don't want to talk to you. I think if we, I think if we hung out though one night, I think we'd we'd have a good time. We would get along because we just the same kind of motherfucker. We would sit there yeah. and just watch something else. Yeah, and and just comment on it. But we would try I, it too hard at first. And yeah, it might be awkward at first. Oh, uh, I think I would just have to go to, to go one of your gigs, <laughs> and uh, you know. I don't know. I'm hang very out. much like you. I'm very fucking yeah. hello, and I'm very lack of small Set. talkish. Yeah. Yeah. All right, listen. Let's get out of here. Louis C.K. is gonna be at Caroline's all weekend long. Yep. You'll be yes. There? That's right. I'm definitely HBO, gonna be at Louis, uh, Louis C.K. <laughs> Louis C.K. Shameless on the 13th of January. Yep. Looks great. Thanks. Man. What I've seen on HBO so far looks great. Thanks. All right. And uh, Caroline's is 212-757-4100 for tickets to see Louis C.K. With that. Yep. See you tomorrow. Gotta run. Oops. Always.